Otherwise,
Welcome to Sewing Parts Online, the family-owned business that has been providing quality sewing machines since 2008. Our mission is to help you bring your creative visions to life, and we believe that starts with having the right sewing machine. Quilting, embroidery, serging, crafting, Sewing Parts Online has got you covered. You supply the creativity, we supply the sewing machines. Welcome to Sew Creative Live. My name is Trisha. Do you have any idea what day it is today? It is National Sewing Machine Day. So we are super excited here at Sewing Parts Online to have a day dedicated to the amazing sewing machine. So we just wanted to pop on a little bit early before we have our guests come on and we just wanna say hello to some viewers, talk about how this day is going to go and just let you know what you can expect. If you've been seeing down in the ticker, it has been saying that we like to do some giveaways, right? And we wanna start out the day really fun doing a giveaway right away. So we're gonna do that in just a second. As I said, my name is Trisha, but I wanna pull up Brian. He's gonna be joining us as well today. Brian, you wanna pop on up? Good morning, everybody. And also, Alex, do you wanna peek over, say hi too? <laughs> there she is floating in the background. <laughs> She's filming TikToks right She's now. She's doing TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we wanted to pop on. And first off, we love to do giveaways. So if you are new to Sew Creative Live, it is a virtual sewing event. We have a ton of fun. We bring on educators. They show you either machine demonstrations or a project or a cool product. But today we are going to have it mainly about sewing machines because it's National Sewing Machine Day, right? But in addition to all the free education information about machines, we like to do special event pricing, which we'll talk about here in just a second, and also giveaways. So Brian, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about how we do our giveaways? Yes. So we like to play a little game. It's called Surprise Word, and it's based on the theme of the event. So today's theme is sewing machines. So during each segment, there's going to be a surprise word that appears on the screen, and you are going to put that word in the comments, and then at the end of the segment, I'm going to run the raffle tool, and whoever gets chosen by the raffle tool wins whatever prize is designated to that segment. I do want to put a little disclaimer in. We've had some people talk to us in the past about how they don't see themselves in the giveaway tool as it's raffling off the names. The tool that we use can only show a certain amount of names. I believe it's about 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. There could be a hundred people that enter the giveaway. It's only going to show 30 names while it's raffling off, but all 100 people are entered into the giveaway. So don't worry if you don't see your name, you are still potentially going to win. So the surprise words are going to look something like this. The first word of the day <laughs> is so creative live. And as we move forward through the day, you're going to keep your eyes out during the segment to see the surprise word pop up on the screen. It's going to have a little picture that matches the word run to the comments and put it in. If you miss it, that's okay, because I guarantee you, you're going to see everybody <laughs> commenting the surprise word anyway. <laughs> yes. So uh, you have some really fun prizes today. I'm going to pop off screen. Trisha, do you want to talk about the prizes? And then we can come back up and say hi to our friends. Absolutely. Let's All take right. a look. So let's see what we have available. So let's start with the biggest one, right? We all absolutely love talking about the grand prize. You probably, if you've been following us, you've seen us talk about the Baby Lock Triumph. We have been lucky enough to be able to give away the Baby Lock Triumph for every So Creative Live event. So yay, this grand prize is worth $7,500. This is a combination serger and cover stitch machine. You guys, it is amazing if elaine is on she was the winner of our last baby lock triumph and she has been playing around with it and her grandsons have been playing with it so elaine if you're able to join us today we'd love to see a little whoop whoop on the triumph <laughs> all right let's see what else we're going to be giving away today we have the wonderful cutie tabletop quilting frame that value is at twelve hundred dollars this is such an awesome prize if you are looking to get into quilting on a frame but maybe you don't have the budget or maybe the space this will definitely get you into 
into that realm of sewing. It's a lot of fun. You only need a small amount of space or a dining room table somewhere dedicated for that awesome quilting tabletop frame. The nice thing that's a, uh, about that particular frame is you can pair it with a domestic machine. And this was not planned, but actually, <laughs> These two models work phenomenally well on the Cutie. You've got the Juki TL2010Q and the Baby Lock Allegro. The reason that the Allegro pairs really nicely with it is it has this really nice big throat space. You may have seen something similar to this in the Jazz 2. So both of those are great with the tabletop um, frame. And then the Juki has an eight and a half inch throat and this works really well on that as well. You just have to get a carriage with it and then you can set that machine right with it. So. I'm going on a tangent. Let me talk about the next item, huh? <laughs> what do we have, Brian? All right, we've got a hundred pack of some beautiful embroidery thread. It's by Floriani. It is gorgeous. It's a $640 value. So you are going to be able to make so many beautiful things with all this thread. That particular kit is Gorgeous, I believe it's a 50 weight, if I'm not mistaken, and it's polyester. It has really high strength, um, high tensile strength, and it's um, just a really high, beautiful sheen. So wonderful, wonderful prize. The next one that we're gonna talk about is a $50 gift card to Sewing Parts Online. We all love that. Get some notions or some sewing supplies for yourself to make a beautiful, beautiful item. We actually have a couple of gift cards. We have a $100 gift card. We have a 50 and a 25, I believe. And I believe the 25 is going to be our first gift, all right? It I sure is. Our $25 so. gift card, and then we have another special prize that we're going to talk about in a minute. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. All right, well, we're not done with giveaways, so let's talk about the next one. I love this little storage cube craft organizer by Arrow. You can have all your thread storage. You can have some fabric in there. You can't see it on the front of this picture, but on the back, there's also a couple of rods where you could put interfacing or ribbon or you know something along those lines where you can keep everything nice and organized. You can also pop a little cutting mat right on the top if you wanted to. So perfect for your sewing space. So great prize there. So thank you, Arrow. And then we have a beautiful basket donated from Bernie and Shelly Tobish. They are the creators of Acorn or Precision Piecing Products. They put together a wonderful basket full of their products. They are great. And actually, Bernie's going to be joining us today. He's a master technician, and he has been working on machines for years. And it's so sweet. He actually created their products for his wife, Shelly, when she was having an issue with her quilting. So... It's pretty fun. We'll maybe have to ask him a little bit about that as well while he teaches us some troubleshooting options. <laughs> All right. Did we cover our prizes today? I think the we did. The only other one we have is the quilter's rigs, but we don't have a picture of it. Oh, I don't have a picture, but I have... I might have to take this out of the case later, but we've got the quilter's ring from Juki. This is a really, really cool product. It has an opening, if you can see that, an opening right here that is able to slide in on be on your um, sewing surface and it helps you free motion sew. There's a little grip on the bottom that attaches to your fabric and gets just enough grip that it moves your fabric around as needed. And then you've got these little prongs at the top that you hold on to. It's really great for arthritis or just um, lessening fatigue while you're doing free motion sewing. So super awesome product. And I will take that out of the case later so you can more easily see it and I can demonstrate it on the actual bed of the machine. So that is what we're going to be giving away. Uh, we also wanted to talk a little bit about who is going to be joining us. So Brian, do you mind pulling up our schedule and we can talk about our guests? Yes. Let's take a look. We have several people here, and I see Richard Tharp up there. Sadly, he had some internet issues, but Melinda Stevenson from Baby Lock is gonna be joining us, so we thank her for filling in, and we'll see Richard next time around. <laughs> but we have Miriam Coffey first. She's going to be showing us the Elna Excellence 780 Plus machine. We showed this on a previous So Creative Live, and we had so, such great feedback that we decided to do it again, but she's gonna focus on three really cool areas on the 780 plus in addition to just showing you how wonderful the machine is but a few areas that she's going to cover is that particular machine comes with three needle plates and she'll tell you why each one is important it also has ruler work mode so if you've been interested in doing ruler work 
make sure that you tune in for that one. And then she is also going to be covering Stitch Composer, which I'm super excited about because that particular feature allows you to either modify existing stitches or create your own. So you can truly be unique with your creations. I think that's pretty awesome. So very excited about that. We also have Bernie Tobish, as I mentioned, he is the creator of Acorn Precision Piecing Products, but he's going to be joining us today as master technician. He's gonna go through his book and talk about um, his uh, maintenance and troubleshooting. And he's gonna show us uh, some tips to go over when looking at your machine, if it's having issues. His book is phenomenal, a great resource to have in your sewing space especially if you have any issues with tension. He's got great tips in that book. Then we have Chris Marchini. We love Chris. He's from Rose City Originals on TikTok, I believe, YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> all over the place. He's joined us in the past doing a quilting tutorial, but today he's going to show his lovely Juki TL2010Q and its presser feet. That is a straight stitch machine, so oftentimes people think, hey, you can't use different presser feet with it, but he is going to show you that that is not the case. There are certain feet that will fit with that machine, so that one is going to be a whole lot of fun. In between segments, Brian and I are going to do some Q&As. We'll answer some questions and also have our guests, and we'll do our giveaway and wrap-up after each segment. So that'll be a good time to answer some questions. Uh, we also have Anne Hines. She is going to be showing the Janome Memory Craft 9850. That is a great machine. It's an intermediate um, sewing and embroidery machine. So it's great for travel. It's compact if you don't have a lot of space really good option. So if you want to tune in for that. We also have Tim Bond with Juki. Love Tim. He is so he has so much knowledge in his brain. <laughs> and he's just gonna show you how awesome that DX2000 QVP model is. And we'll have to ask him about the foot control because it has a fancy little heel operation. So we'll, we'll talk about that too. And then as I mentioned, our schedule does show Richard Tharp, but Melinda Stevenson is gonna be joining us today for the Baby Lock Altair. Oh my goodness, you guys, you're gonna hear me say like, you have to check this machine out. It is a sewing and embroidery machine wonderful machine, great model. We all, we had it on a really good sale, but for a limited time, we are actually doing an even better sale. So I'm excited to talk about that. And there is an additional bonus bundle available that if you've been looking at the Altair, you do not want to miss that particular segment because you're going to get some phenomenal pricing on it. Um, then lastly, we are going to have Team Grace. I'm not sure which one of our friends are going to join us from Grace, but we'll have a good team coming on. They're going to do our 16X series. If you maybe follow us and joined us last week for our social circle, we did a demo on the 16X Elite, which we have over here. And we loved walking through it, seeing all the features. They helped us load it and everything. So if you've been considering a 16X machine and maybe not everything is covered today, you can peek at that as well. So that kind of recaps what we're going to be going over today and who our guests are gonna be. Uh, you heard me say special pricing, right? So I'm super excited about our special event pricing. Now we cannot display the event pricing that we can offer. We're gonna show you our already awesome sale price so you'll get an idea of where we're at, but you have to call in for the special event pricing. Our customer service is ready and waiting. They are going to help you answer any questions that you have, uh, but I do wanna let you know, it's a one day event, guys. It's National Sewing Machine Day, not week, right? So we have one day today to offer that special event pricing. You can give us a call. Um, it will, we will be available till five o'clock Central Standard Time, just so you know that. All right, and then let's talk a little bit about the um, thread kit. I wanted to show, oh, Brian, actually, before we do that, do you want to do our first giveaway since I went rattling on and on? <laughs> yes, I would love okay. to. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. So our first giveaway is going to be a $25 Sewing Parts Online gift card. So let's pull up that giveaway tool and we will see who starts off the day. <laughs> All right. Let's see who it's going to be. Uh, oh, I saw Pamela's name in there. <laughs> She's a fun follower. Marissa Littleton, congratulations. You are our first winner, and we're going to start off the day in an awesome way. All right. And we're going to pick another winner. Is that correct, Brian? 
Oh, that is. Do we want to tell everybody a little bit about this prize before we pick that winner? Definitely. Okay. Do you have one with you? I do. Here we go. All right. Do you want to talk about it? Yes. So we are super excited about this. We announced this during the social circle, I think, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We worked with my favorite thread fan, Orville. <laughs> I love Orville thread. I think it's fancy schmancy. It's good quality. It's beautiful packaging. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great product. And so we reached out to them and we asked if we could do a thread kit with them for So Creative Live specifically that we can give away. And we worked together to create a five spool thread kit. And let me pull it up on the I website. Say, I think actually. we have a picture. Let's see if I can find it. Trish, you want to talk about it while I, I find can, it? I can beat you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so um, if you haven't used Aurafil Thread before, this kit is a good introduction into the brand. It's not a big commitment. You're not spending a lot of money to see if you like this thread. And it matches our brand colors. And our brand colors are colors that you are most likely going to end up using anyway. So... It's a good way to introduce yourself to Aurafil. We carry it if you want to purchase it. I believe it's $29.99. But we also have a handful in the studio that we are going to be giving away during all of our So Creative Live events, including this one right now. We are incredibly excited about this thread kit. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go ahead and give away this thread kit to our lucky winner. I'm very excited about this. And... Just so you're aware, it does have 50 weight and 40 weight. So in addition to having some variety in color, you get different weights. So, all right, Sue, you are the winner of our first thread kit. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think what we can do next year is um, talk a little bit about what the next prize is going to be. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to say hi to our friends. I've seen some names coming through and I'm like, oh, we got to say hi really quick. Yes. Brian, do you want to pop up a few people and we can see if we have some new people, have some people that have joined us before. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us from Tennessee. It's a beautiful day. It is beautiful out today in Tennessee. Jeanette, good morning. Sharon, oh, Cleveland. Barbara, oh, excited to watch. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you guys. Sir Robin the Chicken, oh, thank you so much. Sir Robin the Chicken has been joining us for our so social circle, so we've been having fun with that. <laughs> That's our friend now. Yep, it's our friend. Now I just need to know your actual name. <laughs> Kara from the Philippines, awesome. What time is it in the Philippines right now, I wonder? <laughs> Donna, we know Donna. She's here in Dixon, Tennessee. She's come into the storefront. So we got to say hi and give her a hug. So that's pretty fun. Deb Porter. Hi, Deb. Oh, Brian, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yours and Deb's adventures? I would love to. <laughs> so Deb is my friend. She's our friend. Our friend. Yes. <laughs> uh, and she started watching our live events during the spring social. And she lives locally in Dixon, Tennessee. And she joined that live stream and then started joining our weekly live stream called The Social Circle, which is an education-based live stream that happens every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. And she joined for our pot holder tutorial and then came into the building to show it to us after, which was really cool. And we hung out and we talked a little bit and we decided that we wanted to be friends. So Deb and I last Monday went to the Hickman County Quilt Guild meeting together and joined a quilt guild. And then this past Friday, I went over to her house and we quilted for a little bit. So I think it's really cool that we have been making friends with the people that join our events. It's, it's actually the most special part of these mm -hmm. events, I think. Well, we had talked to Deb about it too when she was here. It's like, you feel like you already know each other and then you actually meet in person. It's like, oh, I feel like I already know you. We're already friends. So, but we appreciated her coming in and Deb, we, we thank you for doing that because it is pretty special to us. We love it. We and love let so me much. be clear. There is no friends and family special with the giveaway tool. <laughs> that is completely nope. random, but I will be sitting at my desk praying that she wins something. I want my friend to win something, <laughs> but Deb, I, you, it's just as fair as everybody else. Everybody gets the same amount of chance. Perfect. All right. Well, do we want to go ahead and do a quick anatomy of the sewing machine or 
Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, sounds good. Well, we wanted to start off the day um, with the anatomy of a sewing machine because if you're anything like me, uh, when I started here at Sewing Parts Online, I sewed, but when I heard feed dog for the first time, I was like, uh, what are we talking about? And I am not gonna be able to do this job. <laughs> So there are some names on the machine that you're just kind of like, okay, what is that called and how do I ask for it? Maybe if you're needing replacement parts or something along those lines. So before we get started on what the parts are of the machine, I am going to announce what our giveaway is going to be. It is going to be another thread kit. Is that correct, Brian? I want to make sure that I am telling you the, the right thing. Okay. So after we do our little segment here, we will do a giveaway and then we will have Miriam pop on and she will talk about the Elna. So I wrote down a few things that I just want to cover. We're going to start at the top of the machine and every machine is different. As you can see, these are two very different machines, but we have the spool pins up here. So your spool pin is what is going to hold your spool of thread. On this machine, it's a vertical spool pin, whereas on the leg row, it's a horizontal spool pin. Then you've got your spool caps and those are going to hold your spool of thread onto the machine. You may see these in your accessory package that comes with your machine. There's often several different sizes, a large, a medium, and a small. So it just depends on what thread you're using and what size spool you need to use. And then you've got your horizontal um, spool pin and you would place your spool cap this way. So that's just the spool pin. And you may also see a little pin in your accessory pack and that's gonna be your additional spool pin. In this case, it already has two, so you don't have to worry about it. In this machine, you may have an additional um, vertical spool pin that you could use for twin needle sewing. So that's always handy. Uh, the one thing I really wanna talk about is thread guides. So thread guides throughout your machine, you're gonna see multiple thread guides. So I'm working backwards here, so I apologize, but you see one here and you see one down here, and you're also going to see one down by your needle. So if you're ever calling asking for a thread guide, you may have our customer service ask for a little clarification, be like, where is it located on your machine? But a thread guide is going to help guide your thread to its proper place. So. Also, just a quick interjection on that. If you're having any issues with thread breaking, you might have a burr on one of those thread guides. So just a quick interjection. <laughs> Obviously we have our needle on both of these machines. That's held in by a needle clamp. So let's go back to the needle. Uh, most domestic machines are gonna have a 15X1 needle. It's kind of like a part number, but there are also different kinds of needles in that you could get one that's intended for leather or for um, knits or anything like that. They've got specifications. So the system, the 15X1, is kind of like your part number and then you have to determine what needle you need from there. So if you're ever wondering, why am I not getting good results? Uh, if your you know, stitches are wrong or something like that, you can always give us a call. It may be as simple as helping you determine which needle you need to use with your project. And we're happy to help with that. So let's talk about the presser foot. We've got our presser foot right here and um, there's different types of feet. So you've got a low shank machine, which is the Allegro, and you've got a high shank machine. That just means it's the distance from your little screw here that holds your presser foot on down to your needle plate. So if it's a high shank machine, when your presser foot is in low position, it's going to be approximately one inch. Whereas if it is a low shank machine, it's gonna be approximately a half an inch. But your presser foot is going to help your fabric stay in place. And then we have our little feed dogs, right? So the feed dogs are gonna be these little teeth that help your fabric move through the machine. And feed dogs, they can vary in size and shape and everything. It just depends on what you're going for. Like this particular, the Allegro has a seven point feed dog. It just means there's seven points that the fabric is making contact with that feed dog to help pull it through. And then with the Juki, there are three feed dogs, but I was just talking to our master technician, Bernie, <laughs> a while ago, and he was talking about the benefits of having a smaller feed dog, depending on what you're sewing. So it is kind of cool that there is a different purpose for each type of feed dog. The next thing I want to talk about is a bobbin case. So this particular machine has a side loading bobbin case. Let me see if I can grab it like this. Might be a little awkward, but 
uh, I think I can get it, yeah. So this is a side loading bobbin case. You might see something like this, whereas this machine has a top loading bobbin case and it's internal and it's a, a plastic one that makes it easy to load right at the top of your machine. You might see this on um, straight stitch machines and some other, some other older machines as well, but both are great options. It just depends on what you're looking for, but they do have a different appearance for sure. We also have the hand wheel. Excuse me, my hair is in my, in my eye. <laughs> We've got our hand wheel. So this is gonna move your needle. Anytime you are manually rotating your hand wheel, you always wanna do that towards you. Otherwise it's going to mess up the rotation um, within the hook system in your machine. So that's gonna be in here or internally here. And then our needle threader. I do have to mention needle threaders because there's a variety of them available. You have some that you will be pulling down the needle threader and there's a little hook that goes into the eye of the needle and then you're able to release the threader and it will pull the thread through the eye of the needle. They're great. But then you also have some other options that we'll be showing later with like the Baby Lock Halt Hair where it's a never miss needle threader. It's like this little beautiful machine that just, you just hit a button and goes and it takes your thread. It's awesome. <laughs> so there's different types of needle threaders available. All, all of them are convenient either way, but cool thing to note. Uh, knee lifter. We've talked about knee lifter several times. As you can see with the, let's see, you can't see it in the shot here, but you can on the Juki right here. If it has the hole in the front of the machine, you'll be able to pair it with a knee lift. That's really handy because your knee is essentially doing the job as another hand. So you can push the knee lifter to the side and it will lift your presser foot up for you. So it allows you to keep your hands on your project without having to let go and lift up your presser foot if you need to maybe shift and move. So it works pretty slick. Trish, can I interrupt you for a sec? You sure can. So I'm seeing a lot of comments about the, I wanna go back to the bobbin case really quickly. Sure. So people are talking about their bobbin case. Some people like the front loading, some people like the top loading. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna talk about with front loading do you want to talk about the difference between a, ro a rotary and an oscillating bobbin case? Actually, since you've been doing a little bit of the technician, do you want to explain that since you were talking yeah. to Dennis about it? Yeah, All I right, can pop let's on. Let's have Brian pop on. So some people don't know that there's actually more than just front loading and top loading. So with your front loading bobbin cases, there's actually two different types. There's the oscillating and then there's the rotary. And the difference is with the oscillating, the bobbin case rocks back and forth and as the hook makes contact with the top thread and with a rotary, it makes a full 360 rotation. And it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. A lot of your entry level machines are the oscillating type. So that's going to be like your baby lock zest. Um, it, some of the older, especially those like class 15 Kenmore's and stuff, those are oscillating types. The rotary bobbin case is actually based off the industrial sewing machine, which is what Juki is kind of known for. They're, I believe, don't quote me on this, the top manufacturer of industrial sewing machines in the world. So they take that mindset and they put it into their uh, their semi-industrial machines mm -hmm. as well. And other brands also do that. There's a couple of Baby Locks and some Janomis that are kind of that same vibe as the TL series. But they have that rotary bobbin case, and those things are so smooth mm -hmm. and powerful, and that's why they go in the industrial machines and the semi-industrial machines. Mm -hmm. So I, I know some people don't like the inconvenience of the front-loading machine, but it is important to note that if it's a rotary bobbin case, especially for something like quilting or making bags, or if you're gonna be doing high volume sewing, that rotary case is really gonna step up your game in the finished project, finished product. There that was perfectly said, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> and actually, I just want to touch on that. I had uploaded a couple of pictures um, about a bag. So I want to show you what ended up convincing me to actually get one of these machines. It was because I was making bags. I love Sally Tomato like Brian loves Aurifil. So <laughs> um, I have a couple of patterns here that these purses actually convinced me to move forward with getting the TL 2010Q. And let me tell you, when he's saying that oscillating hook and um, the bobbin case system, everything is just stronger and everything, it works so smooth. And sewing those bags in multiple layers is just like, 
really like really great. And it just made such a difference in that type of sewing as well. So uh, we have quite a few other things to talk about, but we're gonna wrap it up and we are gonna have Miriam pop on. And then if we have a chance later, we'll go over some other features about the machines and talk about some differences um, like the stitch width and stitch length and things along that nature. So why don't we go ahead and get Miriam pulled up? Well, do you wanna do the giveaway really quickly? Brian's here to keep me on track. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do our giveaway. So this is gonna be for our thread kit. Yep, got it right here. Let's see who it's gonna be. Oh boy. Yay, oh, Bo. Queen Feather. Congratulations. And let's talk about how people can claim their prizes, you guys. It's a really easy process. You can go, let's grab our little overlay here. You can just visit our link tree, which is link tree forward slash sewing parts online. You can click claim your prize and then fill out the form and we will get that sent out to you. Just so you're aware, you have seven days to claim your prize. And from there, once your um, prize is claimed, it takes us approximately one to two weeks to get that shipped out for you. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. And also, like I had mentioned before, we are gonna start each segment with telling you what our giveaway is going to be. So for Miriam's segment at the end, we are gonna do a $50 gift card to Sewing Parts Online. So make sure that you are keeping an eye out for that surprise word and we will pop it up throughout her segment and you can just comment as soon as you see it. So now I think we are good to go ahead and get Miriam pulled up. What do you think, Brian? I think we are ready. Miriam, just to let you know, I'm going to pull you up, but your mic is muted, okay? Gotta love technology, right? <laughs> Hello, Miriam. How are you? Hello. How are you guys doing? Doing fabulous. We're so happy to see you again. I'm excited to see all about the 780 plus. <laughs> yeah, I, How's it in your well, area today? I wanted to tell you a quick story about the history of bobbins a little bit since yes, you were just please. talking about bobbins. So actually the reason Janome is called Janome is because they, the gentleman who created Janome actually changed the way the bobbins were made. Originally they were more of a shuttle shape and then he's the one who changed it to a circle and he thought it looked like an eye of a snake. So Janome actually means eye of the snake in Japanese. Oh my That's goodness, awesome. that is amazing. I, know, it's, <laughs> I love you know, that story. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Of course. <laughs> awesome. All right, Miriam, well, you've joined us before, so you know that if you need anything, I will be in the background. And if we have any questions that we see you can answer during the segment, we'll be sure to shout that out for you. Otherwise, we can answer some questions at the end. But awesome. I will let you take it away and tell us all the good things about that 780 plus. Awesome, thank you so much. And thanks again for having me. This is, I love doing these events. I love sharing my love of Elna and Janome. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna switch to the small screen. If you guys can switch that over. Yeah, awesome. So this is Stitch Composer. So one of the really cool things about the Elna 780 Plus is that there is this software program that comes with it called Stitch Composer. And it allows you to create your stitches from scratch. So if you wanted to have a decorative stitch that looked like a KitchenAid, you could create that decorative stitch. And I'm gonna actually show you the stitch out of that particular stitch that we created. Um, but I'm gonna do a quick little demo so that you can see it in action. All right, so this is the program. It's very simple to use. And what's nice about it is that you can do some very simple things very fast, and then you can get more involved and more detailed 
and more complex as you get more experienced with the software. So I'm gonna start up here. So I have a new page and I'm going to go to start point right up here. We have start points, end points, loop points, and our finish. So if I was done, I could hit the finish. So when I get to that point, I will create, I'll put this finish, uh, I'll activate that button. So I'm gonna go to my start point first, and I can start anywhere I want. Actually, it looks like there's already one here, so I'm just gonna create a new one. All right, so now we're gonna do a new one. There we go. So I can do anything I want. I'm just gonna create really any sort of pattern that you want. If I wanted, I can also, if I go up to this view, I could put an image in the background. So if I wanted to trace something, I could put a background image on. I can also make it transparent, so it's a little bit easier to see the grid as well as the image. So I'm gonna go back to my home, and then I'm gonna just finish this because I'm happy with this design. If I go back to my view, I'm going to play and on the side right here, this is my preview. And this is going to stitch out my stitch that I just created. So you, it's gonna be a little faint, but you should be able to see it, see it stitching all the way down. And then what I could do, I can stop that stitching out, go back to my home, and if I'm happy with this design, I can save it, save it to my computer, save it where I want, and then I can also write it to a USB stick. I currently don't have one in because I already have one, the machine that we're going to pull up a decorative stitch that I created before. So if I wanted to, I would put my USB stick in, write it to the USB, and then bring it over to my machine. So Let's go ahead and stitch out one of the stitches I've created. All right, so this is the decorative stitch that I had mentioned before. So this is the decorative stitch that actually Anne Hine created. This is a project that I did that's a while ago for another dealer. And it's a little shawl with a um, towel at the end for when you're cooking to just wipe your hands on. But it has this adorable little KitchenAid or mixer stitch. So that is the, some of the really cool things you can create with this program. These are some simpler ones that I created. So we're gonna stitch these out. So I'm gonna pull this one up. So I have just some fabric. Anytime you do decorative stitches, I recommend having a stabilizer. This is a tearaway stabilizer that is very paper-like and it's a lot easier to tear it's softer. I really like this particular stabilizer and there are several brands that create this type. All right, so I'm gonna go to my screen here and I'm gonna go to this air folder icon. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this over a little bit. Let's 
just a little out of there we go okay i'm going to pull this folder select that and then i also have my usb stick selected so that's good and then i'm going to open up this file and then there's two stitches here that i have on my usb stick that i've created I'm going to select this first one. Oh, I'm going to, I had my feed dogs engaged uh, or dropped. So I actually had, need to push those back on. So let's go ahead and open this back up. We have that selected. I'm going to pull this up. Where'd you go? There we go. So I already have it pulled up in to, it's already saved to my machine. So I didn't need to open it up through the folder. So now this is my decorative stitch that I've created. They're kind of like flying geese. So now I'm going to just stitch it out. I have my F2 foot on. That's the other thing you can do in the program is you can select what foot you'd like it to stitch on. And you can select either the F foot or the A foot. So now I'm just going to start sewing. And then I'm going to get to the point I'm done. And you can see how cute that little flying geese stitch is. And that's how easy it is to create your own stitches using Stitch Composer. So let's go back to our home because I want to talk about real work quickly. But before I do that, I want to go over a few other um, features on the uh, Elnet Excellence 780 Plus. So it's a nine millimeter machine. So it allows you to create any stitch with the maximum width of nine millimeters. It comes with three different st stitch plates as well as 25 feet, which is a lot, and an additional 20 accessories. There's an extension table. There is 350 built-in stitches. In addition to favorite stitch, which allows you to edit any screen, any, any stitch to, your new specification. So I like to use the example of your quarter inch stitch. Everybody sews a little bit differently. And some people push to the right, push to the left, and the default settings may not work for you. So with this machine, you can turn your favorite stitch on and it allows you to save the settings that you prefer so you don't have to change it every time you start to sew. There's also resume mode, which is another one of my favorite features because it allows you to, when you're sewing and you're done sewing for the end of the day, you turn off your machine, the next day, later on when you come in, turn on your machine, it's gonna ask you would you like to resume um, your last stitch? If you hit okay, no matter what stitch you're on, no matter what setting you're on, it's going to go directly to that stitch. So it allows your selection of stitches a lot faster, which who doesn't want to save a little extra time? Because I know I could always use a little bit of extra time 
and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. Hey, Miriam, Brian wants to share a little something too. Oh yeah, great. I, I, let me turn my mic on. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, I actually think that's really cool because last night I was quilting and I had my piecing foot on and I had to leave to go run an errand really quickly. So I turned my machine off and then I came back to my sewing machine and turned it back on and started mm -hmm. sewing as if it was set up to sew what I was doing. And my piecing foot has the needle hole to the left. So yeah. my machine reverted back to the center position and I broke a needle and I was like, yeah. oh no, what if I just put my machine <laughs> yeah. out of time? And yeah. I just realized if I had something like that, then mm -hmm. I wouldn't break my needles nearly as often. So. Yeah. <laughs> It is one of those like simple features that are kind of underused or under appreciated because it really is simple, but sometimes the simplest things are the best. And I think favorite stitch and resume mode are some of those things. So let's go ahead and go over ruler work. So we're going to go back to the close. Um, angle, and we're going to switch to ruler work. Like I mentioned, there are 25 feet that come with this machine. And one of those is the ruler foot, which is this foot right here. One thing that makes this foot special is here. Let's see. See that little dip in the front, that little U? That's cut down, so it allows you to see the needle a lot easier. If this was completely covered, it'd be a little harder to see your needle. So that's a really nice feature on this particular foot. So I'm going to take the ankle off of this foot because it's not a snap-on foot. Anytime you remove um, an ankle, a needle, anything along that lines, you always want to use a screwdriver. Now, I didn't need to take that screw completely off. I just needed to loosen it. And then I slide from the back. Okay, so my hand is a little in the way. Let me see if I can do it the other way. All right, so sliding the ankle from the back and then just tightening it. And then I'm going to use my screw. That's talent right there, Miriam, doing it one handed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was it. not sure if it was going to work. Glad it did. <laughs> All right, so now that I have the ankle on, and now I have to change the settings on the machine. If we look at the screen, you see this t-shirt icon? This is sewing applications. When I select sewing applications, I'm going to go ahead and turn the page because it has an indication saying that there's, I'm on page one of two. I'm going to turn my page. I'm going to select quilting, variable zigzag, and ruler work. All right, we've got that selected. I'm going to turn the page one more and select ruler work. I'm going to lower my feed dogs, which is right here on the right hand side. And now you'll notice it has the QR foot, which is my ruler foot. It has these settings, but I do also have the ability to change any of these settings and then again save it to my favorite stitch. But if I wanted to go back to the default, I could just go ahead and hit the DFT. And that's the same for every stitch on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and start quilting. One thing I want to point out, here's some just some quick examples of ruler work. So this is, this is just some quick little bag that I created that has some ruler work on it. 
That's gorgeous. And these man. are all, thank you. These are all from the Janome ruler sets. These are all from the Janome ruler sets. So I've marked, I've pre-marked my fabric with this template that allows me to line up particular designs. I'm going to be using this spin flex ruler. Oh, here's just some more. This is one of my favorite. And this is just done with your straight ruler, which I, it's one of my favorites. But I also really like straight lines. All right, so this is the fabric marked. So now I'm going to start in the center. I'm gonna place my fabric under my foot. And this particular ruler has this puzzle piece that allows you to slide under your foot. And then you just replace that. And I just have a piece of tape on it to keep it secure. So I'm going to start here at the center. I like to lower my foot when it has plenty of space and it's not close to the ruler. And then I can slide it back where I want to start, which is right here. Because I have my, I can see my little dot here in the center. One of the great things about this machine is you have this awesome giant foot pillow. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the ground because I prefer to sew with a foot pedal. But I just wanted to show you how nice and big that is. And Miriam, the pedal, you may have yes. mentioned it, but does your template have like any grips or anything on it? Like little silicone grips? Do you need I, that? It does not, but I do have a spray that I put on it. Hmm. Oh, I'm not familiar with the spray. What's that product called? Um, it is escaping my mind right now. <laughs> That's okay. But... I think it's I Let can me know. send you the message right after this, <laughs> and then you can tell everyone. All right, sounds like a plan. <laughs> it's a great, great product because you can actually spray it on your cutting rulers as well and add that little extra grip so you, they don't slide. But there are other little grippy things that you can get. This is just the one that I've preferred. All right, so I'm going to go back to that center point. I'm going to, there are lots of lines on this ruler and I'm going to line up the center one at this front and lining it up with the markings on my fabric. All right. So if you notice, it just did a one stitch stop. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. And now I need my tweezers. There we go. And now I could, I can start quilting and I'll have a nice clean back. And when I start quilting, I do stitch in place just for a second to lock my stitches. And I'm just gently pushing against the edge of my ruler and gently pushing down on my um, template. And then I can rotate, get that thread out of the way, rotate my template and then do the same thing. Brian and I have some templates coming to us and we are so excited to try ruler work. You're making it look a lot easier than I'm thinking it is. <laughs> well, I just made a big boo-boo, so. 
maybe <laughs> not that <laughs> as far as the angle that I'm sewing at the very least. <laughs> Well, and just so everybody knows, when trying to stay out of the camera shot, it can be a little bit more awkward than if you were not worrying about a camera. You're doing great, Miriam. <laughs> so the other cool thing about this ruler is you can actually rotate it as well and then get the point on the outside. So when we do that, I'm going to rotate this a little bit so you can see that. And then what I can do is stitch in place a little bit and then I can either cut my threads or I could pull my bobbin thread up. Just gonna stitch in place. I'm just gonna cut my thread. Not the most beautiful demo, but you can kind of see how cool that can look and how easy it can be. So before we run out of time, I do want to go over stitch plates because they're a really cool addition to this machine. So with the stitch plate, we have what's called a quick release stitch plate. There's this lever right here and all I have to do is pop this up and now I can change my stitch plate. If anybody's tuned in to our So Creative Lives in the past, I am a huge fan of this feature. I love the one step needle plate. <laughs> so do I. It gives me slightly less reasons not to clean my machine. <laughs> that get... is the very lazy point. that's what i found <laughs> about cleaning my machine yeah it is a lot easier to do and i'm more likely to do it with this quick release stitch blade <laughs> and then i want to point out a few things on this so let's pull this a little closer so this is my standard zigzag stitch plate that you're going to use for any decorative stitch or anything that you want to be able to have free mobility of moving your needle. There also are a few markings here that I want to point out. So all of these markings, when you line up your fabric against, let's say, the um, 120 degrees, like you're doing a hexagon, when you line them up from the straight line, you're going to, your needle is going to line up in the quarter inch position, exactly a quarter inch from the end, so that you don't have to make hundreds or dozens of markings at the beginning and the end of all of your pieces. If you just use those mark, markings, it's going to make your life so much easier and save so much time. So that's the zigzag stitch plate. Next, we have the straight stitch plate. This one is really nice for quarter inch piecing, free motion quilting, ruler work, because it has smaller holes and actually the center is a complete circle and then on the right and the left are ovals so it allows you to move your needle in this small percentage of stitch uh, of settings so that you can get the quarter inch exactly the way you want it same with over on the left side when you're free motion quilting. This is also really good for thin fabrics or tiny piecing that sometimes if you're starting at a point, you can get that suck down that happens. 
if you have your zigzag plate on, and this is going to help prevent that. And then lastly, but certainly not least, oh, also with the straight stitch plate. Also, with the straight stitch plate, your machine knows which plate you have on. So that if you have your straight stitch plate on and you're trying to do a zigzag, it's going to be grayed out and you're not even going to be able to select it. So it prevents you from doing anything that would damage the machine. So this last stitch plate is one of my favorites. This is the HP plate, which stands for high performance. So with a top loading bobbin, the most accurate stitch that you're gonna get is on the left hand side. And the reason that is, is because your bobbin tail is over here on the left hand side. And all it has to do is go straight up versus if you're quarter inch piecing on the, the right hand side, your bobbin tail has to go all the way over and then up. But when it just goes straight up, it kind of tricks a non straight stitch machine to act like a straight stitch machine. So this is going to be the most professional best stitch that you can get on a non straight stitch machine. And this particular foot has, or this particular stitch plate has a foot that goes with it. Let's switch this. Just like this, which is going to line up with these three feed dogs. There is also markings. So there are markings on this foot. Let's see if you can get there's a quarter in there's a line right here in the front and then right here towards the back. Let's see there these two are exactly a quarter inch from your needle, which is this back line. And what that is really nice for is if you're sewing something and you need to pivot at that corner, a qu quarter inch from the edge, this is gonna give you that marking so you don't have to mark on your fabric on a bunch of different pieces, which I love. This is also another one that you will have to screw on. It's not a snap-on foot, but it is kind of a cult classic foot. It's once we came out with it, people just fell in love with it. When would be a good application to use that for? Oh, so many. <laughs> I could <t> <laughs> so, I heard it's an amazing pairing, and I'm just wondering, like, should you have it on anytime you use a straight stitch, or is there a certain time that it's the most benefit or most beneficial? So there's a lot of usage for it. Some of my favorites are paper piecing mm. because it has that center because it basically looks like, you know, a featherweight foot or an industrial foot. And you can just line up the lines of the paper piecing right in the center of that foot. It's also amazing for curve piecing. When you're doing curve piecing, you get all of that buckling that happens on the left side of the foot. And normally when you have a larger foot, that's going to give you a larger footprint that's going to create more buckles and you're gonna to have to make more adjustments. With this particular foot, you have to do a lot less adjustments because there's only 
like a quarter inch covering the other side of the fabric, the other side of the seam allowance. It's also really good for tiny, more three-dimensional pieces. So like if you've ever done stuffed animals, it's so nice for that because it's such a tiny foot, it doesn't get in the way like a bigger foot can do. Also just regular piecing, it's great for really the sky's the limits. Like it's, you just kind of discover more and more uses for it. It also has a H2 or HP2 foot, which is the same, but the Accu feed version of it. So it's going to have your top feed dogs right there. So it's going to give you the same markings, the same size, the same benefits, but with the additional benefit of adding the additional feed dogs on top. I've used that foot and I absolutely love that one. Isn't it great? It is wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and snap our stitch plate back on and we're just going to push down and then that machine is going to ask you to make sure that you have the proper foot attached. I'm going to X out of that and you can see how easy it is to change out your stitch plate. How are we doing on time? We are doing just fine. You actually have until uh, 10, 15, Miriam. So you've got about 15 minutes, 15, 20 okay. minutes. Fantastic. All right, so let's actually switch the stitch plates here. So I'm going to go back to my utility stitches. So I switched back to my utility stitches. I'm going to put my feed dogs back up. Now you're not going to see them pop back up. But as soon as you start sewing, they're going to um, raise and then start working. So you may notice there were a lot more stitches here. And I also have, this is all grayed out because I have my straight stitch play on. And like I mentioned before, it's not gonna let you do anything that would damage the machine. So all I can really do is a straight stitch and, but you can also do the triple stitch, which is one of my favorite stitches. Um, and it also the hand look stitch, which is another one of my favorite stitches. But you do have the ability to move to your quarter inch and then make some adjustments And then you can make some adjustments within that small settings because you have that oval versus just a complete circle. Instead of just a circle, you have that oval that allows you to make those small adjustments within the right and the left side. So let's switch back to the So I'm going to switch back to the zigzag plate cuz I want to quickly go over variable zigzag. Cuz this is one of my favorite um settings in the machine that people don't really use or are really aware of. And I've been, I'm working on a project with 
this. So it's kind of fresh in my mind and I want to share um, a little bit about it. So I've changed out my foot. So now I just have my F2 foot on. So what variable zigzag is, is it is the ability to change the width of your zigzag using the pressure of your knee lift. So this machine will come with a knee lift. I'm going to insert it in the front. Let me move some of these boxes where my laptop was set on. I'm excited to see this technique. I have not seen this before. Ooh, it's a lot of fun. Sounds fun. Gotta love the good old knee lift. <laughs> I know. And it's a new use for it. There you go. All right. So I have it inserted in the front of my machine. And I'm going to go back to my sewing applications. So I'm going to select that t-shirt. And I'm going to turn my page again until I hit the quilting, variable zigzag, and ruler work. Select that. And I'm going to select variable zigzag. Sorry, my earbud fell out. <laughs> so within um, variable zigzag, I have a couple options. So first of all, I have free motion. And then I also have it with your feed dogs. You also have on these stitches, you may notice the M and the L. So the M means it's going to grow evenly on the right and the left side. So it's going to go this like undulating shape. Or there is the left, which is going to, my left is going to be stationary. And then my right is going to grow depending on the amount of pressure that I put on my knee lift. So this is an example of a little landscape that I made using variable zigzag. How creative, that's so adorable. So this is, shows the left side of the variable zigzag. So I just lined it up with the piecing and then just created some extra dimension and texture to the hills and the mountains. So it's all up in the sky and then these are just regular stitches. So I'm gonna stitch some of these out so you can kind of see it in action. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to start with the M, the one that grows equally on the right and the left. So as I start sewing, I'm going to put pressure on my knee lift. And the more pressure that I put, the wider the zigzag will be. So That's see so how, awesome. And what's so cool about it is that you can also adjust how close your zigzag is and how far apart, the max width. There's all kinds of settings that you can do. This is such a Variable zigzag is such a fun
She's it's having just a, a little bit of, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> it's um, such a fun way to add texture and just additional interest to any sort of art quilting or especially landscapes. You can also do it with free motion that can really add a lot of color really quickly if you're doing any sort of, um, let's say, pictorial quilt where you need to get a lot of color down fast, that variable zigzag can be great for that. So I'm gonna show you it with the left side. So this is how I created the edge of the mountains or the hills. And you can do but a nice gentle. Joe and I are over here admiring the screen because you can see it changing on the screen as you're yeah, sewing. Yeah, right? Isn't that fun? And then you can do some really quick kind of dramatic ones or a nice gradual which I really like to do. And you can see how different that looks because it's a lot tighter and it also is only growing on the one side. Isn't that fun? That's a really cool feature. I kind of feel like we need to do a Facebook group challenge and see what people can come up with <laughs> if their machine oh, yeah. has that particular stitch. <laughs> I would love, I love to it. see that because I it's something it that be people so don't creative. really use as often as I feel like they should. Yeah, I would be very interested to see what people come up with. Very, very creative. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you guys do that. Are you saying I, you're down for the challenge? You're going to do it with us? Oh, yeah. Said, you down? <laughs> I have a head start because I'm already working on a quilt with it. <laughs> we'll grade it on a curve then. Yeah, there you okay. go. <laughs> I'll still accept the challenge. Very fun. I also wanted to go over some decorative stitches because those are another thing that I feel like people don't really use as often as they should. So this is just a quick little example of using decorative stitches in a fun, this is reversed applique and crazy quilt combo. And all of these are stacked decorative stitches. What does the reverse applique mean? So these are just stacked decorative stitches, which I really love to combine stitches to get all new effects. And I see how easy it is to select different decorative stitches. So to select different decorative stitches, I just have to select that spiral icon and then it's gonna be all categorized that are matching the top. You can't see it on here, but on the flip lid, there are a printout of there's a printout of all of the different stitches, which there's again, 350 built in decorative stitches. And then if I wanted to select a particular stitch, let's say I want to go to satin, I can select satin. And then I can select any, let's say that's select number two, which I like this stitch, I also can change the width of it. 
can see it growing, you can see it getting closer, and it gets a completely different look than it was at its default. I'm going to stitch this out quickly. Miriam, I just want to let you know that once we're done with that, we do have several questions for you and we want to get to them before we have to let you go. So if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. This is Perfect. a great time to stop. <laughs> so here's just it stitched out. You can see how different that looks than the regular default settings. All right. So give me some questions. All right, well, let's take a look and see what we have first. Um, Estelle is asking, is this machine more for quilting? I would say yes and no. It's really a well-rounded and well-balanced machine. It leans itself for quilting because it does have this larger throat space as well as the width as well as vertical. And there's also some great LED lighting. Perfect. We also had a couple of people asking about clothing. Um, they're asking if it does well with knits or do you use it with wovens? You can use either. There are several. There's several different built-in stretch stitches. So it works great with um, knit fabrics. And with knit fabrics, I love to use our AccuFeed foot. And it just feeds your knits wonderfully and it keeps things from shifting. So it can be used for both. Wonderful. Um, Carol is asking, does this machine have stitch regulation for free motion quilting and ruler work? It does not. No. But it does, but it have, does have speed, speed control. control. Okay. We were on the same line of thought there, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, Wayden was also asking about clothing. Um, if it's good for clothing. I had seen that you took off the extension table. Can you just touch on why it's nice to have a free arm available when sewing clothing? Oh yeah, so when you have, let's pull this out. So it can be great to have your free arm, not only for clothing, but also for bags. Because if you're working on a small, let's say zipper pouch or a cuff, of or a neckline of a garment, you need that free arm, which would allow the object to go around versus trying to deal with it up above. But yes, it does have an extension table. I just didn't have it set up because it felt like it was a little hard with the setting up everything else. Well, thank you very much, Miriam. I think you covered so many good things about this 780 plus. I, I love it. And I am really, really interested in that variable zigzag stitching. So I got to try that. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. And also our product specialist was looking into that spray that you were using on the template. And mm -hmm. she said, or she's asking, is it Odif spray by chance? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. DIF. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, once again, we appreciate you for coming on and oh. you answered all the questions that we had today. And we're going to do a little recap on some pricing of, on this amazing machine. So I think awesome. if you're good, do you want to stick around for the giveaway and we oh, can yeah. give yeah, somebody sure. a prize here? Awesome. Well, we are doing a $50 gift card to Sewing Parts Online. So let's go ahead and pick that winner and then we can let Miriam, get on with her day. Hopefully you'll tune into the rest of our So Creative Live, right? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's see who it is. I see some familiar names in there. Sherry Lynn Smith, Yay. congratulations. You are the winner of the $50 gift card to Sewing Parts Online. And you can get some awesome. of that spray. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we expect to see your um, little submission on the, the zigzag with on our Facebook group, right, Miriam? <laughs> Most definitely. All right. Well, you have a great day, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again.
<laughs> yeah. Oh, that was wonderful. All right. Well, let's look at some pricing on this awesome machine. So I'm going to grab a little overlay here. We've got the Elna 780 plus computerized sewing machine. We've got an MSRP of $5,499. We have the sale price of $4,599. But if you were here at the beginning of the show, I was mentioning that we cannot um, display our special event pricing. So you do have to call our customer service and they're going to give you an even better pricing on that. So just remember that financing is available and just a really quick recap on that. This comes with 25 feet, <laughs> 25 feet and 20 accessories. So you're getting everything you need to get started. So super great machine, super pumped about that. So as you guys had seen, we are doing our um, giveaways throughout and just a reminder on claiming your prize. So for those that are winning, I'm going to just pop this up here really quick. To claim your prize, you can just visit our link tree, which is linktree forward slash sewing parts online. You can click claim your prize and fill out that form. You can also go to our event page, which is sewing parts online forward slash so creative live, and you can scroll down to the giveaway section and you can fill it out there as well. Uh, just a reminder, please like and share this event. We are having a whole lot of fun. We want others to be able to join us and have that opportunity to see awesome machine demonstrations and have an opportunity to have giveaways. So we are excited for you all to be here. And up next, we are going to be having Bernie Tobish on. I was saying the master technician, he's gonna talk about some troubleshooting. And for his giveaway at the end of his segment, they donated this beautiful basket of their products. They have some amazing products. It's called the Easy Precision Piecing by Acorn. If you've tuned in before, it is um, great for piecing and it just has a wonderful product and Bernie can talk a little bit about that as well in his segment but can we go ahead and get Bernie pulled up Brian all right my friend Bernie and Shelly oh hi guys how are you today Morning. great thank you how, how are, are you? you I am doing very well I see Shelly you're popping on with us too I'm so excited <laughs> it's uh, a nice surprise. For, just a little bit <laughs> Just a little bit, just to say you. hi. Well, I'm glad. I was gonna tell Bernie to give you an air hug for me. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give her a real I one. Got it's, it. it's her birthday <laughs> <There> today. It <laughs> <is>. <laughs> All right. Well, how's everything going in your area? You can tell everybody you're up in Canada where it's beautiful, right? <laughs> uh, it's going well. It's busy like crazy, and uh we're but we're happy to be here, busy or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, since you're a busy couple, why don't we go ahead and get you right into it? And if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll be popping in with questions as needed too. Sounds good. I just want to mention that right now we are on, uh, hang on, we're, we're turning Sorry. lights off here as we do this. Um, <laughs> Okay, you just relax. Don't turn any lights I'm, off. I'm okay. Everything is good. Anything. All right. Yeah, we're on uh, on Wi-Fi rather than on LAN. Uh, we're plugged in, but it hasn't switched over. So hopefully there's no delay when it does switch over. But uh, let's see what happens here. Anyway, we're glad to be here. Uh, Shelly's here because I like to use props when I'm talking about stuff. And Shelly is going to help me out with a prop today. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was asked to speak a little bit about uh, sewing machine maintenance and that's really hard to do in a half an hour uh, because I could probably talk for about a day on, on that. So what I thought I'd do is I talk about something I call it's hardly ever the tension. Tension gets this really, really bad rap. Uh, whatever goes wrong with your machine, it's either, you know, tension or timing. No, just... Timing is the other thing. Okay, I'll just give you a call when I'm, okay. when I'm ready. Um, so tension gets this really bad rap, but it hardly is ever the tension because there's so little to go wrong with the tension mechanism. So um, I thought, first of all, I would just explain a little bit about when you get loops. Because loops, uh, you know, one of the most frequent phone calls I get is, oh, I'm getting loops on the underside of my fabric or my, my uh, it's snarling up at the beginning of my stitching, those kind of things. So I just wanted to cover that. Uh, uh, for you really quickly. And here's one of the most common causes. I'm going to be switching uh, cameras back and forth here. So uh, bear with me as I reacquaint myself with this particular system. But 
I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'll do it from here. Okay. So I'm just going to switch to my, uh, my machine camera so you can see what's going on here. There's so many machines uh, uh, today that have a, a needle down feature. So if I touch the button here, the machine stops with the needle down. And there's a number of ways you can raise that needle back up. But it is a habit uh, for people to, uh, if you've never had a machine before that does it that way, to turn the hand wheel. So I'm turning the hand wheel. And it's about at this point that, that you stop because the needle is well clear. And you pull your fabric out and you put your next piece of fabric in. And I can guarantee you that right at this point, my next stitch is going to snarl up. And I want to I want to show you why. I'm going to move the camera. So forgive me because I don't want to make it dizzy, but uh, I've taken the side off of this. And you can see right here, this is my take-up lever that has that has a thread in it and you see it's still down and it it needs to go up all machines have this it's that lever that moves up and down in front so i'll do it again i'm going i'm going to drop the needle down into the fabric i'm going to raise my needle up you see my take up lever is still moving down as i do that now my needle is well clear but my take up lever is nearly at the bottom of its stroke that means that if I put a pe my new piece of fabric in, this take-up lever is going to want to finish that stitch as I start my next stitch. And I hope I'm making sense here, and I apologize for all the movement. But to prevent the fabric from, let me move this back now, to prevent the fabric from tangling, I'm going to see if I can show you from here. So I'll take the needle down again. So my machine is stopped with the needle down. Here's my take-up lever, just sort of, sorry just sort of in behind now my needle's out but you see it's still down so either use your button to raise it or use your foot control to raise it or whatever method uh, your machine uses to raise that take up lever to the top if you do that you can start stitching again without that tangle if you have a mechanical machine and it just stops randomly it's exactly the same thing. Let me switch cameras again here. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, you just want to turn your hand wheel, you know, until that take up lever is at the very top. And then that stitch is not going to tangle. So at this point, I think I'll call Shelly in here because I just want to kind of show you how simple tension really is and, and what it does. Okay. Um, I love using props. I don't know if I've ever used this for you guys before, but here's a prop. And I'm going to grab some thread here. Okay, so I hope you can see what I'm doing here. We'll turn this just a little sideways. All right, let's do it this way. All right. So see Got if it. you can see what I'm doing. This is fabulous for so many reasons. <laughs> can you see what it, what's happening here? So to explain, what I'm doing is I'm lifting the presser foot. This is my presser foot lifter. You see why Shelly comes in so handy, right? When I lift my presser foot, so much. <laughs> when, I put, when I lift my presser foot lifter, my tension discs separate. I thread my machine. My thread goes in between my discs. I drop the foot. The discs clamp on the thread, and I have tension. Okay? If I was to thread the machine with the foot down... I have no tension on that thread. Can you see that? Because it's, it's, it's locked kind of outside of those tension discs. So what happens is, thanks, Shaw. You were just awesome. You do that Thank so you. well. Thank oh, you so much. I have so much fun doing that. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, and you end up with these big loops on the underside of your fabric. And of course, you blame tension but your tension didn't actually go wrong. It did exactly what you asked of it. So if you have those big loops when you start to sew, um, just go back, lift your presser foot, rethread your machine or pull the thread into the discs and you will be just fine. Am I making sense so far? Does it? Do I need to re-explain anything or any questions? I think that was a perfect explanation, Bernie. I love the visual. <laughs> <laughs> Props are so great, right? <laughs> All right. There are a few other uh, things that 
can kind of fall more under the maintenance uh, thing. So I'm going to switch cameras again. I had some bad lighting earlier. I hope I've solved the problem, but we shall see. Okay, yeah, I think that looks okay. So here you will see a number of different types of sewing, sewing machine uh, systems and, and kind of I'll explain where I'm going with this. Uh, if you have a drop-in bobbin system and you see this type of bobbin case here, uh, there are little things that can happen to that bobbin case that can affect your stitching. And I'm going to show you on this bobbin case, I hope you can see this. Uh, let me grab a little pointer here to help. But right here, I hope you can see there's two little nicks. Uh, I, I see them on my screen. I, I hope you can see them. Just two Looks little... great on this end, Bernie. Okay, great. Uh, and those nicks are caused by a needle deflecting or a needle breaking and coming in contact with that bobbin case. And I can polish that off with some number 400 wet and dry sandpaper, and that will be as good as new. The other place you might want to check, sometimes these bobbin cases, if you get a thread tangle, you know, based on uh, the presser foot being down when you threaded your machine, these bobbin cases can sometimes spin around. And when you get it back in right, you can find those little nicks here. You might find a little scratch under here. So every once in a while when you're looking at your machine and you're kind of brushing out that area, maybe take out your bobbin case there. You can see those two little marks quite clearly there. And just kind of have a look and see if there's anything there, that any needle damage, and, and kind of polish that off. If, however, you are at this stage, I don't know if you can see this. Let me get this focused properly. Here, you can see that there's a whole lot of damage. That, that's too much to polish out. You'll have to replace. Yeah, this isn't focusing really well. There we go. You'll have to replace that's the that point where you need to call sewing parts online and get a new bobbin case. <laughs> well, that's what I was just going to say. You call sewing parts online, you tell them what the model of your machine is, and they'll send you out a new bobbin case. And that's a that's a fairly common thing I see. But once again, you know, tension will get the bad rap because that's going to make your stitching look bad. Your your tension won't be even. You might have the knot pulled up and down in your fabric. Um, and speaking of knots. Michelle, would you mind just grabbing my three samples, my tension samples? Thanks. Um, let's see here. Okay. I hope you recognize these three different types of sewing system. This is a rotary hook. And you might see this in your, you know, your Juki uh, mid-arm, your, you know, your high-speed machine. This is a, an oscillating hook. You might see this in some of your older uh, in some of your older Bernina machines, some of the older Japanese machines. And this is a drop-in bobbin style where, you know, the bobbin fits into here like this and it rotates around the bobbin. And I want to point out some things here that can also create what looks like a tension issue but really isn't. Um, you probably won't be able to see this, but right here, let me get close, the needle has hit that hook and it's created a little nick. And every time the thread passes over that little nick, it's going to catch and make what looks like uneven tension. So again, when you're down there cleaning out your machine, run your nail around this area. Actually, there's two on this. Uh, run your nail around that area. And you can use that same number 400 wet and dry sandpaper to polish that off and make it nice and smooth again. It can be so bad that it actually just shreds and tears your thread. So it's a, it's a little thing, but it makes a difference. Then uh, here, right here, we have what's called the tip, the tip of the hook. I'm, I'm kind of, see, if, I'm trying to watch myself on the screen at the same time that, okay, here's a good angle. That's the tip of the hook. And if you ran your nail, your fingernail, your thumbnail along this edge, right towards the tip, very often you're going to feel a little burr right on the tip here. Again, that magic number 400 wet and dry sandpaper will take, there's a better shot right there. Okay, so right along here, this slope edge. So polish along this slope edge towards the tip and take that burr off. That's also enough to make your tension look bad or to actually thread, shred your thread. And it'll really, really show up when you're using specialty threads. 
you know, monofilaments and metallics and, and those fine, uh, those, I call them tinsel-like threads, like, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Uh, sliver, that type of thing, hologram, th those flat tinsel-like threads, that'll really show up. On this type of system, the drop-in bobbin system, uh, let's see if I get a good shot here. Okay, so this is the tip of the hook right here. And again, you run your nail towards the tip from the, on this slope edge. And then when if you feel that burr, you polish this side. Never polish this side. Just polish this side right here. And clean off that little burr. Now here's something also I want to mention. You notice that this bobbin case and this bobbin case both have metal in the bottom. That metal is there because if you have, well, I think that, for example, that Elna machine that you just showed, that, that hook will have a black metal ring in it. And that metal ring is, so if you have a Janome uh, that, and Elna, there are various other types of machines that have that. You look for that ring. It's magnetic and it pulls down this bobbin case to kind of keep it from jumping around and, you know, keep it quieter. So that magnet has a fair amount of pull. So those machines came with, um, they, they came with plastic bobbins. So it's really important that you continue to use plastic bobbins, but I have seen where people think, well, you know, plastic's good, but I'm going to make mine last long and I'm going to use metal bobbins. But when you put a metal bobbin in there, the magnet also pulls down on that bobbin and it can change your tension. It's a little thing, but it really does make a difference. So if you have that type of bobbin case, you have that metal ring down below, and this the, the clue will be that the bottom of your bobbin case is metal, um, just use your plastic bobbins. They were, they were made for that machine. And again, you know, you can get the right bobbins at sewing parts online. All right. Now, uh, those machines, a lot of those machines also have in the center of that hook a little wick. I want to point out, and, and I have a good reason for saying this, that is a felt wick. It is not lint. It's meant to be there. And that you would oil every once in a while. You just put a drop of oil in there, and, and it, uh, it oils the, well, it oils this portion. How's that? It's very important. Uh, so don't pull that wick out thinking it's lint. It is not lint. Okay. Very, very important. All right. I am going to switch cameras again here. In the meantime, I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has them. On. Perfect. I was just about to ask you if you had time for a couple. Um, Estelle is asking, does using the cutter prevent the tangles? Uh, using the cutter will position, yes, it will position your take-up lever at the top like it is supposed to. It's a good idea when you've used your cutter not to pull extra thread out of the back of the needle. Uh, it has cut the thread at a, at a length that leaves the smallest tail under the fabric when you start your next stitching. Um, okay, I actually have a question on that, Bernie. Um, I have the Juki TL2010Q here, you know, the semi-industrial machine. It does have the thread cutter feature. Um, however, in the manual, it says to pull your, th you know, bobbin thread and your upper thread back. Uh, but sometimes we have people stating that um, it's not picking up correctly or anything when you use the thread cutter and start right away. Yeah. What, what would be the reason behind that? And why does the instruction manual say to pull the thread back? Well. It uh, that's a good question. I, I've never had that experience with that machine, but it, I, I hope, uh, I don't think I'm wrong about this, but you know, it's possible that I'm wrong about this. <laughs> up above, there, there's a, there's a small pretension up above the regular tension on that machine. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Yes, and actually, I apologize. I misspoke. We have the 2000 QI. I have the 2010 Q, um, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the 2010Q does have the pretensioner. You are correct. Yeah, my understanding is if you adjust that uh, higher or lower, that can help adjust the length of the cut. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to look that. into that too because you, I'm, I'm really could, interested. Yeah, you could sweep your thread back. That makes sense to me. But 
those machines, uh, all machines that have thread cutters, they were designed to give you a long enough cut that your next stitch will not, it'll form, right? There's enough thread there for that to form. I hope I'm making sense with that. Yeah, you are. Uh, the other question that we had is from Debbie. She said that her stitches yesterday were kind of gathered or mm -hmm. a little too tightly stitched together. She was hoping that you would touch on that. A um, couple of questions. What machine is it? If, if she, she can tell me. Debbie, like, if you're did, watching did it, did it, <laughs> Yeah, did it, did it shorten her stitch length? Did it, or did it just pucker her fabrics? I'm and, sorry, I don't have any more information yeah, than and that. So, right yeah, now. those are sorry, those are questions I have to ask. And was her top tension set at its default setting? You know, sometimes we change that. Also, sometimes the type of thread we use. Anytime we use one of the uh, monofilament threads, everywhere those threads touch metal. And you know, if you look at all the places in the thread path. Ah, Genomi 1600. Okay, so that is, uh, that's one of the, puckered a little bit. Okay, I would lower the top tension slightly on that machine, if that makes sense to you. So just decrease the amount of tension here. And here, let me explain why. I think I have a good way of explaining why. I think if you looked at the tension on your stitching, this is for Debbie, you'd probably notice that your bobbin thread got pulled to the surface and, and things started to pucker, okay? And when you're thinking of tension, sometimes I encourage you to stop calling it tension and let's call it, um, let's call it knot control, okay? Because that top tension setting just controls where this knot is in your fabric. And where we want the knot is here in the center of the fabric, all right? So for Debbie, let me grab some thread here. I'm sure what was happening was probably something like this. It was set very tight on the top. And so how do we fix that? So if you think of that top tension dial as knot control, here my knot's too high. And I would like to lower that knot. And here's how easy tension is. If you want to lower the knot, lower the number. If my knot's too low and I want to raise it, raise the knot to raise the, or sorry, raise the number to raise the knot. And really, if, if you think about this, it is so simple. You are just controlling where the knot is in your fabric. If you look at a well-adjusted sewing machine, it's a constant. And then we throw variables at it. And the variables are thread, fabric, and sometimes the task that we're trying to complete. And how we deal with those variables is through that tension adjustment, through our needle selection, okay? So it's important to know that there are some other adjustments too, but I, we don't have time here today to go into all of those. But that is how we control those variables. So it's possible that for, for Debbie, maybe she had switched to a different type of thread. Um, maybe, maybe she had adjusted her tension for something else. But basically, if you remember, it's not control. You're moving that knot up and down in the fabric and you have complete control. Tension isn't your enemy, it's actually your best friend because uh, you have such control over those variables that we throw at the fabric. I mean, I've had people tell me they were in a class and the instructor says, don't ever touch your tension. Well, then I have to ask, if you're never meant to touch it, why do you have such a wide range of control over it? You know, on most machines, it's a zero to nine adjust. Of course, that will, of course, that will vary but you have a great range of adjustment from zero to a lot of tension to help you to overcome some of those variables. I hope, Debbie, that that helps you a little bit. Um, any other questions that we have? I just have to say, Bernie, we're seeing a bunch of comments here that people are absolutely loving the visuals. I am one of them. They are so helpful to understand and i just want to share linda's here she said she's been sewing for 60 years and never understood any of this until now so she's definitely buying your book so actually if you want to take a second to tell everybody about your book that'd be awesome all right it's time for shameless self-promotion here we go <laughs> do it <laughs> uh, okay so this is my first book it's it's from cnt publishing it's called a field guide you and your sewing machine and I've, I've done the coil binding on this because I use it in class, as you can see all the little tabs in it. But 
it is not a, a book to teach you how to replace parts on your sewing machine or how to fix your timing, that kind of stuff. It is there. Everything I've talked about this morning actually is in that book with a picture of probably your particular sewing system. And it's, it's meant to, so that you're able to do what I just talked to you about it, to troubleshoot your sewing machine. And, to, you know, cause at 11 o'clock at night when you're, you know, I turn my phone off because otherwise I get, I get phone calls, but this helps you in the back of the book is a troubleshooting section. Let me grab a pointer here. And I have to remember I'm backwards here to the camera. So here, and this row would be the issue. And the next row would be, and see this particular issue has a lot of probable causes. And here are the likely solutions and what page you'd find it on. It's not meant for technicians. It's meant for you to be able to troubleshoot your machine. So. Uh, CNT then did a, a slightly smaller version that is a lay flat type of a version that you can, uh, here's the troubleshooting section. Again, there's quite a few pages to it. This you can take to, with you to classes and retreats and everything is there and including the props that I just used. And it's just a really easy way to understand your machine. You know, one thing I learned fairly early in my career is that people have a a relationship with their sewing machine and it is a far more personal relationship than the one that you have with your toaster or your mix master this is a love-hate relationship and you know you're going to love it one day and boy the next day maybe maybe you don't love it because the last time you sewed it worked and this time i'm sewing something went wrong why is that and i can guarantee you it's usually something very very simple okay now while i'm at it I'm going to quickly promote Shelley's book on easy precision piecing because if you love your corners to match and your points to meet and all that kind of stuff, this is a really, really great book to help you with that. She's got a lot of uh, a lot of unique tips, things that you're not going to find in uh, in other books as well. Um, I wanted to go back just briefly, and unless there are questions, and I'm happy you interrupt me anytime. So here's a, again an example of balance tension where the knot is right in the center of the fabric, okay? So you'd look at that and say, okay, that's good, that's good. But let's say you were machine quilting a quilt. You have decided to use the dark color on the back because you have a dark backing, but your top is lighter and you're using a lighter thread. Now you look in the hole in the top and you see that dot of the thread from the back. This doesn't have to be quilting, it can be anything that you're this isn't for the construction of it. This is for the stitching that shows that you're trying to show off. So is it really important here to have perfectly balanced tension? Or would it be okay to lower my top tension down so this knot sinks down into the batting? So that just to the point where you don't see it. Not so low that it loops on the back, but just so low that you don't see it. So uh, if you... Uh, if you understand what your tension is there for and how to use it and really how simple it is, it's your friend. It is not your enemy. It is there so that you can deal with those kind of variables. Um, honestly, you'll start to really love, wow, I can adjust this. Gee, look, I just switched threads or I have two, uh, you know, variables could be two threads, two different weights of thread. You know, here I have a, a fine, I, I see this all the time. Here I have a fine thread. Oh, here it is. So let's say for the sake of just using an example, I'm going to use a heavy thread on top and I'm gonna keep my lightweight thread in the bottom. What will likely happen is that heavier thread will pull, pull that knot to the top because you know, it's kind of like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito in twins. They weren't really twins, they were mismatched. And this is a mismatch. This is a variable. I'm going to lower the number to get that to balance properly. So if you start to understand the variables and, and you look at your machine today and you're asking yourself, well, why did it work last week? But right now it isn't working. What, what changed? Was it your needle that changed? Was it the fabric that changed? Uh, was it the job you were trying to accomplish? Was it the thread that changed? Go back to that change and understand what you need to do to make it right. 
All right, I better I better be quiet here. Like I said, I could talk for hours, but uh, <laughs> if there's any I questions, love listening to you talk, you have so much good information, Bernie. Uh, but you. I do have to shamelessly plug for you as well because your book seriously should be in every sewing room. I've used it, like. I have to say it like almost gives you a sense of empowerment with your machine where you feel like you have control of your machine, you know it better. And yeah, it's just a resource that I'm not going to be without. So thank yeah, you and for that's that. The whole and idea. thank you for the visual. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. That's the whole idea is that you should be empowered. You, you should understand your machine. And when you do, things change. You, if you can focus on the art, here's how I always put this. If you get the fundamentals, and the technique stuff you can focus on the art because what? that's your focus rather than trying to get your machine to, to do something that you want it to do yeah well next time i think we're going to have to have a longer segment <laughs> <laughs> be careful well, what you, you wish for give away your beautiful I, I missed it what was it <laughs> be careful what you wish for <laughs> yeah. I wish for that. <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to stick around while we give away your beautiful basket? That would be great. Yes. Awesome. Hey, Shelly. So I just hey. want to say that our physical items that we're giving away are generally only available for the U.S. and our cards, the gift cards, are available internationally. But because they donated this beautiful basket, we are opening up um, the basket for international winners as well. So. Let's go ahead and show a quick picture of it. We're going to cover our faces. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful mm -hmm. basket. And let's go ahead and pick our winner, Brian. All right. Let's see who it is. All right. I'm going to run the giveaway. After the giveaway is chosen, do you want to shamelessly plug our podcast since Bernie and Shelly joined us for it? They did, <laughs> yes. So we will talk about that in just a second. Yay, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Congratulations. Lisa. Congratulations. Lisa. Congratulations, Lisa. Yes. And as Brian had said, Bernie and Shelly joined us for our, an episode of our So Inspired podcast. So we are super excited to be releasing that here soon towards the end of June. Uh, but as Bernie knows, I'm very gullible. <laughs> he had me fall for a few things. <laughs> but their story was wonderful. So we'll all, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. We'll be sure to share it when it comes out. So thank you for joining for that and So Creative Live and for donating the beautiful basket. And we can't wait to have you back. Thank, thank you, you so much. Looking forward to it too. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Have a Bye. wonderful day. Uh, we just love Team Tobish. They're so sweet. <laughs> and just a load of information too. So super great. So let's just talk really quickly about how to claim your prize. Let's back up here for our winners. To claim your prize, just go to our link tree and that's gonna be link tree forward slash sewing parts online. Click claim your prize and fill out the form. You can also go to our event page, which is sewing parts online and that's gonna be forward slash so creative live. And you can scroll on down to the giveaway section and fill out the form there. So we've been saying, so I had seen a question a little bit ago that was asking, why is everybody commenting feed dog? So for those of you that are just joining, what we're doing is we're doing a giveaway on like every segment here. So at the beginning, I will show you what the prize is going to be. And then throughout the segment, we're going to pop up a surprise word and it'll be a hashtag and then a surprise sewing word like feed dog. And then once it pops up, you just comment that. And then at the end of the segment, we'll collect all those comments and we will pick a winner. So that's what's going on. And speaking of giveaways, why don't we go ahead and announce what the next one is going to be? I'm excited for this one. This is such an awesome giveaway. We are going to be doing the Aero Storage Cube Craft Organizer. If you were here at the beginning of the show, I was talking about how you can um, store your thread, you can store some fabric or notions in those little cubbies, but if it's turned around, it actually has a couple of rods as well. So you can have your interfacing or maybe ribbon, but it just helps organize your space. That's a $249 value, and we just want to say thank you to Arrow for donating that to us. So super excited about that. Before we pull Chris up, let me turn my mic on. I do it every time, man. <laughs> every time. <laughs> uh, but before we pull Chris up, I just want to ask everybody for a quick favor. We are trying to make these events as big as possible. The more people we get during these events, the more 
proof of concept we can give to the people who join and, and say, look, at, we have this many people that come on and they can donate more prizes, bigger prizes to be given away to our sewing community. So if you could take a moment to like or uh, up, upvote on YouTube, I'm saying upvote, like it's Reddit. <laughs> Subscribe like, to our upvote? channel. <laughs> And please, the, the most important one, if you could share this on Facebook, it would be so helpful for us. We really want to make these events as huge as possible because it just makes it more fun for everybody. So we would be really thankful if you did that. Yes. And thank you all for continuing to comment. We enjoy seeing the comments and it's, it's nice to know that you're enjoying the show. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. And before I bring Chris on, I just want to recap super quick on Bernie's book. Uh, I don't have one of Shelley's, but I just want to show you Bernie's. It's a field guide, you and your sewing machine. Make sure you get this one. Super, super awesome book. So I do want to pull Chris up. And this time I'm going to let him introduce himself because I know Chris, but I kind of forget everybody else might not. So let's go ahead and pull Chris up and he can introduce himself. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing this morning? Pretty good. I was saying that I'm going to let you introduce yourself because last time I'm like, I just went on chatting like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to do our thing. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? <laughs> sure. Well, hello, everybody. I am Chris Marchini with Rose City Originals. So I'm a quilt pattern designer and I have a lot of uh, social media posts where you can go and learn tips and tricks about improving your quilting skills. Uh, my pages are definitely a safe place, especially for new quilters. We don't judge, we just help. Love it. That's a perfect explanation. Today, Chris is going to show a little bit about his TL2010Q and some accessories that he uses with that machine. So without further ado, Chris, I will let you take it away. Sounds good. All right, so I've already got my machine all set up here. There are four feet that I'm going to be talking about today that go with uh, specifically the TL2010Q that I use. Uh, but most of these feeds, some version of it is available for pretty much any sewing machine out on the market. So the few feet that we're going to talk about first, we have our stitch in the ditch foot. So you can see it has a little guide there that is directly in the center. And that's going to help you follow your seams if you just want to do some simple stitch in the ditch quilting. We're also gonna talk about our walking foot and why this is important, especially if you have a bulky quilt. Then we're gonna get a little more complicated, talk about our ruler foot. We're gonna use some westerly guides and do some ruler work. And after that, we're gonna go crazy with our free motion foot. And this is where you can just doodle away all day on your quilt and get a really cool quilting design. So let's uh, get me moved over. I'm gonna change my camera, whoops. Wrong button. There we go. All right, so before we start quilting, a few tips. First is your needle size. So when you're piecing your quilt, you're probably using a 10 or a 12, depending on your fabric. When you're doing your top stitch quilting, you wanna up that needle size. Remember, you're going through not only your quilt, you're going through your batting, you're going through your backing, and if you've pressed your seams to the side, you're gonna have a lot of bulk in spots. So you want a needle that's not going to flex when you hit that. So right now I have a number 16 in here. If you have a quilting needle or a top stitch needle, those work very well for this as well. Um, I always recommend doing a test first. With straight line quilting, it's not so bad, but with your free motion, you wanna make sure that your tension is set right. And we just had that lovely segment on tension. So you know if you need to up it or down it, um, depending on where your knot is ending up. Another tip for both straight line and free motion is to lower your speed. If your machine can actually lower its speed, uh, mine has a little oops, dial right here. So I have it at about 50%. That keeps me from running away with my foot control. If not, just uh, if you don't have a speed control built into your machine, just try to remember not to, you know, go pedal to the metal and floor it every time. You want to go nice and slow when you're doing your quilting. And lastly, when you're doing straight line quilting, I always like to increase my stitch length. I normally piece at about a two 
and I'll increase my stitch length to a three when I'm doing my top stitch quilting. All right, so let's get our foot changed here. I still have my quarter inch piecing foot in. So changing feet on your machine is super easy. There's a thumb screw on the side here. For this foot, it has a notch in it, so it just slides right out. We'll start with our uh, stitch in the ditch foot, which just has a notch. So we'll just slip that on and tighten this down nice and tight. If you have trouble tightening it with your fingers, most machines come with the screwdriver. If not, you can just grab any flathead screwdriver and make sure that's on there real good. All right, let's lay this out. For our straight line quilting, so the stitch in the ditch foot and the walking foot, my feed dogs are still up because I need my machine to help me push that fabric through. I've already got my quilt top all basted. I've got my pins in here. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you remove your pins as you sew if they're going to be in your path. You don't want to sew over your safety pins because you won't be able to get them out without breaking your stitching. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> We're just going to start. This foot is really handy if you're wanting just simple, simple straight line quilting right in your seams so that you don't really see it, but it gives you that... Um, the benefit of having it quilted, it keeps all your layers together, but it doesn't distract from your beautiful fabric. So we're just gonna go nice and slow. And you just keep that guide right on the seam. When you're quilting um, or sewing in general, really, it's best not to watch your needle. That will get you all kinds of messed up and off track. You wanna watch the front of your foot and so with this foot having that little guide, it makes it really handy. I've got a little bump there. Just gonna ease that in. Chris, do you prefer to use your speed control or do you like to just kind of manually control it with your foot? Um, so I am doing some manual control with my foot, but lowering the speed control, I will tell you, has helped me immensely because I'm, I'm a fast sewer. Like when I'm piecing, I am just ripping through it like crazy. And I'll forget, <laughs> yes, I'll forget that I need to slow down when I'm quilting. So adjusting the speed control is a good reminder for that. And, you know, sometimes your foot just slips and you go all the way, you know, all the way to the floor. And this way, if that happens, it's not that big a deal. I understand that. That goes with the ask me how I know. When you get tired and your foot just falls. <laughs> yes. All right. We just got that done. I do have a little bit of a bump there. I did something I shouldn't have done on this particular sample and actually stitched all the way around the edges first. And I should have left them loose because then you get, when you get to the end, it just pushes it out where it wants to go. Um, just in case anyone is wondering, for this quilt in particular, I'm actually using Inselbright as my batting because eventually these will end up as some oven mitts. So you might hear a little crinkle. I don't know if that actually picks up on the microphone or not. I'm not so hearing the crinkle, but those are going to be super cute oven mitts. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the same fabric I used at our last So Creative Live for the, my first quilt. I noticed that. <laughs> Very cute. Thank you. So there I just stitched that and you can't see it. I'm using some variegated uh, Aurifil thread. It's like a, a gray to white. So it matches this gray here. But this foot really helps you keep right in that seam. So your stitches basically disappear. So if you're not super confident in your top stitching, this is a great option when you're first learning. We'll do one more line here. Definitely chime in if there's any questions in the chat. I'm sure there are lots. We do have one from Polly. She says, does this Juki have more speed than the average machine? I would say yes. I don't know what its exact stitches per minute is, but I know it goes super fast when I have the speed turned all the way up and I just floor it when I'm piecing. It just zooms straight through it. <laughs> I believe it's 1200. Brian, can you confirm that for me? 1500. 1500. 
fast. It's very speedy. Uh, I also have the same machine and I utilize the speed control because I'm not up to that 1500 <laughs> stitches per minute yet. <laughs> One thing that I do want to interject with the stitch in a ditch foot, um, if we all notice like the needles directly behind his guide, uh, there are stitch in a ditch feet for your other type of machine as well, where you can move the needle and use it more like an edge stitch foot. But you do have to make sure that there's a wider opening where the needle goes into the fabric. But it's really cool to know that a straight stitch machine has different feet, you know, so you can do different applications. I love that. Yeah, very similar to this foot. I also just got, no, I don't know where I put it, um, another quarter inch foot that is the same thing. It has a guide, but it's off to the side. So it's mm -hmm. a quarter inch from the needle. So this is really handy because it doesn't let your fabric pass underneath when you're doing your piecing versus this quarter inch foot where you're just lining it up here and visually keeping it on track. There are lots and lots of different feet available for pretty much any machine, even like I used to sew exclusively on vintage machines. And just if you know if your machine is high shank or low shank, you can get a lot of these aftermarket feet um, for your machine, which come in really handy. Okay, so there's a couple lines of our stitch in the ditch. So now we're going to switch over to our walking foot. Now, a walking foot might look like a strange contraption if you've never used one, and it, it kind of is. There's a couple different moving pieces on here. So here's the screw hole where we're going to mount it to our sewing machine shaft. And this part right here that moves up and down, it looks like a little claw, is actually going to go... Let's see if I can move my camera just a little. But it's going to go over this needle bar right here. And as your needle goes up and down, it's going to move this up and down. And when this moves up and down, it moves these little feet right here up and down, which are spring loaded. They move front and back. And this basically gives you your feed dogs on the bottom moving your machine and then feed dogs on the top moving the top layer at the same rate. This is especially important if you're working with a bulky quilt or bulky material in general, like if you're sewing with minky definitely want to use a walking foot. If you've got a high loft batting, a walking foot is going to be your best friend. Um, uh, like silky fabric, stuff that's really slick and doesn't want to stay together with friction. This is going to help you move both layers through evenly. Chris, can you clarify what high loft batting is? Sure. So like I said, I'm using uh, Insole Bright here, which is pretty thin. It's... Um, it's just like the insulating layer and then some fuzz on it. A high loft batting, and I don't think I have any examples, but it would be like a, a polyester batting, you know, that's super fluffy. Sometimes it's, you know, a quarter inch up to a half inch thick. It's, it's super soft and easy to squish, but it's got a high loft to it. It's very puffy. That's a good word for it. So if it's puffy and you've got all these layers, you know, it's going to sit up really high until your uh, foot hits it. And that's where it's going to squish it down. And if you're using just your regular foot, your top layer and your bottom layer are going to end up moving around. So when you're all done, it's going to look kind of twisted. All right. So this particular foot only has a hole and not a notch like our other foot. So we have to take the thumb screw all the way out. Of course, I used a screwdriver, so I tightened it beyond what I could do with my finger. So you got to take that thumb screw all the way out. Make sure you don't lose that. Those are very important. Take off our old foot. And now this foot can be a little tricky to get on when you're first starting out because you need to get this little claw over the needle bar, which I tend to do first, and then swing in the other side to go over the shaft. We'll line up the holes and then screw it in. This particular walking foot actually came with the TL2010Q. So it's obviously compatible and works perfectly for it. Um, if you are needing to get an aftermarket walking foot, I know that the website for sewing parts online has a bunch of compatibility 
charts when you're looking at them to make sure that it works for your particular machine. Now, first, I'm just going to do a quick straight line. Well, I say quick. We, again, need to go slow. I hear it said a lot, this is a walking foot, not a running foot. You don't want to go too fast with this foot on. Um, I have broken walking feet in the past by going too fast. So just take your time. This isn't a race. And I just try to keep the seam halfway between in this little gap right here. You know, unfortunately, this doesn't have the benefit of that guide to go straight down the seam. So this one takes a little more care and effort if you're wanting to get directly in that seam for a stitch in the ditch. But you can see every time I stitch and this comes down, these little feet come up. That's allowing um, the machine to move them forward so that when it goes down, I'll just do this in slow-mo. So it goes down and right now my underside feed dogs are about to pull the fabric back. And you can see that those are moving back as well. Well, you can kind of see it's a little far away. So they move back along with the underside feed dogs so that you have a nice even feed. And it doesn't matter what stitch length you're on, it's going to do the same thing. They're spring loaded, um, so they just go along with whatever the underside feed dogs are going to pull the fabric through, whatever length. Almost to the end. And while Chris is doing that, I just want to let everybody know, he's joined us in the past and he did a full quilt tutorial, like a beginner's quilt and had a great PDF and everything available. It was wonderful. So if you are new to quilting and you're looking for a great tutorial, I would highly recommend checking out his previous um, segment. So uh, it was, it's totally worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. There, so now we've got another one. I did pretty good keeping on target in that seam. Um, with a walking foot, it's a little more, I think, versatile than a lot of people think. They think all you can do is straight line quilting with it. But you can actually do some really cool designs um, with just some slight movement. So I'll show you here. We'll go down the center of this row. And I'm going to do just kind of a wavy line. And wavy lines can be really cool. Um, they're a little more freeing. You don't have to be quite so precise. And you just kind of gently rock back and forth. And if you do your whole quilt full of wavy lines that don't really echo each other, they're, you know, each line is unique and kind of goes along its own path. Uh, it gives a really cool all over effect to your quilt. Just lots of movement. Sometimes they might you know, cross over depending on how close you do them to each other. But it just gives kind of that, you know, artistic free form look to your overall quilt. When doing the wavy lines too, it'd probably look really cool with that high loft batting to give that puff and texture also. Yes, absolutely. We also have a Facebook user asking, what stitch length are you using right now? Currently my machine is set at a three. I like to do a little bit bigger stitch when I'm doing my top stitching, um, especially if you're using like a decorative thread where you can like see your individual stitches. I just think it looks really nice and polished that way. Three is my go-to too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think most machines like for piecing, you're at like a 2.5. I have found that to be a little big for my piecing. So I go down to a two for my piecing and then up to a three for my quilting. And that's kind of where my machine lives in its little happy zone. So there you can see I've got just a gentle wave there. I can do another one. You can even go over your seam and just kind of, you know, veer off every now and then. The more you do it, the less it looks like an accident and the more it looks intentional. So a fun tip there, if you're having trouble staying on your seam, just try to, or you could, I mean, really just give up on staying on your seam and just kind of rock back and forth to go over it. 
Um, another thing you can do with your walking foot, let's see if I can get this set up here. You can even do like concentric circles if they're large enough. So if I had some curved piecing here, I don't think I have anything with curves. You can follow along. Let us pretend there's a curve here. And you can even get in some curves, so long as you're not trying to do like tiny little pebble circles. Let me go where you can. There we go. You can get curves, and then you can echo that. This particular foot is about a quarter inch from the needle to the edge, so you can just follow along. Talking about doing curves, um, on the social circle that uh, an episode we did a couple of weeks ago, we actually did oven mitts and you do go around curves and I use this very walking foot and oh my goodness, it was a lifesaver. So when you make your, your oven mitts, that'll definitely come in handy. <laughs> that is good to know. Yeah, especially because, I mean, these are going to become oven mitts. Yep. Um, you'll have two layers of your top quilting. You'll have two layers of batting, two layers of backing. So you're going to be dealing with quite a thick thick bit there. So that's a really good tip. So there you go. I just followed a quarter inch and you can just keep going. Um, if you, I don't think this one has it. Some walking feet have a little gap where you could put a bar in that has a guide on it. So you can adjust that guide. So it follows your previous stitching. So you can get like an inch apart or however wide it goes. That's another option you can do with your walking foot. Uh, when I did my first quilt tutorial walkthrough on the previous Sell Creative Live, we also used some painter's tape, which I don't know where I put it, but here's some masking tape. And you can use this to mark out where you want your lines. This is especially helpful if you're wanting to do like a diagonal quilting and your squares are rather large and you want to keep on a straight line. Flip it over and we'll work on this other side. So let's say I wanted to sew diagonally here, but this was a solid piece, it not um, patchwork, because this is fairly short distance. You can follow that. But you can take your masking tape and place it down about a quarter inch away from the corners, because this is a quarter inch from the needle to the edge of the foot. So you can just lay that down. There we go. And then follow that with your foot. Chris, have... NC Brooks is asking, uh, when using the walking foot, do you recommend that the lower, oh, excuse me, let me read that again. Do you recommend lowering the feed dogs halfway up or all the way up? They should be all the way up, just like you're sewing normally. My machine here only has the option for up and down. There's no like in between. I do know that some machines though, you can have a couple different settings. So it's just barely grabbing the fabric versus you know having them fully engaged. But definitely keep your feed dogs fully engaged for this. That's what makes these work. These aren't, um, they're not mechanical. There's nothing actually pushing and pulling the little feed dogs on the foot. They're just spring loaded. And what it does is when they're down, you'll see that, well, maybe you won't see too much, but these feet, it actually lifts up. So these are not pressing on the fabric right now, just these ones. And because they're spring loaded, it'll move them back and forth with whatever force is being placed by the machine itself. So if your feed dogs were down, your fabric's gonna stay in place these aren't gonna actually move it. So you need your feed dogs to remain engaged for your walking foot. Thank you. You're welcome. I have seen some folks use the masking tape trick and actually placing the edge of the tape right on the corner where you want to sew and then sewing so that your needle is right on the edge of the tape. And I don't like doing that because then if you hit the tape, like you're sewing the tape to your piece, and then you gotta pull out the tweezers 
and pick out tiny little pieces of tape, which is not fun. <laughs> so I like to do it a quarter inch away from where I want it to be sewn and then just follow that. I believe you touched on this before, but Karen is asking, do you sew your outer edge of the quilt before quilting? So I did on this one and I regret it because as I get to the edge, it's making a little bump. Let's see if it does it on this side. Um, I recommend not doing that. I don't know what possessed me to do it on this one, but I did. Um, if you don't have that done, then when you get to the edge, it just pushes the fabric with as much excess as it needs. But if it's sewn down, you'll end up with a little bubble. So I'm coming to a point where I have my safety pin, so I need to take that out. Because we, again, don't want to sew over those. They will become a permanent feature of your quilt, unless you want to break the stitches. All right, that one didn't have a little bump, but I know the ones over here did, so I'll show you. So right here, you can see there was a little bit of fullness, and because I had stitched down the edge, it just went over. Uh, it's not a big deal to me for this quilt in particular, because this will become oven mitt, so I'll be cutting it out. Um, but if this was, you know, a final quilt, like a large quilt that I was doing, I definitely wouldn't want that. So um, I don't recommend stitching down the edges first. When you're doing your quilting, whether you're doing straight line or free motion or ruler work or anything like that, once you have it all basted, it's best to start from the center and work your way out. Because what that will do is as you're quilting, any extra fullness in the top or even in the backing will get pushed to the edge. And then everything will kind of like smooth out as you go. If you start from one edge and work to the other, it might start to distort your blocks. And if you start from the outside in, you might end up with just a bunch of extra fabric from the fullness, and that just won't look very good in the center of your quilt. So whenever possible, start from the center and work your way out. Another added benefit for that is on larger quilts. When you're in the center, you're going to have the maximum amount of bulk that you will ever have in your sewing machine throat. Because as I go over each line, that'll become less and less. And then to do the other side, we'll flip it around, start in the center, and the same thing, it'll be the same amount of bulk. And as we move to the side, it'll become less and less. The very first quilt that I decided to machine quilt on my domestic machine, which wasn't this machine, it was um, a vintage machine that had a much smaller throat space, was a king size quilt. And let me tell you, having that much bulk in your throat, you know, your quilt all rolled up, trying to wrangle it, is is quite a workout so if you ever need an upper upper back shoulder workout try quilting a king size quilt <laughs> on your <laughs> i was gonna say chris you are ambitious <laughs> i was it, it turned out okay i think i wanted to start by doing straight lines but by the end i just gave up and it was wavy lines it was wavy <laughs> the edge of the quilt. it was one of those sure. like i'm just gonna finish it i don't care what it looks like it just needs to be done <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, that is it for straight line quilting. So we went over our stitch in the ditch foot and our walking foot and then some other things you can do with your walking foot. So now I am going to switch over to the ruler foot. So this is a ruler foot. It has a high profile here, as you can see. And that is so you can follow along with your, um, your quilting template and not have your template go over because then your needle's going to hit it. It's, it's not a good thing when that happens, trust me. Uh, so it gives you a nice profile to follow along your quilting template. It also has not just a notch, but it's got a large opening here. And that's to make it adjustable depending on how thick your quilt is. So let's take this one off and I will show you what I mean. So it goes in the same 
hole on the side here. I'll just loosely tighten that down. It's still movable, but you can see it'll move up and down still. We'll lower that so you can see, depending on how thick the piece is that you're quilting, you can adjust this. And what you want to do is take out the actual piece that you will be quilting. Mine is fairly thin. And you want to find, you know, your average bulky spots. So sometimes it'll be where four pieces come together. If you have more pieces than that, <clears throat> pardon me, um, you'll want to just find out where it's the bulkiest and rest the foot right there. You don't want to like really push it down. You want to just kind of rest it and maybe add a little bit of pressure and then tighten that down. So it still can move freely because you're going to be moving the fabric yourself for this. And let's tighten that down so it doesn't move. If you had a, a loftier batting, then this would be up higher. <clears throat> For using the ruler foot, we want to lower our feed dogs. So I've done that off to the side over here. <clears throat> and that just means that as I'm sewing, you'll see these are still moving, but they're not coming above the surface to grab the fabric. So they're still going to do their thing, but it's not going to affect your piece at all. And then because we've lowered the feed dogs, your stitch length doesn't matter because your machine is not going to be controlling anything underneath your fabric. So for this quilt, I've chosen this little four inch arc. You can see I already did some tests right here of how I'm going to quilt it. But there are, let's see where I put the rulers. I think they're on the other side of the room. There are tons of different um, templates that you can get. This was from Westerly Designs. And there's a whole bunch of different shapes and different radiuses of arcs. Let me grab them. I'm just going to do a little plug here, too, for these templates. We're actually having so steady. They're in the future, come on and do a whole segment on Westerly rulers and templates. So that'll be a pretty cool segment as well because they do have so many different options. I love what you're showing. <laughs> so this is the arc that I'll be using today. And what's cool is it has an inside and an outside. Um, that comes really in handy when you're doing ruler work on your long arm because sometimes you'll get to a spot where you can't, say I was like trying to go along here and I couldn't get this in place because the bar of my, my long arm was right there. Having that inside curve lets you go still from the front side and do that arc. They also have templates like this, where you pop this out, and that allows you to get it around your foot so that you can just do circles. And then you can move it and do another circle and you just follow along. I haven't gotten to play with these yet, but I am looking forward to it because they look like tons of fun. And then just lots of other uh, templates with arcs and straight lines that can come in handy if you're trying to you know, do some stitch in the ditch or straight line ruler work. So having a good variety of these can come in really handy. You can use one for your entire quilt. You can use multiple. Just have fun with it. Now for the free motion quilting we're going to do here with the ruler and with the free motion foot, it is recommended that you not use your machine's automatic thread cutter because it cuts the bobbin thread so short that you won't be able to pull it to the front. And I'm pretty sure that I used it when I was done with that last line. Yeah, let me get a little more bobbin tail here. And the reason you want more of a bobbin tail is so that you can pull it up to the surface so that it doesn't get caught when you're moving around, doing all kinds of you know, circles and curves and going back on yourself. Okay. So I'm going to start right here. So if you just take a single stitch, oops, got my thread's all messed up. There we go. If you take a single stitch and grab your top thread, it will pull your bobbin thread all the way through. 
and then you can grab that. So now I have both on the surface and I can hold them off to the side so they don't get stitched over and then become part of the quilting. I'm gonna take a couple anchoring stitches here just to hold those in place. And once you've anchored it, you can trim those threads shorter. So if your machine has the option to turn off your automatic thread cutter, I would do that so you don't accidentally engage it. Mine is on the foot pedal, so I just have to remember not to rock back towards myself. I'm going to take this pin out so I don't hit it. Chris, would you mind elaborating on the foot control function where you um, just said the thread trimmer is connected to your foot control? Sure. My foot's probably a little dirty, but let me pull it up here. <laughs> Uh, Brian, if you want to switch over to my other camera, you might be able to see it better there. All right, so this is the foot pedal. Let me unplug it so I don't accidentally run away with my machine. So when you're sewing normally, you're pressing your foot forward like this. That's to stitch. That's your normal stitching. On this machine, if you rock backwards on your heel, you can see there's a little bit of movement there. That actually engages the thread cutter. So then it, you probably heard it. it well, I don't want to do it, but it's a little like click sound that my machine makes. And that's it cutting both the top thread and the bobbin thread. And then you don't have to pull it away and use the thread cutter here or your snips or anything like that. So it's super handy, especially when you're piecing. But when you're quilting, not so much. Um, <laughs> Where you accidentally cut the thread. <laughs> oh, yes. And I've done it many times. Um, uh, yep. <laughs> They actually make a piece, I haven't gotten it yet, um, but it's a little plastic that slides onto this side of the foot that prevents it from going down. So I was I just to about to mention those. that. We do have it. I believe it's called the foot control stopper, if I'm not mistaken. Brian, would you mind throwing that in the comments for me? Yes, I'll throw it in the comments and Chris will make sure to get with you so we can get you on. Yeah, we'll get you on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Some machines, it's a matter of um, you know, somewhere in your computerized settings, turning it off. This is a non-computerized machine. I prefer mechanical machines. Um, so there's no, like, there's no button or settings or anything. So, all right, perfect. So this foot is a quarter inch from the edge of the foot to the needle. So you need to remember that when you're placing down your template. Right here, I want to end on that intersection. So I need to be a quarter of an inch away from that intersection so that as I'm following, that's where the needle will end up. If I had my template right on that corner, my stitching would end up a quarter inch away. Now doing both free motion and ruler work definitely takes practice. So I would recommend starting on something small um, these are going to get cut up and turned into oven mitts. So this is a great project. If it's a little funky in some spots, it's not going to affect the usefulness of my oven mitts. So something like this is a great project to start on. I just made this patchwork about the size of a fat quarter, and it's backed with a fat quarter. So it's like 18 by 20-ish. That's a great size to start with. And then you want to just have your sewing speed be steady, go a little faster than that. And then you just slowly move your fabric. Your machine is not controlling your stitch length here, you are. So a combination of the speed of your needle and the speed that you're moving the fabric will affect the length of your stitches. So just take some time and practice. And something like this, where it's just small little bursts of stitching, is very good practice as well. I don't have like a really long line that I need to keep steady and have my stitches be even. It's just, you know, a little two inches from there to there. So it's really good practice. And you just keep going down. And there are a couple ways to do this particular design. 
I'm just doing like little scallops along the edges. And what I'll do is when I'm done going up and down, I'll turn my whole piece and then take care of these ones. But you could, as you're going down, also jump across and back, go down, across and back, down, across and back. And then that'll take care of it all in one swoop as well. That just confuses my brain sometimes. So I like to do it this way when I'm able to just rotate my entire piece to go the other direction. If your machine has the option to change, like I know a lot of machines have a button to change whether your machine stops in the down position or the up position, you'll definitely want it to be in the down position. That way, when you're done with that line, you're not gonna accidentally move it off and then have to reposition it to start back in the same spot that you stopped. So this machine, that's its default, is always stopping in the down position, which is very handy. It's almost like they designed it for quilters. Got another pin there I'm gonna take out. All right, so I've gone all the way down this side and now I wanna go up the other side. So I can switch my template to the other side and go that way. Working back up can be a little more challenging because you can't really see where you're going. Like right there, I did not hit the corner, but that's okay. So you can do it that way, or you can use that inner arc on this particular template so that I'm remaining with my left hand holding the template. You'll just want to make sure that your template is still a quarter inch away from that intersection. There you go. Now these templates did come with this um, adhesive grippy stuff. It looks kind of like shelf liner. So you can add this to the back. And if you're doing ruler work on your domestic machine, these can be really, really useful because it's going to help you get a grip on that fabric. So now it's not gonna slide. Another thing you can add is the Grace True Grips, which I'm 99% sure that you can get from sewing parts online, um, and add a couple of those. They're clear silicone circles, and they add a lot of grip as well, but you can see through them a little better. Yeah, we can definitely help with those. The other thing, um, Chris, have you ever used the Odif spray? Miriam had shown that in the first segment. I have never not. Used it. I've heard of it, but I've never used it. Yeah, we love the True Grips as well as the little silicone. Now, I believe uh, So Steady sends that little grippy stuff with each template, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this, this is like a starter set that you sent me, and it came with three strips of this. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it comes with it. So you could definitely use that if you like, or you can use either that spray or the True Grips. And over time, these will need to be replaced anyway. Um, so they're not permanent. You can peel them off if you need to and then try out different things and whatever works best for you. I always say go with that. So as I was doing my tests the other day, I kept breaking my thread. So earlier in this segment, when I talked about changing your needle size, I found out that it's actually because I was still trying to quilt with my number 12 needle and switching to the 16, my thread has not broken since, knock on wood. <laughs> so if you're getting frustrated and your thread keeps breaking, first thing you should do is check your needle. Either your needle might have a slight bend in it or there's a burr or something's going on there, or you just have the wrong needle size. If you're going to be quilting with a heavier weight thread, you might want to go up even another needle size to um, 
every needle size, as you go up, the eye of the needle gets slightly larger. So if you have thick thread, you want to make sure it has plenty of room to easily glide through the eye of that needle. As you're using your templates, if you find that maybe you didn't have it positioned right, so you're coming up to that corner and you're not on track to hit it, it's okay to make slight adjustments as you're making your arc. No one should be looking at your quilt close enough to be able to tell that you're like a millimeter off on your stitching. All right, we got to the end, so I'm going to... Oh, I talked about my thread not breaking, and I just broke my thread. Figures. Well, we got to the end of that line. Thread this real quick. So that is the template there. Now we're going to switch over to our free motion foot. Uh, if you're shopping for a free motion foot, it's sometimes called a darning foot. That was its original intention, um, or a hopping foot. This one came with the Juki, and it installs similar to the walking foot. So this one has this bar right here that just sits on top of the needle bar and is spring-loaded. So it doesn't have the claw uh, like the walking foot because the needle bar makes that go up and down. This one, we just need the uh, needle bar to press it up because the spring will push it back down. So this one is pretty easy to install. Now for this foot, you're not going to want to use your templates. You can see this foot is really thin and it would be super easy for me to either get my, my template underneath it or slip on top of it. Either way, my needle's gonna hit it and that would not be a good thing. You're gonna break your needle, you'll probably break your template, things will go flying, you can mess up your uh, timing of your machine. So something to definitely be cautious of. And your eyeballs. <laughs> and your eyeballs, yes. If you don't wear glasses, your eyeballs are very at risk. So with the free motion foot, we can do this same design, just not with my foot down. No, it's not. Uh, not with the same like accuracy, but we can still get the same effect. So you can see that foot is hopping up and down there. So we've got it anchored in place, get those trimmed away. And then as you get more comfortable with your quilting, you um, just lots and lots of practice, you can even just kind of free motion those arcs. You know, you're gonna go out, I didn't go out quite as far there. But you can do that even without a template. It just takes a little more practice. Another design you can, oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. I was just gonna interject with a couple of questions here. Oh, sure. um, Susan is asking, um, so you can't use those templates with the free motion foot? No. They do have some free motion feet that are have a higher profile that you might be able to use them with. But I would be very cautious because this foot bounces up and down. And when it's in its up position, you could easily get, well, probably not now, but like you could slip that underneath it. And that would not be a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, and we can definitely help with ruler feet for your machine. So if you're not sure which one fits and you're really wanting to do ruler work, just give us a call and we can help you find something that's compatible. And then I've got another question here from Camille. She said, I'm confused why you stitched backwards versus pivoting. And good to know there's uh, special batting for oven mitts and pot holders. So she's just wondering if, yeah, why you, you stitched backwards. Sure, you totally could turn your whole project around. This is a small enough project that could have done that. But if you were dealing with like a king size quilt, 
that would be really cumbersome to move the entire thing through the throat. You could also, as you get to the bottom, end your stitching so you can just cut your stitches and then come back to the top and start again on the other side and work your way down. It's really just a personal preference. Some people prefer to quilt from side to side, like I could, you know, go side to side when quilting, or you can go front to back, you can go on the diagonal. It's really just finding what works best for you. And a lot of that has to do just with your upper body strength and movement, um, because, you know, people don't realize like quilting can be quite a workout. You're doing a lot of moving. You need to make sure you're in a comfortable sitting position and you're going to be, depending on the size of your quilt, moving quite a lot of bulk around and you are the one controlling it. So your hands are on here. You're moving your quilt. If there's a lot of weight off to the side here, you're dealing with that in your movement. So it really is just a personal preference. Any other questions? I think we're good for the moment. Okay. Um, so another thing you can do when you have your free motion hopping foot is how I really started quilting and that's stippling. So really you just find yourself a nice rhythm, a good speed, and you basically start doodling. So you can make little curves. There's no rhyme or reason to where they go. And you just kind of get in a zone. Brian's over here admiring your work. He loves a meandering stipple. <laughs> I, I do too. Um, the first several quilts I quilted, even when I got my long arm, were just a stipple. Because it gets the job done. It's kind of mindless. Um, mm -hmm. You can just, you know, go around and uh, um, the tips I've heard from like professional long arm quilters is just to try and imagine like a quarter or a dime, whatever size circle you want for your density and just try to think like, okay, keep that in mind. So as I'm going around, I want them, all my lines to be about this far apart. So this would be more along the dime um, scale. So like as you do That's your little curve, job. have it be like about a dime size apart, like anywhere in here, it's about a dime. You don't want it to be like some places really close together and others really far apart. Because when you're looking at it as an overall design, you're going to notice those spots. But if you keep it nice and consistent, you just get a really cool texture. And once you've washed this, well, probably not this one, because I don't think the insole bright will shrink like normal uh, cotton batting but you get a crinkle and just the texture that the overall stippling gives is just wonderful. I love it. Chris, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I just saw somebody in the comments that I have to say hi to. Trisha, do you know who's watching right now? I see it. And I was also Kate just about to Brennan. ask. I know. I was just ask, or gonna ask Chris, what thread are you using today? <laughs> so I am using, let me pull it down here. This is an Orophil variegated thread and this is the 40 weight. <laughs> yes, this is the 40 weight. That's awesome. Brian, go ahead and say hi. <laughs> I have to come on screen to say hi really quickly. <laughs> hi, Kate. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope we get to hang out one day. <laughs> so Chris is probably like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> You've met Kate Brennan. She's with um, Orophil, and she's been on the show with us before. And we just love Kate, and we love Orophil, and you're using Orophil. So we're like, we're going to say hi to everybody. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that is my demo for the day. I hope everyone got some good tips and tricks out of that. Let me switch back to my normal camera. There we go. Get this wire out of my face. Absolutely. Yeah, we had some wonderful tips. Now, um, I do want to just ask you a couple questions. So sure. this machine in front of me is going to be the TL2000QI. So it's considered like a step down from the TL2010Q. What do you um, consider your favorite aspect of the TL? Well, 
beautiful. I love the whole thing overall. Like it has been <laughs> an amazing machine. I love its speed for my piecing um, and mm -hmm. its accuracy. It makes beautiful stitches and it's just, it's simple. There's not, there's no computerized parts. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. there is like the thread cutter, but like there's no computer screen. There's not a thousand different stitches. So it's not so overwhelming. Like you have, you got your stitch length. There's your cutter, needle up and down and reverse. And that's really it. Like it's just super yeah. simple and straightforward. And that I really appreciate about it. Um, the speed control, I have found I'm using more than I thought I would. This is the first mm -hmm. machine I've ever had that had a speed control. And I find that to be really helpful because I'm usually just like floor it. And sometimes that's not the best thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty funny, too, because we had a previous guest. It was um, Luann, and she was with Juki. And actually, I have this little quilter's ring. She paired it with her TL2010Q, and she had given the tip of using the speed control to really regulate because you're moving your fabric. Have you used one of these before? I have not. I've seen them, but I've never used one. It's pretty cool. So when you were doing that free motion sewing, you can hold on to these knobs and it helps you move your fabric around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she was doing that and then set her speed control and she was just getting beautiful results. And I'm like, I need to really try that, that application. But I too am using my speed control more often. So it's a, a great one. And I don't know if I can have a machine without a thread cutter anymore. I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, that wasn't on my must have list when I was shopping for a new machine, but it probably would be now. Yeah. Like, you don't realize really you need it until <laughs> you don't have it. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, I for also really like running... that it comes with the extended bed. Oh yeah. Like that, that has really been a game changer for this. Mm -hmm. Having that. Awesome. Well, for those that are just joining us, Chris, do you want to let everybody know where they can find you? Sure. So I'm online. I'm on pretty much all the platforms. So TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, and everything is under at Rose City Originals. And you can see all of my original quilt patterns. I post pretty much every day, either what project I'm working on, tips and tricks. Um, I try to answer questions as people ask them in my videos, just so I can be kind of a, a go-to um, resource for it. I really love yeah. quilting. So I like Sharon. You're a great resource. Well, and actually Sharon here is asking, is this considered a quilting machine? Yeah. So I can answer that if you want. Sure. So technically it is considered a quilting machine, but I do have to say that it has so many different applications. The reason that I ended up buying this machine was because, or the one up above on this one is because of bag making. So you can be a quilter. You could be bag making. You can do it with garment sewing. I've used it in that application as well. Home I... decor. So yeah, his wonderful shirts. <laughs> yeah, yep. so many great applications. So technically saying quilting machine, but it's a beautiful straight stitch machine for many, many awesome options. So yes. well, do you want to stick around while we do a giveaway for that arrow organizing cube? Sure. Awesome. Yes. All right. Brian, do you want to go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool? Oh, you're already ahead of me. <laughs> I did, I did a, a riddle in the comments this time, oh. and I want to know if people liked it. If people liked it, I'll do it again. <laughs> Donna, congratulations. Donna, congratulations. That's awesome. I'll show you how to claim your prize here in just a moment, but we're just going to say goodbye to Chris, and we will see you next time. We're super excited. I think you're going to do some foundation paper piecing in July, right? That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. All right. Well, we'll see you in July. <laughs> All right. Thank you. See you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we say bye, bye to Chris for now, and he'll be back to show us some foundation paper piecing in July. Um, just a quick mention on that, we are going to be doing another So Creative Live July 10th through the 14th. It'll be our first five-day event, so that's going to be a whole lot of fun. But for today, let's talk about claiming our prize because we want to get her her prize, right? So to go ahead and claim your prize, just go to our link tree, and I'm going to pop that up here really quick. There we go. It is Linktree forward slash sewing parts online. Click claim your prize and fill out that form. And then once you claim your prize, it takes about one to two weeks to get that particular prize. Also, um, you can go to our event page, which is sewing parts online forward slash so creative life. Now, Brian, what were you saying about this riddle? I didn't even see a riddle coming <laughs> through. <laughs> I want to know. I want to play. <laughs> Not on. Okay. Uh, so, 
the last surprise word i did a riddle uh to figure out what the word was before i posted it on the screen and if people liked it i'll do it again my riddle i think my little my riddle was a little off but the next one that i wrote i think it's a pretty good one so i think i'm gonna do it (laughs) brian's really witty anyway so now i want to know what the what the riddle was can i hear what the first one was yes I can spin and twist, yet I'm not a toy. In sewing realms, I bring thread to employ. A humble part unseen, but holding tight. Without me, stitches would never take flight. What am I that plays a vital role within? A tiny hero known as the... Bobbin! Did I get it? That's what everybody thought. Oh, so that's why it? mine... It's Spoolpin. Oh! <laughs> I love it. That's fun. Okay. My Comment, next one's everybody. on point, though. I'm excited for it. Okay, that's actually really, really fun. I, this was a surprise to me. So super awesome. I want to hear in the comments or I want to see in the comments if everybody's enjoying that. <laughs> Speaking of comments, I do have a couple questions here that I want to touch on. The first one is, will we have an opportunity to review this or any of the sessions later? Absolutely. We are going to be sharing all of the replays on our YouTube. So you can just go to Sewing Parts Online there and um, you can watch any of these segments. We've also been breaking them down to individual segments. So you might see individual ones as well, but you can definitely watch the full replays. Let me see. We got another question. Oh, actually, this was a statement that I just enjoyed. So Angela, thank you. She's just saying she's so glad that um, So Creative Live is on today. It's a dreary, stormy day in Louisiana, and she's been enjoying this segment so far. So thank you all. We are appreciating you joining us. Let's take a little peek here at that beautiful Juki since we have some special event pricing. So the machine that Chris was using in his segment, it's the Juki TL2010Q. It is a straight stitch machine. It does it very, very well. (laughs) It has an MSRP of $1,699. We have our sale price of $9.99, but just a reminder, this is not special event pricing. You can get a better price. You just have to call our customer service and they can help you out. As you notice from the picture, you can see that it has the thread cutter over on the right. You've got your speed control. It's that little blue notch where it has the hair and the tortoise. So you're able to control your speed. As he had mentioned, you know, it's pretty simplistic. It's a mechanical machine, but those extra features are really nice to have when you have that speed control and thread cutter. So I hope you all enjoyed that segment. If you have any questions about the machines, you can always give our customer service a call and we can go into that. So if you are just joining, we're gonna talk about the giveaways again. At the beginning of every segment, we have been announcing what the next giveaway is going to be. So for our next segment, I want to show you what we're gonna be giving away. It is this beautiful 100 pack of Floriani thread. That's a $640 value. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's a 50 weight polyester thread. It has a high tensile strength and a beautiful sheen. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's going to pair well with our next segment, which is going to be Anne Hine. And she's going to be showing a combination embroidery and um, sewing machine. But uh, what time do we have right now? Are we... Just about ready to bring Anne up. We still have some time. So you wanted me to show how to find the presser feet. And then we have a little filler video to play before we bring in. Awesome. Well, the one thing I wanted to talk about was how to find presser feet to fit your machine. So in Chris's segment, he had shown you the walking foot and an edge stitch foot and a ruler foot and a free motion foot. And you might be going, oh, is that only going to fit the TL machine? new. We have a lot of feet that are going to fit your machine. So there's a couple of different ways how you can find ones that are compatible with your machine. You can go directly to our homepage and you can search by brand. So if we can go ahead and search for that Juki and then you just enter in your model number. So we're going to talk about that TL 2010Q because that is the one we were showing. And then you can search either all parts or you can narrow it down to the presser feet. So let's do it that way. And then it's going to bring up all of these awesome feet. So this is a straight stitch machine. And one might think that, oh, all I can use is a straight stitch foot. Technically, it only has the one opening, right? But look at all the different options that you have to explore your creativity. You've got so many different feet that you can use. 
I see a zipper foot in there, Teflon, oh, a Teflon foot. If you work with nylon or excuse me, vinyl or faux leather, that is a must. I just made a bag over the weekend and I was having issues using my faux leather. I swapped it out for a leather needle and a Teflon foot and it worked perfectly. So just a couple tips there. And actually I was doing that on the TL 2010Q. I'm gonna pop up my little purse cause it's cute. <laughs> there it is, ain't it cute? <laughs> it was pretty fun. I love Sally Tomato. So that's a, it's called Holly by Sally Tomato. So that is one way to find presser feet. Another way that you can find parts for your machine, if you go up to machine part, you can then select your brand. So let's go to Juki that way. And then you can enter your model number here and we'll do TL2010Q. And then you have your page of all the parts that fit that Juki. And then over on the left-hand side, you can select the little button to narrow it down accordingly. And the needles, that is a really, really great place to narrow down some needle options. If you were on earlier, I was mentioning like a needle system being a 15X1 for a lot of the domestic machines, but maybe you're sewing with leather. Like I said, swapping out for a leather needle, or maybe you are sewing knits and need a ballpoint needle. So that's a great option. So we just wanted to show you that one. So as Brian said, we have a little filler video before Ann comes on. We are going to show you a little tip here on, are we showing thrifting? Thrifting. Thrifting some fabric. So let's go ahead and play that one. I'm Chelsea with She Sews Seams. As some of you may know who follow my accounts on TikTok and Instagram, I am a huge supporter of budget-friendly sewing. And one of my favorite places to get budget-friendly fabric is at the thrift shop. When I go thrift shopping, there are lots of different sections to look through and each one of them contains its own little treasure. My favorite, favorite section of the thrift shop is the sheet section. You would be amazed at the amount of fabric that you can get out of just one flat sheet. Today, I wanna to show you all of the different measurements that go with the standard sizes of twin, queen, and king-sized flat sheets so that when you go thrift shopping and you find a treasure in that sheet section, you'll know exactly how much yardage you'll get out of that sheet so you know what kind of project you can make with it. I'm gonna start with the twin size flat sheet. This is a basic size of a twin flat sheet. You've got 96 inches this this way and 66 inches across. If there is some kind of cute and fun trim on that sheet, this is the yardage that you will get of just the trim alone. So 1.83 yards on a twin size flat sheet. Most standard cotton fabrics that you'll find in the quilting cotton section of the fabric store are sold in 44 to 45 inch width. So that's what I accounted for when I made this chart. So let's say you're folding your sheet over to create 45 total inches folded, and then you'll have a little tail of 21 inches. The reason I did this is I wanted it to be based on a typical pattern measurement that you would see on the back of a pattern. You will get 45 total inches across this way and 2.6 yards total across the length. So the total yardage for a twin flat sheet will be 2.6 total yards plus this extra 2.6 yards of 21 inches of fabric. You can do a lot with this. I see little girl dresses coming out of this, pillows, all kinds of fun projects. Now let's look at the queen size sheet. A queen size flat sheet is going to be 102 inches long and 96 inches across. You'll get 2.6 yards of any sort of fun and beautiful trim that you find in that thrift store. And then on this one, we're actually gonna fold the right and left sides in towards the middle. And this will create a 48 inch width of fabric, which is also still within your standard measurements of what you'll typically see on a pattern for 44 to 45 inch fabric. That said, you'll get two sections of that that are 2.83 yards long, which gives you 5.66 total yards of fabric to work on a project. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Lastly, if you find a king size flat sheet, you have won the day because you are getting, when folded in on itself, 51 inches width of fabric for both sections and 6.2 total yards of workable fabric, y'all. And when you think about it, if you go to a thrift store, you're typically paying maybe five or six dollars for a sheet, even better if it's half price day. So that's a lot of fabric for a very little amount of money. These finds at the thrift store are fantastic if you are wanting to test out a new pattern, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on the fabric, definitely go with a flat sheet from the thrift shop. You will be amazed at the creations that will come out of it. Not to mention all of the fun trims that you can find as well.
Chelsea always has such great tips. So we appreciate her sharing those. She's taking a little bit of a break from social media, but I believe she's back. So hopefully we'll be seeing some more videos from her. If you don't follow her yet, I would highly recommend if you go over to TikTok and look up She So Seems and give her a follow because it is wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick recap here. I wanted to show for those that have just joined us, I just want to back up to what we've already seen so far this morning. We've got the Elna, the Excellence 780 Plus computerized sewing machine that has an MSRP of $5,499 and it has a sale price of $4,599. But that is not the special event price. You can give us a call and we are able to beat that. So just a reminder, because this is a one day event, you guys, that uh, special event pricing will be ending at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And um, yeah, so just give us a call and we can help you out. That particular machine, just a few items that really stuck out to me. I love that large throat space, which is 11 inches. It has that knee lift. It also has the option for the variable zigzag with the knee lift. That was so cool. Miriam did an awesome job showing that. It has 91 needle positions, so you can get just those fine adjustments as needed. And also my absolute favorite, I love the three needle plates. So you've got your zigzag plate, straight stitch plate, and your professional plate. Although we do have to also mention that stitch composer. I mean, how cute was that stitch with the KitchenAid mixer. I love that. And actually, didn't Miriam say Anne was the one that designed that? I believe I she think did. she did. Oh, that's so fun. So um, Anne, I believe she's in the background right now. If you were the one that designed that, props to you. And I hope that you let me know that when we get on because that's so cute. <laughs> All right. And then we had Bernie on and he was the master technician. We were talking about his book. How cool was that? His book is such a great resource and his talking about or him talking about knot control where you know we want the knot to be in the center if you need to lower the knot lower the tension if you need to raise the knot raise the tension if you didn't get to uh see that particular segment i would highly recommend watching that back on our youtube because he gave so much information so all right well i am really excited to invite ann up and see if she is the one that in fact did the KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> Hello, Ann. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing great. I am indeed the one who did the, um, uh, the KitchenAid mixer. I love doing Stitch Composer and oh. creating stitches for our machine. So it's really a little love of mine. So that is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I love how that worked out, but this is your first time being here. So if you don't mind, if you want to just tell everybody who you are. <laughs> oh, well, I'm Ann Hine. I'm actually Janome's embroidery software specialist. So besides doing all the other things educators do, like demo machines and all, all those things, I work with their artistic digitizer software and the other software we have, like Stitch Composer and AccuStitch and the apps and all of that. That's sort of my... Uh, little thing that I do. And I have videos I post on uh, Thursdays. I do an, a busy video on the Janome Sewing Machines page for Ooh. our artistic digitizer. And I um, sort of like the mistress of the page for Janome Artistic Digitizer, our Facebook group page, where we have all our questions answered on artistic digitizer. And um, I try to inspire people with things. And most of the time they post things that just inspire me. So I love that page. So if you can check it out, you will see me over there on the Janome Artistic Digitizer page, or you can find Miriam and I doing videos on the uh, Janome Sewing Machines page or the Continental Club page. So we're pretty busy video wise, but I think it's really fun. That's awesome. We will definitely be checking those out. So we appreciate you joining us today. We're going to be talking about a little bit more compact machine, which is going to be that memory craft 9850. But I'm excited to see all the features that it has. So if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be in the background or I might pop on with some questions from our viewers if you're OK with that. Oh, that sounds perfect. That'd be great because I can't actually see the questions where I'm standing. So if you just feed them to me, I'll be happy to answer them. 
All right, sounds like a plan. Then I'll let you take it away. All right, so this is our 9850. It is a compact machine. I love to call this machine a big machine in a small package. It has top of the line features, but it's in a small package. It's very compact. You can carry it away on a retreat. You can take it on a trip. Um, you can move it in your sewing room very easily. And Janome has included a lot of my favorite things under the flip lid. We can find all those stitches up here. And you'll all chuckle at this. You can actually import a stitch that you make in Stitch Composer in this machine as well. So I've already played with that part of it. But when you look at the front of the machine, I'm gonna to touch here to get our screen to come on board. We have a, a nice space under here, about 10 inches and almost five inches tall this way. Um, if you're looking at the very front, we have all our buttons right here. We have our start stop button, our reverse, the lock stitch, which is handy when you need a little uh, extra lock at the beginning or end of a seam. We have our needle up, needle down, and everyone's favorite button right here, the scissor button. So when you're done sewing, you just touch there and clip your thread top and bob it, and you can take your fabric out and restart again. This is our speed slider right here. And this works in conjunction with your foot control or just your stop, start stop button. So if you're maybe a lead foot and you're a little speed demon, you can put it here in the middle and your uh, foot control will only go that medium speed. But if you feel the need for speed, you can always move it way over here and you'll have full speed ahead. We're going to get to the uh, screen over here in just a moment. I want to show you a few things on this side of the machine. Um, we have onboard storage here, so I'm going to pop this open. And I've already preloaded it with some of the accessories. Janome packs our machines with lots of things. Um, on this one, we do have our, this is our um, zipper foot, a button sewing on foot. We have um, our um, quarter inch foot, our over edge foot. We have a decorative stitch foot, uh, rolled hem, and this is our blind hem foot. And then inside here, I'm gonna set this over here. Inside, we have some more accessories, of course. We have a darning foot, but who darns because most of the time we're doing free motion quilting. So we have that one. And then there's a quilting bar. So if you're doing uh, lines of stitching, you would put your quilting bar on. And then down in here, of course, some thread caps. We have our buttonhole foot. And this is great because we have the pull down buttonhole. Um, when you open this up, you would, it pulls down in there so you can get um, you put your button in the back side, and then you'll get the same size button hole for all the buttons that you're doing for your garment, or maybe you're doing them on a bag or something like that. So it just pulls up to the back, you put your button in here, and it'll make uh, memorized buttons for you. I love this, this feature. I do a lot of craft sewing um, and clothing sewing, so it's handy to have that. There's an extra um, spool holder in here as well. It just tucks right away. So let me just stick this back in here. I'm gonna close it up. So this part is an extension table. It does come off, excuse my reach. So we can pull it off to the side. I've loaded a few more accessories under here, our scissors and our embroidery bobbin case. And of course, a little brush, a seam ripper and our cleaner is in there as well. I do have two pieces up on top um, and I'm gonna show those later. It's our, our screwdriver and our embroidery foot. But now that I have it off, you can see we have a nice free arm here. So if you're doing bags or sleeves or pant legs, you can slide them right up here and um, sew them on, on here with the free arm. Now, one thing this, you know, I mentioned this is a compact machine. This is a great machine to take to a retreat and to travel with, but it's also a great second machine. If you have a really large machine, um, you could be uh, embroidering on your other machine and you could do some sewing over here. If you have a flatbed machine, you have your free arm over here as well. So it's a great combination of, you know, you can work with in your sewing room. I've had this in my sewing room for probably the last two months and I almost don't wanna give it up now because it's, it's like my little fun thing to have over there. I have the great big one, but I do love this little one. It does have your pop-off stitch plate here. There's no screws there. You just push down here on this lever and your plate will pop off. Now, do you know me? See how it doesn't want to come all the way up? Janome gives this machine, I'm going to reach around, the extra high lift so I can get thicker things under there. 
and I can easily put my plate on and off just by holding it up in the back. To put it back on, I just push it down and it's back on. So you can easily change plates. There's optional plate for this. The, the straight stitch plate is an optional plate. So you have that as well. I'm gonna put our uh, extension table back on because it gives you lots of space under here uh, when you're sewing. Now, I did mention when we're down here, let's go down here and look a little bit. This is for your, when you're, this is your threader. And then behind that, back in here is the buttonhole one. So you do have a nice threader on here as well because it's very hard, you know, some of us wear glasses and it's much nicer to have your uh, needle threader for that part of it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the screen. I'm gonna step aside here and have my cameraman get the screen uh, right in here so you can see. Now, you might've seen me uh, remove a message when you open up your uh, stitch plate or maybe you lock your machine, you will get some messages on here. So Junomi makes that for safety and I, I like that. It's just a quick reminder. So when you're looking at our screen on the very right hand side, we have our home button and that will bring you back to your home position, which is right here. Most of our machines, I have to say, not most, I'm, let me say all of our machines, start out right on your utility page with straight stitch. So anytime you turn your machine on, you will find you're in right here on your straight stitch right here with your straight stitches, and then you can move into your decoratives as we go along. Below that is the little tab to move you from sewing to embroidery. This is a combination machine, so I will show you the embroidery side also. Down here is your file. If you wanted to uh, take something out of a USB port, you will use your, your folder, and I'll show you that too. I have a USB in today. This part right here, this is the set mode. I'm just gonna open this up just a little bit. It's in here that you can set things for how you like to sew. And this is one of my favorite things with Janome. I can get this machine set the way I like to sew with the features that I like. And there's common ones between the sewing and embroidery. There's things that are just for sewing, like how much bobbin thread I like to have left. And there's things for the embroidery side as well. And you can have a different amount of embroidery thread left on your uh, embroidery side. The great thing too, this machine comes with a feature called resume. So if you turn your machine off and then you come back to it and turn it on, if you had a stitch that you were using here, maybe you're using um, one of the decorative stitches and you uh, made a change to it. When you turn your machine back on, it'll ask you if you wanna resume that stitch. The same thing over on the embroidery side. If you bring up a design and you turn your machine off and you come back to it and you're like, oh, what was that design? the machine will resume that design for you <clears throat> and you can accept it. Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm having a little frog here. And we do have our, our lock on here. So this will lock out the buttons here. So when you're changing a foot, when you're popping your plate off, you can uh, put your lock on it. will keep your machine from running should you bump one of this, the buttons there. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So going across the top here, this row right above the stitches, I don't know if we can get in, are we in close? Very good. So we have the, this is where our utility stitches are. This is our decorative. We have a um, alphabet and we have sewing applications. So under your decorative tab, all of these groupings correspond to the same ones that are under the lid. So if you find a stitch up here, maybe under quilt, you can go into the quilt section, and then you can page through down here to find the stitch that you want. Let's go back in there. There's two pages of these and I'm gonna page over and you can see I've put a created stitch in there already. So <clears throat> you could pull up a created stitch if you wanted to. Let's close that. Now going across, here's your alphabet. These are on the sewing side. So we have the two block and script that are seven millimeter, and then we have a block nine millimeter. This is a nine millimeter machine, and that means that space that's under your needle there from left to right gives you 91 needle positions. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have one of our other top of the line machines, those snap on feet will fit this machine as well. So it's a nice uh, combo to add to your machines. Many of us have more than one machine. For some reason, we just have to have more than one to get all of our things done. And then the last one over here, this is our t-shirt. And 
I call this, this is sewing applications. We affectionately call it the t-shirt, but under here you'll find what I call the, like the sewing helper. So if you wanted to do over edge stitch today, you could touch right here. It'll tell you what foot to use. It'll give you some options for um, different fabrics and you could just, maybe I'm doing a stretch knit today. I would select here, it presets my tension, my stitch for me, though Janome has left me in control. If I need to change right up here, I can come up here and make any changes to that stitch. Now, while we're here, if you notice right down here, it says FS. This is favorite stitch. So what happens with favorite stitch, this is on almost every stitch in the machine. If I make changes up here and I wanna use this stitch over and over, I can save it as a favorite stitch. So I'm just gonna move this up a little bit and I'll go to favorite stitch. I'm gonna put it in a folder and you'll see it highlight there. So every time I come back to this stitch, we'll go away to somewhere else, maybe over here. When I come back to this stitch and I open this up, my stitch numbers will be right there. So uh, favorite stitch, one of these things Janome has added um, to our top of the line machines. And it's very, very handy. I don't have to have little sticky notes all around my machine now. I can make my changes right here. It'll save it. Anytime I want to go back, I can go in and, and that, it, you saw the little trash can there. I can trash my stitch if I want to change it. So I always have those options. So this is our sewing applications. So let me go back one more so we can see the ones we have, seaming, blind hem, zipper, we have our over edge, of course, roll hem, gathering, and another page here for basting, tacking, our patchwork. Under here, this patchwork is for memorized piecing. And if you're a quilter, this is really handy if you're sewing maybe two, a lot of two and a half inch blocks or three inch blocks. You can set the length of your seam. Not the, not your, you can set your stitch length too, but your seam length. So you can set up your machine, sew the first one, memorize it and then unplug your foot control and just use your start stop button. Raise your foot up, put your next piece down, put the foot down, hit the start button. It will sew down and stop automatically for you at the end of the seam. So you can really do some fast piecing with that. Under quilting, you have your different options for quilting from free quilting. Again, it shows you right here. It tells me right here what to do. Lower my feed dog because I'm gonna do free motion quilting, you will put your feed dogs down. And on our right-hand side of the machine, we do have a tab here. We pull forward to lower our feed dogs. When we're done, we push it back. And when we take our first step stitch, the feed dogs will come back up. Sometimes people get worried, they put them down and they won't come back up, but they do. So Genome lets you know, this is a great thing about it. They let you know along the way how to do things, where things are and what you need to use use that stitch. So that's very handy on there. So let's go back and we'll close that one out. If I touch my home, I got an X out here. I can touch home. Takes me right back to my utility stitches, my straight stitch. So once I'm done over there, I can come right back here. I can page through to see all the stitches in that grouping. And then it's going to move to the buttonhole. We have our applique. And as we page through, it'll go through the different options that are up under the lid of the machine, but you can also find them. You see this is highlighted. You'll find those groupings right under here. All right, so let's go in and I can show you a little bit about embroidery. One of the things when you go to embroidery, you're going to put in your P foot, this foot here, and you'll unscrew. I'm gonna take this foot off. So I can show you that. You just unscrew this one. This is your standard A foot. And then you can install your P foot. Let me get it in there. There we go, put that on. And I always do a tiny little bit with my screwdriver. I don't wanna over tighten, but I wanna make sure it's on there. And then when I'm gonna to go to embroidery, I'm gonna come over here on this side and I'm gonna choose the two machines here. One is actually a sewing machine and one is the embroidery side. And when I do that, it tells me my carriage arm is not open and do I still wanna stitch um, to embroidery mode? And I can 
yes, I can switch over now if I wanted to, and I could look at designs and plan out my stitching, but I'm gonna, if I wanted to open the arm, I'm just gonna X out here on the right-hand side. We have a little tab and I'm gonna push it down and you'll see the embroidery arm move in the back here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna open it up. And we, when I go here now, I'm gonna touch okay. And it opens up, you can see the arm moving into place. And it opens up and gives me my options of looking at designs in the machine going into monogramming. So we have lettering, monogramming, and some decorative stitches in here, or if I wanted to go to the edit screen. Now we're gonna start in the edit screen today. So I'm gonna touch there first. And once we get in there, we can check that we are using the right hoop. And you can see that the machine comes with the five and a half by five and a half hoop. I'm going to lay that on here now. There is an optional larger hoop that you can use, but we're going to use the five and a half by five and a half. And so now that I'm on the edit screen, I'm going to go find a design. And the first one, I'm going to go back to my home. I'm going to touch my designs and I can sort through my designs by um, type of design here and page through, or I can look by hoop size. So I can come down here and I can decide which hoop size I want. So I'm going to stay right here because I want to show you a few things in the edit screen. We're going to pick this bird right here and I can move it with my fingers right down here or use the tools down here, the arrows. And I want to copy that one. So right here is our copy paste. And when you touch it, it just beeps, but it puts it right on top of itself. So you have to be careful you don't push it too many times because you don't want to have six birds on top of themselves. And I'm going to page over to show you some more tools because I want to mirror image this. This is our little hamburger mirror image tab. And I want to mirror image it this direction. Let me say, did I do it in the right direction? Let's say, okay. And we'll slide it over. There we go. So I have my two birds mirror imaged. And I'll go back to my designs again. And I'm going to pick up one more design and I'm just gonna move that to the top. So I can move it around anywhere I want, just stick it right up there. Let's add lettering really quick so I can show you the monogram function. So under monogramming, we do have three fonts, then we have two preset monograms. And if you come over to this page, we have what's called border and normal sew. These are stitches that you sometimes see on the sewing side of your machine. So you can use them over on the embroidery side of your machine. So let me page back because we're gonna use the Gothic. I'm just gonna select that. And I'm gonna leave it in the position it is. I'm gonna choose medium sized letters and I'm gonna start with a capital. And the word I know I can spell is Janome. So I'm gonna do that first, lowercase. There we go, get that all in there. Once I have it, I touch OK, and it'll be right there on my edit screen for me to use. And I can move it around, but I can also use lettering art. And when you look through our tools, this tool didn't highlight till I had lettering. So now I can touch it and I can curve my letters this way. I can move them apart a little bit this way. And if I like that, I can touch OK. It saves all my settings. And now I can save this if I want, or I can take it right to the ready to sew screen and stitch it out. But one thing, these two designs are the same. So I can do what's called color sort or color grouping. I can touch here. It's going to group those colors together. I'm just gonna page over. So it will stitch all the red in this one and all the red in that one before moving on. So I'm gonna to touch okay. And now we are in our ready to sew screen. It says ready to sew right at the top, tells me what hoop to use. It Right here, it's a little extra warning to say, this is the hoop you should be using, which I have set out for us. And then over here, we have a few more tools. And the one I love from this side is the flower. When you see all the petals, you see your whole design. And when you touch the the, the flower, you'll see just one part of the design at a time. So right now it's only gonna sew these red parts, 
I'm going to page through the color so we can see it change. So now it's going to stitch this portion and you can see it's stitching on both sides because I use the color sort. That's going to do that section and so forth till we get all the way to the end. And it tells me right up here I have 12 colors and from the beginning it told me how long it would stitch and I'm stitching at 800 stitches per minute. So it's pretty fast. And there we go with the Janome and we're back to the beginning. So this is a really handy tool going from the full flower to the, to the petal. This is a one to move your hoops forward if you need to make an adjustment. And there's some other tools in here. We don't need to go over all of them today. I can easily go back to my edit screen if I wanted to go back. And if I needed to save this design, I could just touch right there. I could add a name and I'm just going to call it AB and OK. And we'll say over here, there you can see AB is right there and we're good to go. All right, let's go back to the ready to sew screen because I have a USB stick in the side here and I'm going to show you how to open your USB stick and pull a design off of there. Now with Janome, everyone talks about formatting your USB. To format your USB, you just want to have your machine off, put your USB in the side, turn your machine on, wait a minute, turn your machine off, take your USB stick out and take it to your computer. When you take it to your computer, you'll notice it has two folders on it, uh, an EMB folder for embroidery and an ORD folder for ordinary sewing. That's for saving a stitch, maybe like um, a created stitch or maybe you did a combination stitch. Those would be saved under there. So you could save them onto your USB stick as well. So once you open your USB stick in the embroidery side, You'll see, I can look at anything I've saved in the machine. So I have something saved there, or I can go over to my USB stick. And I have two folders over here today. I have my EMBF folder, and I have an August class folder over here. So Janome opens that EMB folder I talked about in the beginning, and inside it is your EMBF folder. On your computer, you would copy paste open your EMBF folder and place your design in there. So here are the designs that I've placed into my EMBF folder. I'm going to back up one. Here I've added a whole folder so I can select this and then I can see in that fold, oops, let's go back, in that folder, in that folder I have one design. So you have an option on your USB stick under your EMB folder, and it really should say EMB up here, but here's your EMBF. Of course, you can put designs right in there and you could also load a folder and bring in designs with a folder. So you could have your designs sorted here. Genome will always show you folders on the first page and then you'll need to page over to see any designs. And there's no designs left and right, so it's beeping at me. I don't think I have anything here. Usually it says at the top if you have more than one page. We'll go back. I don't think I have, no, I don't have two pages, but if you have more pages, they are sorted by hoop size. So here you would have your five and a half by five and a half designs. And if you made any of the larger designs, your hoop that is uh, 6.7 by 7.9, the larger hoop, which is optional, those would show on a separate page. All right. I think I've covered just about everything. I want to show how to we're going to X out of here and how to attach your hoop to the machine. Your hoops all come with a positioning grid. So you could mark a crosshair on your fabric. You would loosen your hoop up, take your fabric and your stabilizer and set it inside here. And you would, could lay this on top of your fabric, match your crosshair to the crosshair here by sliding your fabric back and forth. Once you have it in place, you remove this, make sure your hoop is finger tight, like that, there we go. And you're gonna slide, your, slide it under your foot and back here, I don't know if we can see underneath there, back here is our connector right here. You can take this piece on top, put it on, and now our hoop is connected. You would do all your stitching, 
it's going to say completed on the ready to sew screen. At that point, you can undo this and take it off, take your embroidery out of there, and you have a nice embroidered piece. I'm done embroidering, so I'm gonna go back to uh, regular sewing. So I'll touch my two machines. It's going to ask that I'm switching to ordinary sewing. Do I wanna save that design? A little extra note for us for that. And it says, please remove hoop. You do wanna remove your hoop when your arm is moving, when it's not embroidering and it's gonna move back to the home position or to a set position. Always put your hoop on after it stops moving. I'm gonna say, okay. My arm is gonna go back into place in the back and then I can push my little tab and it'll close up just like that. I would go ahead and change my foot and put back on my ankle with my A foot and I'd be all ready to go back to regular sewing. Now let's say I'm done for the day or I'm gonna take my machine somewhere. My embroidery unit comes off the back. I'm gonna turn the machine off to show you that. You just turn your machine off. On the far side over here is a little button and you're going to push that. Hang on, I'm on a quilt, so sometimes it doesn't want to move. There, there it goes. So you slide it and your embroidery unit comes off. I'll bring it up here so we can see what it looks like. So this is your embroidery unit. Now your machine weighs just under 23 pounds. So that's why I say it's a great compact machine for travel. When I'm ready to put it back on, there's two uh, little dots here, I align those make sure it's there and I just slide it back over my embroidery units on I'm ready to go and I would close and may I interrupt for just a quick second sure a random question about the embroidery arm is the arm being behind the machine like that exclusive to Janome I believe so um we started out with the um with our 11 oh let's see the 9000 and it's called the linear I'm trying to think of the whole terminology because now we've moved into our, our bigger machine, which uses a different system. But this was um, what Janome had. We were really the first ones to have that arm that opens to the back like this, giving you all that space over here so it's not in the way of your embroidery. And we had this system up until we brought out our CM17 and our super large hoop. So that made a difference. They moved the uh, embroidery arm to a different position. But I, I love this because this our embroidery arm has two uses. Um, when it's open like this, it's for embroidery. There is an optional accessory a seam guide that you can put on right here. And it attaches into here and you can set it on your, um, I think JP can find it. it's in the styrofoam box there. It's an optional accessory, but I just wanna point it out because that one there, yeah. Do you see it there? It's right in the first part of it, JP right under your hand. Nope. Well, he's grabbing he that and we do have a couple of other questions regarding sure. the hoop. Um, Di or Diana is asking, what size is the other hoop? And did I hear correctly that it's not included? Right, this is the, the five, five and a half by five and a half is included um, with, with the machine. And the optional hoop is 6.7 wide by 7.9. And I think we, JP is going to hand it to me so we can show that this would be an optional optional hoop. And I don't know, I don't know if we can, see, let's see if you can see that. Um, so you have a little bit, you have much more space here on this one. And I don't know on, on your end of it, what you'll, what you offer for uh, additional hoops, but that would be the additional hoop. And even starting out, if you're just starting out with embroidery, this is a good way to go with that five and a half by five and a half. It's very common to use that hoop. What I was talking about, oh, this is the other one. So this, it looks, our, our um, seam guide looks similar to this, except it has the connector from the hoop and you would connect it right back here and you could slide it in and use it for your seam, um, for seam. And it's an optional piece. It's called the seam guide. So that's what that is. I didn't have one out specifically because it doesn't come with the machine. I was trying to show all the things that really come with it. But I like to point out that optional accessory because it's very handy if you're even if you're quilt piecing, long strips, or um, you know doing any dress dress wear, or even when you're doing top stitching, it can be very handy for that. 
All right, I think I covered everything. Um, I'm trying to think. Are there any questions that I might have missed? We do have a couple here. I've got one saying, can this machine scan embroidery, embroider by quadrant and everything lined up? It doesn't, it doesn't have scan. What you would do if you were going to, multi, well, if you're talking about multi-hooping, if you had a large design, because we have, you know, a five by five or this other hoop, what you would do is it, you could use software and you could print yourself a template. And sometimes, soft, I know in the artistic digitizer software, which is multi-formatted, you can uh, multi-hoop, which would break your design apart into other hoops. And then you would print out your template and using uh, the, the grid and your template, you would be able to position your design, the parts of your design. You would stitch one part of it and slide your fabric over, realign everything, put your template down, realign everything, make sure it's matching and put it under there. You do have an option once you get it in there, sometimes you're not quite right on that center part. We have a jog feature so you can move your needle left and right or up and down to get it back into this center spot because all of our de designs, they not that they start in a center part, but they're centered and then they'll go to wherever the very first stitch is but use this as your alignment right there. Okay, let's see that. Very cool. And then we do have one more question from Jean. She's asking, is this machine a good step up from the SOAS 725S? Oh, I would say definitely yes, because you're moving up to a computerized machine that offers you all those sewing features of uh, one of our top of the line machines and embroidery. So it's a great way to get started with embroidery because you're not, you know, it's not a big package um, for that. So you can sample a little bit of embroidery and get really get hooked. That's how I was. I bought my first embroidery machine was the 9,000. And I always had said, what do I need that for? And now I'm like the embroidery software specialist. So I'm not, you know, that's how these things work. You kind of do a little bit of embroidery um, one of the things I do a lot of are in the hoop projects. So it's not just about putting an embroidery on your, you know, your shirt or uh, names on a bag and things like that. But you can actually create uh, zip pouches, uh, stuffies, uh, all kinds of uh, zipper tabs and things like that. You can create those all in the hoop of your machine. You just get those designs and um, there's instructions on how to do that. So that's a really, I like that part of it, the crafty side to use that. I didn't mention that, you know, I did mention all the notes that Janome puts on the screen, but they also put in all the numbers for threading. So if you were go to thread this machine, you can even open this to see inside, but you just follow the numbers down through all the way. And then you see seven here. That's your last one. You would put your thread up and over for the threader. And our threader works in both the embroidery side and the, and the sewing side. So you never have to thread that, um, that needle. This would be one I would recommend to, I, I've actually met, mentioned this to a couple of people who are interested in embroidery. And um, I said, this is a great way to go because it just gives you that, all the stuff that embroidery does in a, a little bit smaller package. So you're, you can really get started right away. And if you needed a machine to take to a class, if you have a larger machine, this is a great machine to take to a class at under 23 pounds, great big handle on the top for carrying that and you know me, the back side of this machine is flat. You take your embroidery arm off. So when you carry this, you would put this out away from you and the back of the machine would sit flush to you. So it's a little easier to carry. So you're not, you know, reaching over. So a nice big handle for that, not just one in the center. You can get the optional, there's optional uh, accessories. There's thread stands you can get for it as well. As I said, the extra hoop is over there. You can get a, um, a scissor cut, a, a foot pedal scissor cutter, because it has a little a, a, a port back here, so you could plug that in. That's a feature on some of our larger machines as well. So, I mean, it's very impressive. I mean, maybe I won't give it up. I think I might just take it back home with me. I, you know, <laughs> I just had so much fun with thing. it. It's really, you know, it's. I, I didn't really miss my large machine that much. I was like doing everything I wanted to do. So very happy. And I took it on retreat too. I, I actually took it to a retreat. So that was fun. 
Well, it does appear to be a very comprehensive machine. I'm just shocked. I mean, I was kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be a great one to show because it's a great travel machine. You get embroidery and sewing. But I'm like, dang, <laughs> there's a lot of features. Yeah. <laughs> And also, just for my curiosity, I have a MemoryCraft 8200 QCP SE, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it looks very similar to that model um, versus that being embroidery as well. Uh, is there much difference? Do you know offhand? So that so one of the things that Janome does is they you'll notice that there's some of the same. Uh, the buttons are the same. They might even be close to the same position. Um, the icons on the screen are the same. So when you move from model to model, when you move up from a mechanical to an electronic machine, you'll see those features on our machines as we come through. And so your 8200 QCP will have a very, you know, I think you that one might have the, some of them have the little dial on here, but um, you know, your screen looks very similar. Um, very. You have the buttons over here with your start stop. Mm -hmm. And you know, this start stop button, you can use it when you're, when you, I use only the start stop, I sew standing up. So if I want to start out sewing, I can hold it in and it'll go slow. And then when I, when I let go, it'll come up to speed. And when I get to the end of my seam, I can hold it in and it'll slow down and then stop. So I have control right there. I don't have to use the foot control. I can use my start stop button almost all the time. Um, very yeah. cool. Yeah, with, it has amazing I, I features. I'm very happy with it. And uh, yeah, very similar to my 8200. So I like mm -hmm. the embroidery part of it and the, that you can bring it for traveling. So wonderful demonstration. I'm very excited yeah. about it. <laughs> you can add this in as one of your second machines to go along with your mm -hmm. 8200 because the 8200 and this machine are both nine millimeters. So all those mm -hmm. exceptions snap on would work here as well. I may have missed it before, but what is the throat space on that machine? So this is a little over 10 inches here, and it's just about five going up. Awesome. Well, um, we can go ahead and move forward with doing our giveaway if you want to stick around for that. And then I'll go into some awesome pricing for that beautiful machine. Sounds great. All right. All right, Brian, let's see what we have. All right, let's see. And this is going to be for that 100 pack of Floriani thread. Yay. Congratulations, Linda. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is great. And Anne, thank you again for joining us. We really enjoyed you being here. And if you don't mind, could you tell everybody again where they can watch your videos, yours and Miriam's? Sure. Um, we, we do weekly videos, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Janome Sewing Machines page and also the um, Continental page. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on the Janome Sewing Machine page. Fridays, we're on the Continental Club page. Awesome, well, we will definitely be checking those out. So thank you again for joining us and we will go over pricing. All right, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Have a great day, Anne. That was so awesome. I am really excited about this machine. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what it is offered at right now. So we have the Memory Craft 9850. That's a computerized sewing and embroidery machine. The MSRP on that is $2,499. We have our sale price of $1,999. But as I mentioned before, if you're just popping in, that is not going to be our final price. We can offer a special event price, but you do have to call in to get that special event pricing. Another thing that I wanna mention about this particular machine, if you go to our website, we're also showing that we're offering a free bonus bundle and that values $190 by itself. So in addition to getting special event pricing and um, just getting amazing deals and everything, you get the accessory pack. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we've seen already. Uh, we had gone through a couple. I think we got to the field guide. So if you just pop in on, we had Bernie Tobish, and he had his book here, the field guide, you, you and your sewing machine. There we go, words. <laughs> and that's on sale right now for $24.99. That is such a great resource to have in your sewing room. He has so many great tips to help you with troubleshooting your machine. So super, super handy. We also had Chris Marchini on. If you... Uh, follow him on TikTok. It is Rose City Originals. You can follow him there. He has great tips. But in his segment, he was 
using the Juki TL2010Q, and that is the straight stitch mechanical machine. It normally is $1,699 on sale for $999, but again, you can give us a call and we can offer special event pricing. And just a reminder, this is a one-day event, so our special event pricing is only going to be good through 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you are interested in any of these machines, please give us a call. Also, happy news. If you've been peeking at a machine and it's not featured today, that's totally fine. You can give our customer service a call and we're gonna extend special event pricing to any of our sewing machines. So just give them a call and they'll let you know what they can offer as a discount on that. So we are very excited about that. If we could fit all machines in in one day, that would be a lot of fun, but whoo, that would be tiring, right? <laughs> all right, let's take a look and see. Um, I wanted to also talk about claiming your prize. So anybody that's been joining, we're giving away a prize at the end of every segment. To claim your prize, you need to go to our link tree, which is link tree forward slash sewing parts online. You can click claim your prize and fill out the form and then once you submit your form, it takes approximately one to two weeks for us to send that out, but we'll get you your prize. You can also go to our event page, which is sewing parts online forward slash so creative live. Scroll down to the giveaway section and you can fill out all the information there. I believe there was a question regarding uh, the winners where it's going to be shared. So um, I was going to pop that up, but just to let you know, we are going to be sharing the winners on our Facebook group, which is uh, Sewing Parts Online Sewing Community, and then also on our YouTube community. So we will share those hopefully either today at the end of the day or tomorrow morning, but you can keep your eyes peeled and we will share that. Again, you have seven days to claim your prize. And I believe, Brian, we want to share a little video, another little sewing tip. Is that correct? All right, so he's going to share another video from Chelsea with She So Seems. If you do not follow her, I would highly recommend doing so. Let's take a peek. Chelsea with She So Seams. Have you ever been sewing on your serger and you realize five, six, seven feet into the project that you searched the wrong thing? It happens to me all the time and I used to make a mess out of my sewing space trying to rip these tiny little pieces of thread out one at a time. Well, I wanna show you a quick hack today so that you don't have to do that anymore. So the first thing to understand when you're about to do this hack is you need to know which is the top side and the bottom side of your serging. When you're serging, these two horizontal lines will be showing up side of your fabric. If it's missing this horizontal line, that's the bottom side. So for this hack, we're going to be working from the top side. To do this, I like to use two different tools. They both work equally well and they both are available on Sewing Parts Online's website. This is called Dual Seam Fix and it comes with a short side and a longer, thicker side. For this, we would want to use the short side. Another option would be to use these awesome three and a half inch embroidery scissors. They both do the job equally well. What you want to do is take your seam ripper and take it to the top horizontal line and rip through it. Then find the bottom horizontal line and you're going to rip through that as well. Go ahead and repeat that process about eight or nine inches down your fabric. Pull out a little tail that you can grab with your fingers, lay it flat on your board, and you're gonna hold your fabric down while you pull that stitch out. Repeat this process for the bottom half as well. Okay, here's the magic, y'all ready? And now your fabric is free to start surging again and have a second chance at doing it the right way. Who's gonna try that tip? <laughs> I mean, seriously, that tip has saved me multiple times. It works so well. <laughs> so we also want to share another little video on how to make a t-shirt. So once you get your beautiful new sewing machine, you can sew a t-shirt. And he's going to find it and we will get that playing for you. And while he is looking for that, I just want to talk about uh, the upcoming prize, which I'll show it to you again. But we've talked about it a couple of times. This is the quilter's ring. It is an eight inch quilter's ring. And we were talking about free motion before. And Chris was saying, you know, you can get really tired. You can get a shoulder, like, um, like getting 
fatigue. Sorry, I'm listening to people in the background too. <laughs> so you get shoulder fatigue and you get tired. And if you have arthritis, your wrist can hurt. Um, also carpal tunnel. This is an awesome option. It has these little knobs on there and you're able to use the opening on this filter string and slip it over. You don't even have to take your presser foot off and then you would have your fabric down on the bottom and you can use these little knobs to move your fabric around. It works really, really slick. It just helps give you more control on um, doing your free motion sewing so you can be all set up for that. And it has kind of a grippy texture on the back that grips just enough to uh, make your fabric move really nice and smoothly. So looks like Brian is ready with that video. So we're going to see how to make a t-shirt and then we'll have you Alex's video. Oh, we're, oh, we're blah, 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 blah. words, right? Are we going to do the apron? Yep. Awesome. Well, we've got a different tutorial in mind. We are going to do Alex's apron. She actually made it for Father's Day. Super cute, but you could make it for any occasion. So let's go ahead and see what it is. Day is right around the corner and I was trying to figure out what could I sew for Father's Day and I came across this Floppy Joe's grilling apron by Abby Lane Quilts. Now I'm a beginner sewist so I was a little nervous but I did manage to put it together and that was an accomplishment because if I can do it you can do it because I, I don't really know what I'm doing. But I figured why not do it again and let you sew along with me. The really fun thing about this pattern is that it also has a youth sizes in here. So you can sew matching ones for a father and a son. If you wanna try it out with me, I have it linked in the description below. I've already got all the pieces cut out, so we're just gonna sew together. But you're gonna cut it out with the pattern and end up with an apron top, apron bottom, two accent pockets, four pieces for the other pockets, a neck strap, some side ties, a D-ring strap, and a carabiner strap. You're also gonna need a couple of D-rings to adjust the neck strap. So the first thing that it wants us to do is look at the wrong side of our side ties and fold a quarter of an inch in. Then we're gonna press that fold and do the same thing to the short ends. I like to use this little handy contraption to find my quarter inch. And then after that, I'm just gonna eyeball it a little bit to make it go faster. So I've got this strap done. I'm gonna do the other one and the necktie. All right, I've got all three folded and pressed. And now what we do is we fold them inwards like this and we're gonna press them together. Oop. So I like to just take the corner pieces, put these together first and work my way to the end. Make sure you get a good and straight even fold there. Once I get to the other end, I'm gonna really make sure that I get the ends as even as possible. And then make sure that we do that for the other straps and ties. I've got them all folded and pressed. And now we're gonna put a quarter inch top stitch all the way around each of them. Next, we're gonna take the D-ring strap and the carabiner strap and fold and press them in the same way. And then in three, two, one, we're gonna do a magic trick by top stitching them. We're gonna magically have them top stitched. There we have it, but we're not done with these. I'm gonna put the carabiner strap to the side for a little bit. They're gonna fold this in half and just finger press. Take your D-rings and slip them on down in there like so. And then we're gonna stitch as close to the edge as possible. So my presser foot is right up against this. Now we're gonna give our top some shape. So I've cut out the pattern and I'm gonna take my top fabric and place the pattern on the corners and using a rotary cutter to cut this out. We're gonna get the shape of the top of the apron by folding it in half and I've already done it as you can tell. So if you can see, this used to be part of the top but I cut it out. And by folding it in half, you can get both sides cut out at the same time, which I actually didn't do. I forgot that part and did it the hard way. 
So we're gonna press the edges of this as well, but it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna start with the curved edges first, fold them into the wrong side, which I don't really have much of a wrong side, but you might. And you're gonna fold in a quarter inch. We're gonna press, but then you're gonna fold it in again, three eighths of an inch and press again. After we do that on the curved edges, we're gonna sew an eighth of an inch of a top stitch, then go back and sew a quarter inch next to that seam, press it and repeat all of those steps for the neck and the sides. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, how to have an outfit change, obviously, because it's a different day, because I didn't finish this in time the other day. So we're gonna pick up where we left off, which for you is instant. We're gonna add the pockets now. We've got all the edges sewn together. So you're gonna take a ruler and measure six inches from the outside in. I'll throw some b-roll on here so that it makes sense visually. But you're gonna mark six inches on one side and six inches from the other side so that when you stick your pockets on, the end of them are gonna be the exact same length from the side of your apron. So you're gonna take your pocket, and here's the thing. Any pattern that you look at that I notice, they will say to put your stuff right sides together. I don't know why I struggled with that for the longest time. Every, every time I would see something say right sides together, I would think from the right and it just messed with my brain. So I like what Trisha here at Sewing Parts Online says, and she says, put them pretty side the pretty side because see this is the pretty side this is the pretty side and you stick them like that so here's my little mark you can't really see that I'm sure but it's there trust me you gotta believe me and I'm just gonna pin that I've also learned that there is an art to pinning things. I have not mastered that. I don't I don't understand the best way to do that. And I always realize what I did wrong when I get to my sewing machine. We're gonna sew a half inch seam going this way and then when we're done, we're gonna fold these down. So I'll show you what that's like in a second. So we've got them all sewn together and we're just gonna flip them over and press them down with our iron. So let's do that real fast. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna take our bottom piece and ignoring this top part right here, we're gonna take the sides and the bottom, fold them over a quarter inch, press that, and then fold over another three eighths of an inch and press that. We're back at our sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch along the sides that we just pressed. Oh, you're fine right now. I'm unsewing. Unsewing. Yeah, Trisha corrected me a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> So we finished prettying up our edges and now we're gonna add our pockets to the top portion of the bottom part of our apron. This is how we do that. So just like the top part of our apron, we're gonna measure in six inches. Take our pocket that is blending in with this right now and face it pretty side to pretty side. Pin it. Hang on. Actually, let's make sure that we're not doing this 
upside down because you got to look at how it looks when you flip it over. That would have been bad. Now we're going to take the carabiner strap that we sewed earlier, fold it in half about an inch from the pocket where if you're looking at it like this, it's on the right. When you're wearing it, it's the left pocket. About an inch over, you're going to pin it into place. And then we're going to sew our pockets and carabiner strap with a half inch seam. Got our pockets, we've got our carabiner, and now we're going to take the pockets and flip it over to the back. We're going to press this down with the iron. And I'm just going to do that really fast and then come right back over here. All right, we're almost done. We have our bottom with the pockets. We have our top with the other part of the pockets. And now we're gonna stitch them together. So this is gonna be kind of like a little puzzle piece and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. With your pretty sides together. So here's the pretty side of the top of our apron and then we'll take the pretty side of our bottom. So it's gonna look like the bottom part is upside down and you wanna take the pockets and line those up, stretch them out so that they get even. This will take some finagling. This also might be where you realize that your dimensions are off, but you know, it's okay because this is, this is handmade. This is not meant to be perfect if that does happen. So I'm gonna line this up as best as I can, like I said, and start pinning. And then my little trick is to start trying to perfect one area at a time, pin that, and then worry about the rest. And as you can see, so for my pockets, I did end up cutting them not at the exact lengths. When we go to sew them, you just wanna make sure that you're sewing from the shortest length that you have. You might be more particular than me when you cut your fabric. I am kinda loosey-goosey, so you might not have that problem that I have. Now we're gonna sew the bottom parts and the pockets together, and you're gonna sew a half inch seam until you reach the pockets. When you reach the pockets, you're gonna do a quarter inch seam. And then when you get back to the main body of your apron, you're going to do a half inch seam again. Don't forget that you're going to be sewing over your carabiner strap. If you need to make adjustments as you go along, that's totally fine. And since my fabric is a little shorter, I'm going to be constantly making sure that I'm actually sewing it. <laughs> the reason that I'm taking my pins out is just because my fabric is so uneven that I'm just doing my best to hold it together with my hands instead. And I'm probably gonna be clipping the excess fabric. Back to my half inch, and this is a little wonky, at least for me, I don't know how it looks for you. So I just made sure that I finagled my fabric down here so that I can get it straight here in this middle part again. And I'm gonna move this fabric out of the way so that I can see where my measurement is. Made it to my next pocket. Gonna lift my presser foot, spin that around, and attempt to do a quarter inch. <laughs> Going all the way down, I'm just gonna, again, I'm personally gonna take my pins out just so that I can use my fingers to line things up as best as I can. But that's a personal preference. All right, we've got pockets. We're gonna do some cleanup. Turning it around, we're gonna trim some of the seam because there's just a little bit of extra fabric there that we really don't need. And then before and after each pocket, you wanna clip some of the seam allowance without clipping through the actual seam because our corners there are a little funky. See, this is what I'm talking about. I made a mistake right here. I'm gonna have to go back and sew that part so that nothing falls out of the pocket. After we've got it all clipped up, we're gonna take it to our ironing board and press the seams up towards the apron body. So this is the bottom, this is the body. And as I'm doing this, I can see where I can cut just a little bit more where the pockets are. I couldn't really see so well earlier. So making sure that I do not cut the actual seam, I'm gonna give this some room here and cut these parts off. Now what you can do to finish the seam and make it look a lot prettier is do a zigzag stitch all the way across and around the pockets. That's not a pocket. Where's the pocket? In the inside. I, I need more coffee. And around the pockets. But I'm gonna skip that step and just sew an eighth inch top stitch along the bottom of the apron top. Now all we have left is the top pocket. That's gonna hit the microphone. And the straps. We're gonna sew these two pieces, pretty side to pretty side. A quarter inch on the sides and the bottoms, obviously leaving the top untouched so that it can be a pocket. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really fast and then come right back. And we're done, like magic. 
we're just going to clip the edges or the corners, fold it inside out, try to get those corners out there, and then pick a side and fold it about half an inch inwards. We're going to press that and make two stitches, one that's an eighth of an inch, one that's a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go press this, sew it, and be right back. Now we're going to bring back out our apron, get out the pocket that we just sewed. So centering it as best as we can, and then three and a half inches from the top. So right here is where it's going to go. I'm going to fold the other side in, and I'm going to sew all the way around an eighth of an inch. We're going to take all of our straps and sew them into a square with an X, about an inch from each edge. This is gonna be a lot of twisting and turning. And one thing that you wanna make sure is paying attention to how your pattern is gonna lay. So make sure that you kind of visualize it first by putting it all together before sewing, and then head to the sewing machine because you probably don't wanna sew your pattern upside down. And that's it, we did it. What's really cool is with a D-ring strap, it's completely adjustable, so you can make it shorter, longer, and you've got your top pocket up here, your bottom pockets down here. A little accessory down here that you can stick a clip on so that you can hang your grilling tools off of if you need to. Give a little tie in the back and there you go. Now you've made a grilling apron for Father's Day. Get stuck in the thread here. Happy f That is such a fun project. I was just telling Alex, I have watched this so many times and it still makes me giggle. So <laughs> I hope you're inspired to make an apron for an upcoming gift, but I see that Char had mentioned that it's a nice apron, so props, um, Alex, <laughs> and also love the demos. So I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a, an adventure that we have been starting. So we are doing a weekly live called The Social Circle, and during The Social Circle, we do a project either anywhere from beginner to intermediate, something that we can finish in approximately an hour and a half to two hours. It is a ton of fun. Also. Just thank you to everybody that's been going to the social circle. We've been seeing you in the comments as well. So we just love it. It's a growing community. We sew together. We have a lot of fun and hopefully you learn something. So we made this. Can you see matching fabric, right? How cute would this be with the apron? We made a pot holder and this was a fun oven mitt. We also did a pot holder. We started with doing a mushroom block. So that was fun. It was actually National Mushroom Day. <laughs> and then we did a piped pillowcase cover. So we've had several episodes so far. It's been a lot of fun, but I just wanted to let you know that we do that every Wednesday at 1130. Just a little disclaimer, because we are doing So Creative Live today, we aren't having it this Wednesday, but every other Wednesday after that, we are going to be doing it. Um, we have one of our Sewing Parts Online ambassadors coming on very soon. Uh, that would be Kelsey Smith. Um, she is on the, she's going to be the next one, correct? Yes. Yeah. And she's going to be doing a mug rug. So that is a fun, useful pattern. And we're going to have a whole lot of fun. So you can always go to our Facebook group. It's Sewing Parts Online Sewing Community. We post all the materials that you need, what's going to be coming up, and hopefully you can sew with me. So then if you have questions, you're good to ask me right at that time and we can all learn together. So I'm excited to do our next segment now. Before we pull Tim up, we are gonna just talk about the next giveaway. So if you were just popping on, this giveaway is going to be for the eight inch um, quilters ring. This is super handy if you're doing free motion sewing. You've got the little opening here. You're able to slip it through just like this. And then you can use these knobs to hold on to while you're free motion sewing. And it's going to help you move your fabric and you have less fatigue. Super awesome little quilters ring. So thank you, Juki, for donating this today. So let's go ahead and pull up Tim and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Brian, do you want to pull Tim up? Hi, Tim. How are you doing? Good, and you? I'm doing pretty well. It's nice to see you again. How are you That's doing? My pleasure. Thought I'd uh, give you a little ring here, you know? <laughs> Love it. Well, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? So my name is Tim Bond. I am the sales manager for the East Coast for Juki America. I have been sewing since I was about eight or nine when my grandmother taught me how to use a sewing machine. So sewing is not new to me. I did own a store, so I was a dealer before I came into Juki America as a sales rep and now a sales manager. And I can tell you for a fact, I am a lazy sewer. <laughs> and I say that because 
I want the machine, which is a bad word because they should be considered toys to do the things that I don't like to do. So that's kind of made me a lazy sewer, a lazy quilter. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to show you some of those little tricks that the machine can do to make your sewing easier. And maybe you won't become quite as lazy as I am when I sit down at the machine. How's that sound, Trish? <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful plan. I will let you take it away. If you have any questions for me, I'll be in the background, okay? All right, great, sounds good. All right. So I'm gonna start with just a, a brief overview on the machine because I have some camera angles that I wanna show you some really nice features on our DX2000 QVP. Now, people often get confused about why we have two product lines and our QVP is our upper product line. So the QVP version always comes with extra accessories or it's got a little different coloring to it, but I want to take just a moment and talk about some of those extra accessories that come with the DX2000 so that you have an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about extra accessories. So one of the big things that comes with it is this additional thread spool holder that fits onto the back of the machine and allows you to use larger spools, cones included, and this is part of that system. So this actually comes with the machine. So if you like to use a cone or you're using a larger spool that doesn't fit into the well here in the machine, you have a place to put it and you don't have to go buy it extra because it came with the machine. But it also comes with this nice little box of extra accessory feet as well. So there's five feet in here, including a free motion couching foot, some decorative use foot, an applique foot, not an open toe applique, but an applique foot to help you even out those bumps when you're doing applique work. Nice features in here as well. These are the two big items that help set this machine apart from our other DX models and pull it into our QVP line. So you wanna keep in mind, do I need those extra feet? Maybe not right now, but in the future you might. Remember, you're gonna be buying a machine that you want to have room to grow with. So if I bought a machine that has limitations now, in six months or a year, I might be having to buy another machine. So it's always an advantage to you as a consumer to look down the road at that feature that you might not have considered getting in the machine, but it might be something that you're gonna grow into. So those are nice things to have. Now our machines come with a myriad of regular feet and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shame myself here because walking foot is included with this machine, but you see mine's still in the bag. Now I'm shaming myself because I have another machine that has an integrated walking foot. That's the one I prefer to use, but not everybody's able to have a multiple selection of machines to choose from. At this point, think about it. How many machines do you have? Are you a collector like me? You have one machine, two machines, three machines, five machines. You know, we buy machines because they do things for us or they have features we want. Sometimes we just like the convenience of being able to set one machine up to do this and another machine up to do this. And we can just switch between the machines. So that's why my little walking foot here isn't out of the bag because I don't use the walking foot but it's a great tool to have and it comes with the machine. So, oh, I don't have to go buy another $80 accessory because it comes with the machine. Now we talk about other accessories that come with the machine, our regular foot, overcasting foot, blind ham foot, a smooth foot is included. For those of you who don't know what a smooth foot is, it's this little white foot. It has a coating on the back and that coating allows it to glide over fabrics that might stick to some of our metal or our plastic feet. So this is a nice fit to have if you do a lot of decorative work or even if you do bag work and you're doing different types of fabric or vinyls. So this is always a nice fit to have. So we kind of put these feet together as part of our regular machine, but no machine has every foot available with it. So there are some feet that you may have to buy depending on that specialty sewing that you're doing. But let's talk about stitches on the machine as well. I like machines that are kind of geared towards all sewers, not just sewing, not just crafting, not just quilters. So our DX2000 fits into that category. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it's really designed for the quilter, but it's really not. It's designed for everyone. It has features and accessories that appeal to the quilters, but it also has features and accessories that appear to the sewers and the crafters. That's what you want to be looking at when you're looking at a machine. Don't think because it says it's for quilting, that is only for quilting. That's not the case. So let's take a look and I'm going to do some magics with my camera here because I want you to be able to see the machine 
and see the areas that are of importance to us. So give me just a second here. We're going to click on our cameras and do a little camera magic so that we can take some better views. And now we're going to take that close up of our needle area so that we can actually concentrate on, on, the, on the business end of the machine, if you will. And that should give me my other view. So we should be good. Oh, not quite. Well, it's showing it to me, but it's not showing it to you. Let's see if we can get this to work for us. From my end, I'm seeing the awesome presser foot with a little black button on it and some orangish red fabric. Right, and you should be seeing a screenshot of the machine. So that's what I'm trying to get to come up. It worked before. Hopefully we can get it to come up in view for us again. I just have to say, I absolutely love the presser foot with the little black button. <laughs> I just used that little black button the other day um, with leveling over a bulky seam on my purse and it is so handy. <laughs> Exactly. It saves you having to get out another toy to play with because it's built mm -hmm. into the machine. Okay, so now I think you should be able to see the screenshot, right? I see the LCD screen on that machine, yes. Perfect. So, so this is what we're, we're talking about, features built into the machine. So as you can see, my machine is set up for a straight stitch. But look right above the indicator. You'll see I have this sideways zigzag with a pair of scissors. That's indicated that I've turned on a feature on the machine that is going to lock stitch at the beginning, lock stitch at the end of my seam, and cut the thread for me. Remember, what did I say at the beginning? I'm kind of lazy, so anything the machine can do for me, I'm more than willing to let it do. So I'm going to have it take a few stitches for me here. I'm all set for a 5 8 inch. And you can see it's going to stitch forward, it's going to stitch back, and then if it was stitching down the seam, I would get to the point that I would stop where I wanted to stop and I would either touch on the machine itself or in this case, I'm going to use the heel of my foot control to trigger a reverse stitch. So now it's going to reverse stitch to lock at the end, cut the thread, and I've completed my stitch pattern. I'm going to move this back over here so you can still see it in the camera. And you can see that there's extra stitches at the beginning and extra stitches at the end. I really didn't do anything, did I? I just selected the stitch pattern turned on the feature and stepped on the pedal. When I told it I wanted to end, I just used the heel switch on the pedal, which let's talk about the heel switch on our pedal for just a minute here. Our pedal has two pieces. It has a front switch and a rear switch. So where the blue dot is, that's where you put the ball of your foot. And the bottom of the switch is where your heel would be resting down here. So when you press on this, that's one switch. When you step on the blue dot, that's to make the machine go. We can control this heel switch. Right now on this machine, it's set for reverse. But I can have it set to do needle up, needle down. I can have it set to raise and lower my presser foot. I can have it set to cut the thread. I can have it set to do nothing. So that switch is programmable with seven different options. Oh, another convenient feature to make my job easier adding to my laziness with the machine. So that's the nice feature to have with sewing, but it can also be used for quilting. And we have this beautiful lock stitching method here for our sewing, but can we apply it to quilting? And how do I make my machine work for our quilters? Well, Juki, on most of our machines, we have a built-in quarter inch piecing stitch. Now, I want to draw your attention before I change screens that you notice on here, the stitch length on this stitch is 2.4. That's 2.4 millimeters. That's the approximate good length for sewing regular garments. But that's not the proper stitch length we should be using for our quilting. And on our machine, button number three here on my touch panel converts me to a quarter of an inch. It moves the needle over and I do not need to change my foot. So I can stick with my regular A foot and do a nice quarter inch. So if you look at the, the needle here, you see the needle is now moved over. It's closer to the edge of the foot. So I would put my fabric over here at the edge of the foot. I'm gonna come back over here and turn on my lock stitch feature again. 
I can put my foot down and you don't see any feed dogs. My fabric is covering all the feed dogs underneath, which means all the feed dogs are going to be moving the fabric. And I'll explain to you that difference in just a minute. But this is important if you're doing long strips. You want all the feed dogs to move your fabric through the machine. Otherwise, you get a little wiggle. So we're going to, once again, I'm just going to tell it to sew. It's going to take those little stitches forward for me, little stitches back. And then it's going to sew down. Hopefully, I'm guiding it correctly. I'm trying to stand behind the machine. I get to the point that I want to stop. I'm pressing down on the heel switch on the machine. It does its lock stitch, cuts the thread. And there I've got my regular five inch stitch seam and my quarter inch seam, both of them with, with the locking stitch. But sometimes I don't want all that extra stitching at the beginning and at the end. So I can come over here to my stitch pattern button on my uh, locking stitch button and I can tell it to change. So now you see on the display, it shows you a dot with a line. That's micro stitching. It's going to take little stitches in place rather than traveling forward to back. It's very important when you're trying to keep bulk out of a seam. I like to do this as an example in that you're putting together a mariner's compass. Now a mariner's compass means you have all these triangle pieces that all meeting in the middle. It's a quilt pattern for those of you who don't understand what a mariner's compass I'm referring to is. All those points come together, like eight of them. Or if you have a larger mariner's compass, maybe there's 16. So if I had 16 of this extra bulk where there's stitching, if I had 16 of those coming together, I have more bulk in that point where the center is. But if I use the micro stitch, I just have little stitches in place. I don't have that bulk, so I'm not going to have that teepee buildup that I might get by having extra bulk or extra thread in that common seam. Also, I want you to notice that because I've selected my quarter inch piecing stitch, my stitch length is now 2.0. Because when we piece, we should be using a shorter stitch length. Also, if you notice, my needle position is 5.6. This is kind of unique to Juki. Most machines that have a seven millimeter zigzag do not allow you to access 5.6. Their options are 5.0, 5.5, 6.0. So you can't get into that 5.6, which is where you need to be to get your needle to the edge of your regular foot to give you that quarter of an inch. Well, once again, that's that laziness in me. I don't need to change the foot. I just touch the button on the machine. But there are times when you do want to use a quarter of an inch foot and you want to stick with a center needle. Does that mean I have to go buy another foot? No, it doesn't because we have a quarter inch foot that comes with our machine. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it on the video, I'm hoping you can, but I'm gonna turn it sideways, maybe you can see it that way better. But right in the crutch here, there's a, a hash mark or, or a little indentation in the metal where the needle falls. And then behind it and in front of it, up here and back there, there's another hash mark or an indentation in the metal. That's telling you a quarter of an inch from where the needle is in front and behind. Very important when you're trying to sew up to, but you don't want to sew into that last quarter of an inch, or you want to start a quarter of an inch in from the end. So if I was using this foot and I wanted to sew in from a quarter of an inch, I could use that quarter of an inch to the edge of my fabric, and my needle is going to start a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric. Nice handy foot to have those markings in times that you need that. So let's talk about some of the other features that are in our machine to make it easier for sewers and quilters and crafters because we all don't work on the same fabrics and we all don't work at the same thing at the same time. So sometimes we're working on a knit. Well, knits are gonna react differently in the machine. And I wanna show you a nice feature we have on our DX2000 and that is our stitch plate. Now on other machines, you wanna change from a straight, from a zigzag plate to a straight stitch plate, you have to buy another plate. Then you have to take the screws out, put the plate on, put the screws back in. And then you have to be cognizant of your stitch pattern selection. So I want you to watch the screen because I'm going to flip the little switch and I'm going to convert from a zigzag plate to a straight stitch. It's very simple. There's a little switch right here. There's two indicators right above it. Right now the switch is showing me in the zigzag mode, but there's a little dot right over here. I'm going to push that switch over to the little dot. And now I am in straight stitch mode and my little plate here is engaged so that all I have is a round hole. Also, there's a note on my screen. 
There's a note on my screen because the stitch pattern I had previously cannot be used with the straight stitch mode. So I'm going to tell it OK. So my little message will go away. And it's going to give me a center needle straight stitch pattern. It will not let me select a pattern that cannot be sewn in this particular mode. Oh, I can't damage the foot be, by selecting an incorrect stitch pattern. I mean, I can't damage the plate by selecting an incorrect stitch pattern. This is very handy. This also makes me lazy because I don't have to think about it. I can engage the straight stitch mode. It's going to limit the stitch patterns I can choose from. It won't let me select one that will not work with it. So thereby, it's a little smarter than I am. But why do we need a straight stitch mode? Well, I'm going to put it back to zigzag. I'm going to pull out my applique foot so that you can see, because I want to show you what happens with fabric, especially knit fabrics, so that you understand the importance of having the straight stitch mode versus a regular zigzag opening. So I'm going to lower my foot. Now, what you're looking at is just a piece of thin knit, it's like a jersey knit. And I want to just gently turn my hand wheel so that my needle falls down and starts penetrating through the fabric. You see how much of the fabric is pushing down? You see it's pushing almost the whole width of that opening. It's pushing that fabric down. See how much play I have with my fabric? Because it's going up and down in that, in that wide opening. So now, Let's turn on the straight stitch mode. So I'm going to remove my fabric so I can open the plate, engage the straight stitch mode. I'm going to put my fabric back under. I'm going to put my foot back down. Now watch the fabric as the needle goes down. Look, almost no deflection going down. I'm going to get deflection coming up. I'm going to get pull up on the fabric or flagging on the fabric, but very little on the way down because that opening is not that big oval opening. It's just that little round opening that's just a little bit larger than our needle. This gives us better control for our stitching on those fabrics that need a little extra support in the, in the uh, needle area. So that's a nice thing with this knit. Now, if you wanna know about this knit, it's very light, very thin. And I use just a single layer to show you as an example, but the same type of flexing of the fabric through a zigzag opening, what happened whether you used um, one layer or two layers? Because they're knits, they're lightweight, they're gonna flex, all right? So that's gonna give us an idea there. I'm gonna go back over here to my zigzag mode, put my cover back on. Now you notice I wasn't sewing because I had my cover off. I don't really ever want to sew without having my cover on over my bobbin case. But that's just for knits, right? No, it's good for other things as well. I want a little bit more control on a lightweight woven that I'm sewing on, or I'm sewing along the edge of the fabric so I can engage that straight stitch mode and take advantage of that. I'm doing top stitching at the edge of the fabric. So there's other things that you kind of think about when you start getting used to using that straight stitch mode and the conversion on our straight stitch conversion on the plate. But what else do we have to work with here? We also have buttonholes. Garment sewers inadvertently, or sometimes they don't do it inadvertently, select the wrong buttonhole for the fabric because they only have one or two buttonholes. So I'm going to show you our buttonhole foot. This is where our button, oops, this is where our button goes. Our buttonhole foot is a sensor. And I'm going to move it over in front of the other camera so you can see the entire buttonhole assembly. So you can see it. It's a sensor. We plug this into the side of the machine and we select a buttonhole pattern. Based on what size button is in the holder, the machine will sew a buttonhole pattern for me. Now remember, I'm lazy, so the machine can do everything for me to do the buttonhole, including tie it off and cut the thread. Oh, so I don't have to worry about trimming the tails. The only thing I have to do is worry about aligning the fabric. So if I put my buttonhole foot on, And I'm going to just do this real quick over here. You'll see that we have an extra plate piece on our buttonhole attachment. In the book, it tells you to use that plate piece when you're doing buttonholes where the fabric is uneven. Now, what do we mean by a buttonhole going on a place where the fabric is uneven? 
check the collar of a men's shirt or collar of one of your dress shirts, ladies, and see if there's a buttonhole on it. That's where that fabric is uneven is, is in that collar piece. So that's why we sandwich our fabric between the two pieces. So now when I set my foot down and plug my foot in, this is going to move as a complete assembly. It's not pushing the fabric, it's pushing the plate. The bottom plate has sandwiched the fabric to the top plate, so the entire buttonhole attachment moves as an assembly. It's not pushing the fabric, it's pushing the entire assembly. Think of it that you just put the fabric into a frame and the machine is moving the frame to give you that buttonhole. Now, remember I said about selecting a buttonhole and wanting to make it automatic. So I'm gonna select a standard square buttonhole. I'm gonna come back over to my favorite little button on the machine here and have it give me my lock stitch and my thread cut. So now it would sew the entire buttonhole for me. And when it gets to the end, it's going to do a lock stitch, it's going to cut the thread. And actually I could even turn on auto lift afterwards and it would then lift off the foot when it's complete. But let's talk about adjustments on the buttonhole itself. So you have stitch length, but that actually becomes the density of your buttonhole. So if the stitches are too tight, I can make the stitch length longer, changing the density of my buttonhole. But I'm not changing the length of the buttonhole, that's still controlled by the sensors. The width of the buttonhole, right now it's set for 4.5, but let's say I wanna make a super wide buttonhole so I can make that up to seven simply by coming in and adjusting the knob. So if I adjust my stitch length and I adjust my knob to be longer, my, my um, wider, sorry about that, my buttonhole width to be wider, I still have some other options that I can control. And these are relatively new to a lot of home sewers because it's not offered on other machines but I can go into my configuration. And the first option in my configuration is a picture of a buttonhole. Well, that's funny, it's got two little arrows on it. What exactly are we talking about? Let's touch okay, so it gives me my options. We are now talking about the gap in the middle of the buttonhole. We can adjust how close the sides are or how far apart they are for our buttons. Now, if you've noticed, if you've bought garments for men in, in the recent years, buttons on men's shirts seem to have gotten a little thicker. Well, a little thicker button means I might wanna have a little wider gap in the middle of my buttonhole. And so that's where I can come in here and I can adjust these to be a narrow gap. I might be doing children's clothes and have very thin buttons. Maybe I'm doing a standard button or maybe I'm doing a, an extra thick button and I need that gap in the middle of my buttonhole to be super wide. So these are those options that I have right here and whatever I select and tell it, okay, that's gonna be my buttonhole. So I've told it I want a wide one, the setting is complete. Now, if I was tell it to sew, it would sew that entire buttonhole for me with that wider center gap. That's great, so we're not limited. I'm not trying to fight a button into a buttonhole or having to adjust a buttonhole length to accommodate a thicker button, which is what we actually used to have to do. And you can see right here in the middle of the display, it shows me that I've made that adjustment. So I don't have to go back over to the configuration screen to know what that adjustment is. It's right there on the screen for me. So I know I've got a standard button. I've made it extra wide with seven millimeters. I've given it a wide gap and my density of my stitching is standard. Now that density might be adjusted depending on the thread you're using. This is threaded up with 30, with 50 weight thread right now. So the button might be a little bit more separated and maybe I want it to be a little tighter. Maybe I'm using a heavier thread and want it to be a little looser. So that's when I would go in and adjust by stitch length. But this plate, I use this plate all the time, regardless of where my button is going. If I can use this for all of my buttonholes, you can too. It gives me great, perfect buttonholes every time. I'm not dragging the fabric. I am moving the entire buttonhole assembly. So what else comes with the machine? I've talked about some nice features here with us and people like to know what else comes with the machine. So I'm gonna switch my camera back while I talk about other options with the machine in just a second here, so bear with me. Because I wanna show you what I think is important with a new machine.
And by what I mean is important, I mean, when you're buying a new machine, what things should you consider? Besides the fact that you want to consider buying something that's a little bit more than what you would have otherwise wanted to purchase. There we go. Now I'm back in the frame. So can everyone see my extension table? I have a very nice extension table. This comes with the machine. How many of you work on larger projects? And the first thing you do is find out when you bought a new machine that it didn't have an extension table and that project is now falling off the edge. The extension table comes with our machine so that you don't have to worry about buying that extra. Extension tables can be anywhere from $75 to $150. Ours comes with the machine. That's pretty good. It's packaged in the box and it's a good size. Now, we're talking about sewing, but you know what? The extension table is also good for... free motion quilting with my rings. I have room to move to do free motion quilting or thread painting. So that table is not just for the sewers. It's for the crafters and the quilters as well. The machine also comes with a knee lift. There are people who like to use the knee lift. We have a knee lift interface in the front of the machine right here. That comes with it. It's not an extra that you have to go buy. I've never needed to use a knee lift. I never got used to using it, but I know several people who like the knee lift it keeps their hands free. And sometimes people are doing some specialty work and having their hands free to control their fabric is a big important feature. So that knee lift becomes just as important to them as say the walking foot might to you or me. The other nice things that we have with our machines besides our foot control, our thread racks, our nice tables is our beautiful display. Now you saw some of the things in our display, but the display also covers our touchpad. So the only two adjustment knobs are those two knobs right here. Everything else is done by the touch pads. Yes, you can wipe the touch pads off. Kids come up, they touch it with their dirty fingers. You know what? It's not that big of a deal. You can wipe it off and keep it clean. The other feature on our machines are nice, simple, exposed buttons here across the front that allow you to access the thread cutter, raise and lower the presser foot, and do needle up, needle down. But what good is that if I can't use my start-stop button? We have a start-stop button built into the machine as well. You simply unplug the foot control and your start stop button becomes active. It's an either or situation so that you don't accidentally hit the button when the foot control is plugged in and the machine starts to run. It has to be one or the other. It's a nice safety feature. I find that some people like, some people don't like it. It just depends on what they're used to. But after a while, they do find it to be very handy to have. So that start stop button is a, is a nice feature to have. It also has speed control up here, which you have to have when you have a start stop. Otherwise, how do you tell the machine how fast? A lot of people that like to do thread painting or quilting, they like using the start stop button. They don't have to put their foot on the pedal and hold it down. They can hit the start stop button. The machine will run at a predetermined speed that they're comfortable at and do their thread painting or their free motion quilting. Nice features to have. But we also like needle threaders. And our needle threader is not one of those pop through ones. It's a very calm one. When your needle's in the right position, it will just pivot into position, grab the thread and pull it through. It's very nice to have. Most needles work with a needle threader, except there are needles that will not. So if you're using a size 60 or 65 needle, a needle threader is not designed to work with the smaller needles. Remember, the needle threader has a stylus that's coming through the eye of the needle and it's needing to grab a loop of thread and pull it back through. That eye of the needle on a 60 or 65 size needle is way too small for the stylus to come through and grab anything and pull it back through. So remember, a size 70 is as small as you want to use your needle threader with. And even then, depending on the thread you're using, you might find that it's a little tuggy on it, so you might want to be careful. But it's still very convenient to use. I use mine all the time. Remember, I'm lazy. I like the toys on my machine so that it makes it easier to work with. So we've talked about all the features that are important to us, and we talked about having access to stitch patterns on our panel and being able to clean our panel and keep it nice and simple, clean, easy to use. But what about maintenance on our machine? Maintenance on our machine is actually very simple. I'm going to even come with oil for you. People are like, what? There's no oil in the, in the, in the machine. There are lubricants in the machine. The lubricants need to be refreshed when you have it serviced at a regular interval by your Juki authorized dealer. The only thing you need to really concentrate on is keeping the lint out of the area of the bobbin case and the lint up in this area where the needle is because it's going to draft up and stick to the needle bar. 
If you do a lot of things with minky or things or fabrics that have a lot of lint just by stitching on them or that really fray off from cutting, you're going to find that that lint is going to build up rather quickly and you're going to find that your maintenance is going to be a little bit more intense than normal because of that lint buildup. And don't be afraid to take the two screws out and do your lint cleaning in there. But remember, when you take the screws out, you want to be in zigzag mode. There's a sensor underneath there, and you don't want to be against the sensor to take the plate off. So you want to be in zigzag mode when you're doing your maintenance on the machine. It's very simple. You can lift the bobbin case out, and you can dust inside. Don't be one of those people that you take it into the service center, and he opens it up, and he finds carpeting inside there. We all think that's felt and funny, but it's not really. So, Trisha, you still around with me? I sure am. You got any questions for me I can answer, or... Did I miss we something that you felt one. was important? Yeah. Um, I'm showing that Susan was asking for some clarification on what the heel switch does. Okay. Great question. The heel switch, I got a better image for you. It's two parts. So to make it run or to activate one of seven options, or you can turn it off. Now, those seven options are programmable on the machine, and you pick whichever one you want for the project you're working on. For today's example, I set it to reverse. That way I could sew down. When I stop, I hit the reverse. It did that lock stitch at the end and cut the thread for me. But I might not want it to do reverse. I might want it just to give me a raise and lower of my presser foot. So I can program that to the heel switch as well. Now, there is a, a little bit of, of change when you're using our foot control because of the heel switch. And I'm sure a lot of people, I had this problem 12 years ago when this first, foot first came out. I want to keep my heel on the floor. Well, if I put my heel on the floor, guess what I'm going to trigger? I'm going to trigger that back switch. So you want to get your foot up on the pedal and that eliminates accidentally rocking back because now the concentration is the ball of your foot is here and that's where you're going to push down to make the machine run. You're going to have a little thought process and a little bit more concentration mm -hmm. to rock your heel back to make it cut or needle up, needle down or whatever function you've got it programmed to. So this foot control is not something new. We've had this for over a decade. And it took me a little while to get used to it. But now I like this foot control a lot. In fact, I've used it on my other machine, which has a different style of foot control. But I got used to this one, and this is the one I prefer. Really Any other questions have we have? Learning curve, but it is pretty awesome. Once you get used to it, it's worth it. <laughs> yep, certainly is. Well, I think you had answered all the questions. Um, we had a lot of people saying, wow, bells and whistles, this machine covers it all. So very cool. I do like that it's geared towards all types of sewists. So very awesome. It does. So, yep. Would you like to stick around while we give away the awesome quilters ring like you did? <laughs> sure. I'd be happy to. Awesome. Let's go ahead and pick our winner. Let's see who the lucky winner is. Oh, we need some music. We said we were going to get music. Yay. <laughs> Sandra Phillip, congratulations. Yay. Awesome. Congratulations. Well, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much, Tim, and we will see you next time. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good one. Awesome. It's always a pleasure to have Tim on with us. He does such a great job demonstrating the awesome Juki machines. So let's take a look and see... We had seen lots of comments say great pricing on that. So let me show you what that great pricing is. So we have the Juki DX2000 QVP. This is the computerized sewing machine. As he had mentioned, it's great for quilters, garment sewers, crafters. It covers all the gamut. It has an MSRP of $1,999, and it is on sale for $1,599. Keep in mind that we do have financing available. You are welcome to give our customer service a call, and they can help you out. And they'll get you that special event pricing because it's going to be even lower than what I displayed. Just a reminder, because we cannot pack a demonstration of every single machine that we offer on our website, you are more than welcome to give our customer service a call on a machine that you've been looking at. They will be extending customers, or excuse me, they will be extending the special event pricing to any machine that we offer on our website. So super excited about that. 
But this is a one day event, so you have to call before 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's when the phones go cold. So let's talk about how to claim your prize. We are going to have you click on, let me, let me click on, there we go. We have link, link tree forward slash sewing parts online. Just click claim your prize, fill up that form. And from there, it's about one to two weeks to send you your item. You have seven days to claim your prize. So please make sure to do that as soon as possible. So you get your prize. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look and see what we have in store. Uh, we are going to be showing a little video, correct, Brian? We're going to show how to make a t-shirt? That is correct. I finally found the video. <laughs> we found the video. So before we were talking about sharing uh, how to make a t-shirt with Chelsea Swindle, as she so seems, we found it. So we are going to share that before our next guest comes on. So if you want to go ahead and pull that up, Brian, we can see how to sew a t-shirt with some amazing guest, machines. We have a special guest, Chelsea Swindle with She So Seems. Hey everybody. She's gonna show us how to make a t-shirt. I can't wait to show you this t-shirt. It's really easy and really fun. Let's get started. I'm making this one for my son. He's a size 3T and this pattern is available on their website in both adult and child sizes. So go and get you one. There's five main pieces to this pattern. We've got a front piece, a back piece, two sleeves, and then you've got your neckband. I've already cut the pieces out and I wanna give you just a quick tip before we jump into this project. When you start sewing a front and a back and sleeves and you get everything sort of in the mix, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the front piece and the back piece. My little hack for this is I take just a little wonder clip and I pin it right to the middle center of my front piece. The reason I do that is because I'm not gonna be sewing in this middle section at all during the project, but it's a quick and easy way for me to remember which is the front and which is the back of my shirt. If you really wanna know the difference, the quick and easy way to tell is usually on the front of a t-shirt, the neck is going to scoop a little bit and on the back of a t-shirt, it's going to be a little bit higher. But if that's something that's a little difficult for you to keep track of and you're just beginning sewing, just clip the front and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. The first step of this project is we're going to take our front piece and our back piece at the shoulder seams and I'm just going to clip them with wonder clips. I prefer to use wonder clips when I'm sewing on my serger because if you cut through a pin with your knives and your needles, first of all, it could break your knives and your needles, but second, it could be dangerous if that comes up into your eye or in your face. So I recommend that you stick with clips when you're sewing on a serger. Just a quick note, I'm gonna be doing this entire project on my serger and my cover stitch machine. But if you don't have those items in your sewing space, it's no problem. You can do this entire project using a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Just make sure that you use a ballpoint needle when you're sewing knits. So I'm gonna load my fabric right into my serger. I'm using a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this project. I'm gonna sew right across these shoulder seams. As you can see, we're now connected right at the shoulder seam. So the next step is we're going to move on to our sleeves. So we're going to be putting a little memory hem into each of our sleeves. And what that is, is we're going to fold the fabric up with the length of our seam allowance, which for this project is one half of an inch. And then you're just going to lightly press it. So for knit fabrics, especially this double brush poly that I'm using, I keep my iron at a very low setting. It really does the job even without a whole lot of heat. So again, we're going to use the half inch measurement and I just make sure that it's marked the whole way across. You can finger press this type of fabric down pretty well or just leave this on the end so that you know that it's marked well. Take your iron and just lightly press that little section. And that's creating a memory in the fabric so it will be folded at an accurate measurement all the way across when we go to our cover stitch machine, which is the next step of the project. So when you cover stitch, you're actually gonna be doing it sort of on the blind, which makes it just a little bit interesting when you're first learning how to do it. So the way that that memory hem is gonna come in handy here is I've got that marked very well on this side of the fabric. And when I cover stitch it, I'm actually gonna be cover stitching it from the right side of the fabric. When a cover stitch goes into a garment, the top side is gonna be just usually two to three parallel lines, which is the pretty side. And then the back side is gonna be where you have sort of the knit look of your thread. I've got this all loaded up and ready to go. So let's take off and see how it goes. Just make sure you take your time when you're cover stitching, serging, really any type of sewing, you need to take your time. Watch your measurements, keep an eyeball on where your fabric is lining up on your presser foot so that you have a nice even hem going in the whole way across. 
as you can see, we've got a beautiful little three line cover stitch on the front side, and then it caught my hem on the back side, and it looks nice and neat. So we're just gonna repeat that for sleeve number two. Make sure when you're cover stitching that you don't pull on your fabric because that will create bubbling along your hem. Just let your feed dogs and your machine do the work for you. All right, it's time to attach the sleeve to the shirt. Now, the way that I like to do this, if you are just beginning sewing and its sleeves make you feel a little nervous because if you look at this, it doesn't look like it's gonna fit, right? So the way that I like to think through this is lay your sleeve out with the garment the way that it's going to look when the garment is sewn. Right now, you can see like if these were attached, this would be a sleeve on a shirt. So what I'm gonna do is lay this out. I marked my center point and I'm gonna match that up just by turning it this way onto my garment. And that's my starting point. I'm going to start by clipping right in that spot. The next step is to just work your way down one side and then work your way down the other side with your clips. You'll be surprised, it's almost magic how the sleeve fits right into that armhole. So I've got one side done and now I'm gonna work down the other side. Once you have these matched up, it's time to serge that seam. So just pick up your piece and you're gonna start at one end and load it into your serger and just go ahead and use the same seam allowance that you've been using for the project. Okay, we've got one sleeve attached. Now it's time to sew our other sleeve. We've got our sleeves attached to our garment now. The next step is to sew your side seams and your underarm seams. So to do that, we're gonna start by matching up the edges of our sleeves using Wonder Clips again. And we're gonna nest our seams at this point. What that means is we're going to put one seam going this way and one seam going the opposite direction. It helps the fabric to lay flat right into the groove of the seam below it. The next step is to sew down our side seams. Now listen up because this can be a little tricky. When you stack these two sleeves together that have the memory hem already built into them, that's a lot of fabric to try and keep matched up. So the way that I like to begin this serve is by lifting my presser foot, lifting my knives and my needles, and sliding this section in as far as I possibly can to make sure that those two edges stay even. Another quick tip for this is to clip it on the outside of your sleeve. That will help keep those fabrics lined up as you start to sew. When you get to those nested seams, make sure you realign things and hold on to that seam outside of your presser foot as it goes through, just to keep things nice and steady. At the corner, you'll turn just a little bit and then keep going. Here's a quick tip for when you finish a serged seam, but it's like an underarm seam where it could be visible to the world. We wanna finish that thread out so that it doesn't come unraveled and so that it doesn't stick out with its little threads once you cut it. So what I like to do is take an embroidery needle with a large eye and I load my thread into the needle and all I'm gonna do is sew it right back into the serged threads. Then you're just gonna trim it down, and when you turn it out, you'll see that everything matches up beautifully and you have no threads flying away at the seam. As you can see, we've got our sleeves on. Now it's time to attach our neckband. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to turn your shirt right side out and go ahead and pick up the neckband piece that you cut when you first cut your pattern. The first step of this is we need to create a circle because right now it's just a long piece of fabric. So what I'm gonna do is just sew a quick seam right across this short end and that's gonna create a circle for me. Our next step is we're going to attach our neckband to our shirt. And to do this, we need to talk about quarter points. So what is a quarter point exactly? Well, basically all we're doing is we're going to fold the neckband in half so the wrong sides are touching and the right side is facing out. And I'm gonna start where my seam is and just let it hang from my finger. And that's gonna tell me exactly where my first quarter point is going. And I'm gonna mark it with a clip. Let that hang from your finger and pull down on it and that's going to give you your second quarter point. After that, hang it from your finger again from this middle part. Make sure your fabrics are even and match up your two clips. This is going to be your third quarter point. 
and then easy peasy, your last quarter point is right at the bottom. Why do we do this? This circle that makes up my shirt neckband is actually bigger than the circle that makes up my neckband that I'm attaching. What that means is when I attach my neckband, I'm going to have to stretch it a little bit to make it fit the shirt. And what that creates is a bit of a cinch right around your collar so that it pulls in like a shirt should. What we also need to do then is mark our quarter points on our shirt. I like to use my shoulder seams to match up first and that'll tell me where my two quarter points on the front and back are. Then I'm gonna match my front and back clips together and clip it on the sides. Now, this is not going to be where your shoulder seam is usually, so don't just assume that your shoulder seam is going to make up a quarter point, because that will not evenly distribute your stretch across the whole neckline. Once we've got the quarter points marked on our shirt and our neckband, all we have to do is match them up. So this is when that clip in the front comes in really handy because I know exactly where the front of my shirt is. I'm gonna pick it up by the back clip. This is my back of my my shirt and I'm going to match that with the seam that makes up the back of my neckband. So we're going to match those two clips up, remove one clip, and then clip it all together with one clip. Work your way around the neckband and do that for the other three quarter points. Now that we've got our quarter points all marked and all connected, it's time to serge that neckband. Make sure you're following your seam allowance that was set for the project, and the one thing I need you to do when you do this is commit to your measurement. So when you're sewing around a neckband, don't change it up. Make sure your eye is straight on that lined up part and that you stick with it the whole way around. Otherwise, you'll have a neckband that has a narrow part and then a wide part, and it can just look like a mess. So make sure you commit to your measurement. I know I said earlier not to pull on your knits, but in this case, we have to pull on that neckband just a little bit to make sure that it's fitting within each quarter point. And remember that we mark our quarter points because that's going to evenly distribute the stretch between each of those clips so that we have a nice, even and smooth neckband all the way around our shirt. Remember at this part, when you have a nice long tail from your serged threads that you wanna sew those back in using my embroidery needle method. You just load it into the embroidery needle and pull your threads through and then sew them back into your serged stitches, just like that. Let's see how this neckband turned out. Did I commit to my measurement? This is looking pretty good. I think it's turning out cute. We're down to our last step, y'all. We just have to hem the bottom. So let's take it over to the ironing board and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna use my iron to press this hem up one half of an inch all the way around, and then we'll take it back to our cover stitch machine, run it through, and then we will be done. You wanna make sure that when you're pressing that you're using an even measurement all the way around your garment. Because remember, when you go to cover stitch this, you're gonna be cover stitching it from the right side of your fabric, which means that you won't be able to see if your measurements are perfect or not, which could create kind of a wonky looking hem. That's when these seam gauges come in so handy. They have every measurement that you could think of and it tells you exactly where it falls on the gauge. I love this tool in my sewing room. Now that our seam is pressed up nice and neat, let's cover stitch. Now I'm just gonna run a quick cover stitch around the edge of my garment. And remember, commit to your measurement. If your fabric is running right along the edge of your presser foot for this step, let it do that for the whole way around so it's nice and even. The last step is to just trim any little threads that may be sticking out from anywhere in your project. And also make sure that you go back through and double check that all of your seams were caught perfectly with the machines that you were using and that you have cleaned up any little loose strays that are flying around. Ready for the big reveal? There you have it, it's a t-shirt. I think this is gonna look really cute on my son. I can't wait for him to try it on. does such a great job demonstrating how to make things. She does a t-shirt so well. She makes it look so easy. I was noticing in the comments where they're like, she makes it look so simple. 
She sure does. <laughs> I made a blouse last weekend and believe me, it, it took a little bit longer than what that did. <laughs> but anywho, it is a lot of fun. She was using the Baby Lock Celebrate, which is a wonderful serger. And she was also using the Janome 1000 CPX cover stitch machine. So both fabulous machines. So we are super excited for the next segment. We are going to have Baby Lock edu educator Melinda Stevenson come and show us the Baby Lock Altair. Super excited about this. And there are a couple really special goodies that we're going to show you at the end about the pricing and what's included with that machine. So you're going to want to keep an eye on that. But before we pull up Melinda, I just want to pop up our giveaway. So at the end of the segment, we are going to be giving away a $100 Sewing Parts Online gift card. Remember to keep an eye out for the secret word. We'll pop that up on the screen at any point during Melinda's segment. And um, you'll just put that in the comment and we will select the winner at the end. So Ryan, are you ready to pull Melinda up? I think we are. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Melinda. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Very good. And I just need to take a moment to say thank you so much for coming on today, everybody. So just if you were with us this morning, we had showed that Richard Tharp was going to be joining us and he had some internet issues. And Melinda so graciously um, is coming on to help us out. So thank you, Melinda. We appreciate thank you, Melinda. it. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here, you guys. Thank you so much for having me. I have some pretty cool things to show you guys. So I'm excited. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll let you take it away because there's a lot right. to show on the Baby Lock Altair. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. So I love the Baby Lock Altair. Um, it's a great sewing machine and embroiderer machine, and it's perfect whether you're a beginning sewer or embroiderer or whether you're an advanced sewer or embroiderer. And you guys are going to have to forgive me. I'm having to um, present this from my kitchen because my internet wasn't working in my sewing room. So here we are in my kitchen and it might be a little echoey and I apologize for that. But first, let me take you over to the machine, things that it does. And so what I'm going to do is for the first half of the show, I'm going to give you my five favorite things about the embroidery side of the machine. And then for the second half of the show, I'm going to give you my five favorite things about the sewing side of the machine. This machine does all sorts of wonderful things. So give me just a second to switch cameras and I will see you over there at the machine. Okay. All right. So here we are at the sewing at the at the um, Altair machine. And you can see first, let me move this around so that you can actually see how big this machine is, okay? Because the very first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is how big the machine is. The, the sheer size of not only, let me, I'm going to put this on the sewing so that you can kind of see this. Okay. Look at that bed. All right. That's so big. And so you can leave that on there when you're doing your sewing. This machine has 11.25 inches between the needle and the machine head so that you can fit any size quilt in there whenever you're, you know, using the machine as a quilting machine. The other thing that's pretty fantastic about this machine is this LCD screen, which is 10.1 inches. And I'm not sure if you can get a sense of how big that is. It's like, a, um, like, a, like an iPad, okay? It's about the size of an iPad. And honestly, it works very much like an iPad. The other thing that I love about the largeness and bigness of this machine is that it comes with this ginormous hoop, okay? And this is a 14 by 9 inch hoop. Oh, it's kind of hard to see it, isn't it? It's so big, it's hard to get it on the camera. I've got to pull my camera way up. So that's 14 inches by 9 and a half inches. And you can see these kind of funny little designs up here. That's for our really cool um app that we have that enables you to perfectly position your embroidery and i'll show you how that works in just a little bit okay but let's just get back to all the my favorite thing number one which is size and we're talking we've talked about the size of the screen we've talked about the size of the machine bed now let's talk about the sheer number of designs on this machine there are 494 embroidery designs on this machine so you really never run out of design. So let's take a look at some of these designs. So you can see right here, sewing, embroidery, IQ designer. And we're gonna talk about that IQ designer in just a few minutes. 
So here's the embroidery side. All right, so I'm going to, I've just started the machine, so it's gonna give me just a second. It's gotta adjust itself so that it can embroider perfectly. So you can see that we have first the exclusive designs, and these are designs that are available only in baby lock machines. Okay, let me pull it back a little bit so that you can see all of this. I want to make sure you can see the top and the bottom of the screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see that, so each of these has several designs in it. These are lovely designs, but let me show you what happens whenever you touch one of these designs. The machine tells you all sorts of really cool things. So let's just pull out this design right here, okay? So what this tells us is that it's 7.59 inches high, 7.72 inches wide. Okay, so you have an idea there of what hoop you can use it in, right? So our four hoops that come with the machine are the 14 inch by nine and a half, and then we have a wonderful nine and a half by nine and a half inch sheet that is great for quilting, all right? So look at this one, and you can kind of see, I'm giving you an eight by, you can see a piece of paper, what a piece of paper looks like, and I'm sorry, the, the camera here. Can you see that? Oh dear, that's not what I want you to see. The hoop. These hoops are so big it's hard to fit them in the camera. Okay, nine and a half by nine and a half is what that is. So one of the four hoops that come with the machine is the nine and a half by nine and a half. All right, so let's go back to the screen so we know that that's what it's going to fit in. The screen also tells us exactly how many minutes it's going to take to stitch out this design. It's also going to give us a choice of background. So if I'm going to embroider this on white fabric, then I have this white background. But let's say I want to embroider it on a medium color fabric, and we can see how the design looks on that. Or what about if I'm going to um, put it on a black fabric? Oh, yeah, see, that's not going to work on black. So let's go back to the white. I know that I'm going to have to use a light colored fabric. It tells me all of the different colors. It also tells me how many minutes each color is going to take, okay? All right, so let's go back. Let's just say that, that um, and also the other thing this does is this lets me flip it. So if I wanna flip it to, if I wanna make two of them, right, and put one flip to the left and one flip to the right, then I can do like a cute wall hanging. Okay, so let's say we're gonna set this. Once I put it into my embroidery screen, we have a ton of different choices that we can make, okay? So let's, let me pull that back again so that you can see the entire screen. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So you can see up here that this is going to show me the design inside the hoop. So let's see what this looks like inside of my hoop. All right, that's the design inside of the nine and a half by 14 inch hoop. But I like to use the hoop size that is closest to the size of the design. So let's go down to the nine and a half by nine and a half, and that's going to be perfect. This would be a great quilt square, wouldn't it? And I'm going to show you how you can take this design into IQ Designer, and you can actually quilt around um, the design. So the other thing this is going to show us is it's going to show us how quickly it stitches, okay? So watch, watch the um, screen so that you can see what stitches first, what stitches second. I love that. I think that's so cool. Okay, good. And then if you want to look at the stitches a little bit more closely, you can enlarge it, and then you get a sense of what type of stitches we have. So you've got satin stitches over here. You've got fill stitches right here. These are satin stitches and some more fill stitches. All right, so let's go back. Okay, also on this screen, you can see that what we have selected, okay, is 7.59 by 7.72. Now, if we were to choose and add another design, it would show us the size of whatever design is selected in that red box, and that's very helpful, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is, you, again, you can enlarge it. So if you want to see it a little bit bigger, see up close, I mean, you can go all the way up to 200%, okay? And then let's look at some of these cool editing features, okay? So let's start right here, okay? 
And the first thing that I want to talk about is size. Okay, size is a really important factor um, whenever the size of the design becomes a very important factor. And also, it's real super important. I just put my microphone in the way. Wait just a second. Let's move it around. It's super important that when you resize a design, that you resize that design in a way that does not make the stitches all funky. Okay, so if you use this special built-in stitch regulator in right here, what this is going to do is it's going to resize and it's going to also increase or decrease the stitches in that will make the um, design stitch out absolutely perfectly. Okay, so let's look at this. Look, let's look at how big you can make this design. You can go up like 200 percent. Okay, and then at the same on this on the making it smaller side, you can make it go down. 60%. Okay, so let's say you wanted to fit this into a five by seven inch hoop instead of that nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. You've reduced it and you know that the stitches are going to still look good because you've used the side of the um, sizing that enables the stitches to change. So you can see now we've got 4.56 by 4.63. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, all right, so let's look at some other things that we can do in editing. You can see right here that you can move it up, you can move it down, <laughs> sideways, and then if you just want to center it again, you just press the center right there. Okay, so let's touch it, okay? The other thing you can do, of course, is rotate it. Not that we need to rotate this, but let's say that you wanted to, that you had hooped something and you'd hooped it sideways. You can always rotate it so that it'll be right there. Okay, all right, so let's let's go back and again, you can center your design right here. Okay, now let's look at some of the other editing features. This one right here is pretty cool, but this design is kind of big. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do this. You can make an actual border here. Okay, let's go. Um, let's let's go out of this and let's get a smaller design. And let's look at how that border feature works. Okay, so I'm going back to embroidery and look at all these choices again. We've got all these flowers. I like this little gnome. He's pretty cute. Let's let's play with this gnome for a little bit. Okay. All right. So you can see he's he's kind of tiny. He's 3.69 by 1.90. It takes about 15 minutes to stitch him out. And um, you can see these are all the colors, the, the color changes that we're going to do. So let's touch set on this. Now let's go into our edit. And let's make him, let's make him smaller. And let's use the resize key that actually changes the stitches. And the way you know that is it's got that little zigzag stitch right there. Okay. And that tells you that it's resizing not just the design, but also the stitches. So let's make him smaller. Okay. There's our little gnome. All right. Now I'm going to touch. Okay. I'm going to touch this right here. OK, now this is a really, really cool tool because you can actually make a border out of any design that is in this machine. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this little guy. OK, uh oh, so that tells me that I can't add any more above. Let's see if we can add some below. Oh, yeah. OK, now let's say that we want to make a square. Uh oh, done like that. OK, so we're going to move it over. Let's let's make let's add. Uh oh, doesn't like that either. Okay, if you're if you're trying to do too much, it won't let you do it. Okay, so let's um, whenever you stitch this out, the cool thing about this is that whereas you could have like eight thread changes, eight thread changes, eight thread changes, what the machine does is that it puts all the thread changes together so that you'll only have eight total thread changes for this entire um, design. I love that. I think that's really fun. Okay, let me, let's, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to undo all of that. So look at this cool undo button. You see that undo button right there? If you mess things up and you don't like the way it looks, all you got to do is touch your undo button and it's, it's undone. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do and let's, is you can change the density. So we've made this guy really small. And let's let's get our uh, magnifier a little bit so that we can see this a little bit better. OK, so we've made this guy really small 
And what we wanted, let's say we want to um, put this guy on a T-shirt. So in order to put him on a T-shirt, we don't want it to like, you know, bunch up. And so we want to reduce the density. So all we have to do is reduce the density. OK, on the other hand, if we're putting it on um, a woven fabric, a, a very tightly woven fabric, then we can increase that density. OK. And you can see how he's he's filled in a little bit more. OK. All right. Let's touch OK here and then let's touch our edit screen again. And let's look at some of the other features that we have. Let's say that we just want to copy the guy. OK. And we just want to put him over here, all right? And maybe we want to copy him again and give him a, a brother, okay? So now we have triplets. So that's just the copy command. Let's delete that. I'm going to undo that, undo that. Okay, one more, okay? Now, what if you think he's so cute that you just, you, <laughs> you think that you might want to make an applique out of this guy? So here we go, making an applique out of him. All right, now, so now we've created an applique and whenever you actually stitch this out, it's going to show you how to make the applique. So let's go all the way down here. We're going to go forward several colors. Or let's go backwards because it's easier to go backwards. Okay, so you can see after you've stitched the guy out, you're going to create an applique. So there's your... Um, cut cut line all right and then there's so you're going to take this and put wherever you want to put this on right you're going to put it in your hoop and that's going to be your outline where you're going to put your little guy and then there's your satin stitches okay so you it's it's super easy to make an applique out of any design that is built into this machine okay so let's go back i'm going to um return i'm going to undo the little applique Okay, so because there's one more thing I want to show with you with this guy. Okay, so and that is how easy it is to change colors, right? So I'm going to make him bigger because I, I think this guy is really cute and I want to turn him into Santa Claus. Okay, so he's got that little, that little beard, those little cheeks. I want to give him like a little red button nose and I want to make everything on here red. So I'm going to touch OK and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to touch my thread colors, okay? Now, there are a couple of things that we can do in this color visualizer, okay? So you can, you can manually change his color. So let's say that I'm going to change his little shoes and I'm gonna make them red. I mean, his little pants and make them red and make everything red. Let's say I'm just gonna make everything red. Okay, all right, here we go. Make his little shoes red, okay. But let's say that I just kind of want to see what he looks like in different colors. OK, so I'm going to touch the color visualizer and I'm going to I'm going to touch random and then I'm going to choose. I'm going to touch manual and then I'm going to choose the colors that I want him to be. OK, and I'm just going to choose all these reds and let's see what happens. OK, so I'm going to touch OK. OK, here's my little guy in a bunch of reds. That looks awful. OK, so I'm going to cancel that. That looks terrible. OK, but let's say that I, let, let me let the machine do it on its own. OK, so watch this. This is lit, very much fun whenever you're decorating your house. OK, so let me show you this right here. Let me go back home and I want to show you a fun one. So let's say that the colors in your house are light green and light blue. And you want to find a design that will go in your living room that is light blue and um, light green. All right. So let's go to let's go to let's see. Not, not OK. Let's go to novelty. OK. So this is just another some of the built in designs. Um, I love the, the library one, the books one. But let's look at this hope one. OK. Now. I love, I love that saying, right? I love hope, but my colors are light green and light blue, and that does not look so good, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my color visualizer, and I'm going to ask it to make it light blue and light green. So let's go right in here, and in my color visualizer, I'm going to choose random again, 
I'm going to choose manual. And this time I'm going to go to a light blue. I'm going to go to this sort of sea blue and then this sea green. Okay, that might be too close together. Let's see. Let's go there. Okay. All right, now I'm going to touch OK. And see what it does? It gives me a few variations using those colors. Okay. Now, let's see. I think I like this one best. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? So now I can simply set. And if I want to um, do, you know, a set of pillows using another design, then I can do exactly the same thing. I can change my color palette based on the color scheme that I want in my bedroom or my living room, or if you're making a gift for somebody, um, it just makes it really easy. Okay. What about we want to take this same design and maybe we would like to, um, I don't know, let's put a, put a stippling around it. Okay. Well, we can do that a couple of ways. If I just go in and I touch this stippling, okay, then it's going to automatically put the stippling in, all right? Let's say that, um, you know, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I'm i okay with that. I don't love it, though. Um, I really would like a different kind of design around that. So I'm going to touch um, Cancel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over into my IQ Designer. And I'm going to choose my own um, region fills or type of stippling to go around my hope sign. So here, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to touch this little flower, okay? And then I'm going to look at it, make sure it's okay. And that looks, that looks very good. I like the way that looks. I'm going to put it in my memory. I'm going to, it says, recall from IQ Designer stamp pattern. And what this is doing is it's showing me where an IQ Designer, I'm going to be able to find this. So I'll go to IQ Designer, and then I'll look for this icon in IQ Designer. I'll touch that icon, and then I'll find my hope outline. So let's touch OK. And so I'm going to touch Add, and I'm going to touch IQ Designer. And then I'm going to look for that same icon, okay? All right, so here is the icon right there, okay? And now I'm going to look for that second. I'm going to make sure that y'all can see this. Let me back up just a little bit. So you've got the whole screen. Okay, then I'm going to find that original icon, and I'm going to touch that. And there's my hope. OK, so I'm going to touch hope. I'm going to touch OK. And then I'm going to choose a background fill. OK, so this right here, we're going to come back to IQ in just a few minutes. But right now, I just want to show you how to do the background fill or the stippling around any design in your embroidery side of your machine. So I'm going to touch this. And then I'm going to touch region fill. See, I could just choose a regular stippling design or I could choose this one. So that one, whenever we touch that, look what happens. OK, that's that's it shows us that we can select different designs. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to find a design that I think would look good around my hope. So let's see, how about, I, I always love flowers. So let me choose these roses to go around my hope. But I want to show you something else. This right here is, you can use this to make your own quilted fabric, which is really fun. Okay, but let me show you this. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's touch roses. And I'm going to touch, okay. And then I need to choose a color. I think I'll choose a light blue because um, that's sort of in my color palette. Maybe a light green. Either one of those. I'll touch the light blue. I'm going to touch OK. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this paint bucket because I want it to paint the entire design and not just a little bit of the design, okay? This right here literally allows you to paint like a paintbrush, but this fills in the entire design. So let's touch this. And then I'm just going to touch outline out of the design and it gives me that feel. So now to, it's very easy now to get from here to the embroidery screen because all you have to do is touch next. OK, and then there are some um, controls that we'll talk about in just a few minutes, but I'm going to touch preview. I'm going to touch OK. And give it a second to and then set and OK, and there's my design. Isn't that nice? So won't that look really pretty as a wall hanging or um, I don't know. It, I, I like the idea of a wall hanging. OK, so as a wall hanging, let's think about this. OK, I don't I mean, how could I make this into a wall hanging? Well, the cool thing is that I can create a wall hanging in IQ Designer. All I have to do is go into IQ Designer and create a square this size. And, I'll, and then all I have to do is after I have embroidered all of this, I'll lay a piece of fabric on top of my hoop and I'll stitch that square OK, and I'll leave a little opening in it so that I can flip it. And then I'll stitch some some um, ribbon on it and I'll have a wall hanging. All right. Super easy. I've made several that have welcome signs that have all sorts of um, Bible verses or um, poems or recipes. It's really fun to do that. OK, speaking of that, let's go now into our um, alphabets. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to, I like this enough. I think I'm going to save that. I'm going to put that in my memory, put that in my machine's memory. So now I know that I can always come back to that and stitch it out sometime at some point. All right. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. Okay. And now I want to show you um, kind of a really fun thing to do. Okay. Um, and that's something that we can do with alphabet, but also something that we can in order to get perfect placement. OK, so what we're what I'm going to show you how to use the alphabet first, but then I want to show you how we can get perfect placement using an app on our telephone, on our smartphones. That is a free download um, that enables you to see a picture of what you've hooped in the machine and enables you to position perfectly. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my alphabets and I'm going to go into the tiny print. OK, um, and I'm going to put initials on a man's shirt. OK, so I'm going to let's see, I'm going to do an H and then an S and then a G. OK, so I'm going to touch set. OK, now that's really tiny. Look how tiny that is. That's because I want it to go above a pocket. OK, just a, a little bitty um, initial above a pocket. Now, let me show you how easy it is to take a picture of your shirt. If you can take a picture with your smartphone and I know all of you use your smartphone to take pictures, but if you can take a picture with your smartphone, then you can absolutely use this app. So let me show you how it works. OK, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to hoop your fabric. So let me pull that up so that you can see where I hooped it. OK, here's my man's shirt that I hooped. OK. OK, so you can see that there's the pocket and, and I want, what I want to do is I want to embroider. I want it to come, I want the initials to go right above that pocket. OK, and it's kind of tricky to do that, right? It's not easy to get it perfectly straight, but that's what I want to do. I need to get it perfectly straight right above that pocket. OK, so all I have to do is get my smartphone. OK, and let me pull up the app so that you can see the app.
Melinda. Yes. Am I correct in saying that you have to have the specific hoop that has the little um, sensors on it? That Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. Do you see these little sensors right here? Those are the that's these are the hoops that come with the Altair. And if you use the hoops that come with the Altair, then you will be able to hoop this. And I've kept this one backwards just because I got in a hurry trying to get this ready. So give me just a second. Let's redo it. So you can see. You can see that all of the Altair hoops, and I'll show you this, this one also, all the Altair hoops have those funny little designs across the top. And what that does is that enables your app to read the design on your, um, and then transfer it to your machine, okay? So let's, let me give you, let me re-hoop this. And while you're rehooping that, I just want to clarify that this will enable to you to use the app, but you can also use other hoops. You're just not able to utilize the app with those hoops, correct? That is correct. And I do love my um, five by seven magnetic hoop that you can use with this machine. And it doesn't allow you to use the app, but that five by seven magnetic hoop is pretty awesome. As is the seven by 14. They're, they're, they're just, they change, they're life changing. Okay. All right. So I've hooped it. Let me just tighten it up a little bit. And then I'll show you what this app looks like. Okay. All right. All right. So it's this IQ positioning app. Okay. Right here. All right. So I'm going to touch the IQ positioning app. And then I'm going to photo frame for easy positioning and then what it's asking me to do is take a picture okay so I have to hold my device and then it holds three two one takes a picture and now it says send to the machine uh-oh okay let I have to let me let me do it again y'all um let me see if it's gonna, okay all right let's try one more time wait just a second let me do it over here Okay, so now it asks me to see, it. it's taken this picture, and it's asking me to send it to the machine. So I'm going to send it to the machine, and then what pops up on the machine is this. It says the image was sent from the mobile app. Do I want to update? And the answer is okay. Okay, so now it's asking me to attach the frame that I used in the image. So I'm going to attach the frame to my machine. And that's my little five by seven. Okay. Okay, so there's my five by seven. I've attached it to the machine. I'm going to touch OK. Okay. Lock down the frame. Okay, so look, look, now it shows on my screen. How about that, right? So let's touch edit, okay? And I'm gonna move my little HSJ up. And I'm gonna tilt it. I think I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. I mean, right there in the middle, let's see. I'm going to edit, and the wonderful thing about this rotate is that, can you see that? Am I showing you? Yeah, okay. So the wonderful thing about this rotate is I can rotate it a teeny tiny tip in increments of one degree or even increments of 0.1 degree. So I need to tilt it just a little bit because I think I've got it tilted just a little bit in my hoop, okay? All right, so now I am ready to embroider, but I also think I want to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, that's a little bit tiny, so I'm going to size it, and I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Yeah, there we go. At least we can see that. Okay, so I'm going to touch OK, and I'm going to touch embroidery, all right? And then I'm going to put a little stabilizer underneath it. And I'm doing a teeny tiny, as you can see. This is a teeny tiny um, embroidery here. 
And I'm doing something called floating. Okay. All right. And so you can watch it embroider. to see because the pop is kind of in the way. Okay, and there's my teeny tiny little border. Let me pull it out so that you can see it. All right, there it is. Right above. Okay. All right. So, Perfect placement with this machine. Absolutely perfect placement. Okay. All right. So, are there any questions at this point, Trish? We do have a couple questions here. Um, Sandy is asking, how big is the memory? Is there an external SD card or something to have the memory unlimited? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, we have a couple of, uh, well, actually, we I'll, sh I'll show you this in just a second, but um, there is plenty of memory in this machine, okay? Um, so you've got an X SD slot and you also have two flash drive slots, all right? Let me show you those, all right? All right, so there you have, you've got your flash drive slots and then your SD slot here, but the main thing is also you have the ability to um, you okay wait let me tell you the best part okay that's okay that's great that we have all that memory and you know that you can put into the machine but that's kind of like old school memory right that is that's like but you can transfer things wirelessly to this machine you can use your um palette 11 software um or you can use our new app that enables you to transfer wirelessly from your computer to the machine so Memory, therefore, is pretty much unlimited, okay? All right, do we have another question? We do. Tammy, first off, she has 550,000 embroidery <laughs> designs. <laughs> Whoa! <That's incredible. laughs> I love it. I, I assume this hilarious. machine is USB compatible. Yeah. You kind of showed it that is, already. Oh, yes, so it is incredible. definitely USB compatible. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. With that amount of embroidery designs, could you touch <laughs> on the design database, or excuse me, design yeah. database transfer? There we go. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You definitely want to use the design database transfer with that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that might be a record. That might be the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay. All right. Let me turn this light off so we can go back to the um, screen. Okay. So now um, that is, there's, I didn't have a chance to show you everything that you're, um, Oh, we're about to run out of time. I haven't gotten to sew inside. Okay. Trust me that there's some really cool things that you can do with the alphabet. Um, let me show you this really, really fast. Let me go over here at home. Okay. And let's go back to embroidery. All right. Gosh, I thought I was going to have so much time. Okay, here we go. And let's just say I decide that I want to write in this alphabet. But then I'm not really sure if I like that alphabet. And so what I'm going to do, ooh, turn this off. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to audition alphabets. All right, there's that one. Let's see. If it, oh, maybe it looks better like that. Maybe it looks better like that. Maybe it looks better like that. And let's, what about if I want to do the entire, okay? So let's go to edit. Let's go here. And now it's going to do the whole thing. Okay, so you can, you can change the script either on individual <laughs> or on the entire word, okay? So it's really fun to audition those alphabets. Okay, so I'm going to now move us over to the sewing side. Whew, I didn't really get to show you IQ Designer. I want to show you one more thing about IQ Designer. Melinda, 
Yes. Don't worry on the time. You're still fine. You can go up to three o'clock if you'd like. So you've got about 15 to 20 minutes if you'd like. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. Well, let me show because there's, there's so many things on this machine. It is so hard to, you know, show everything. Okay. All right. Let me show you this IQ design. This is really fun. Um, you can stitch on all sorts of fabrics with this machine. And one of the things that I really love to do is I love to stitch on leather. And let me show you this little in the hood leather bag I made. Actually, there are several that I made. But this one, this little bumblebee one, is one of my favorites. Okay? And that's all done on leather. It's all done in the hoop. It's a little zipped bag. All right? Now, all of these are IQ designer bags. Okay, and by IQ Designer, what I mean is that I brought these designs into IQ Designer um, from Adobe Illustrator, and then I used IQ Designer as a coloring book. Okay, this is another leather bag that I did, and that's using that region fills, the region fills that I showed you. That's just the region fill without anything um, above it or below it. Okay, and then this is just a design that's built into the machine. But I, what I want to do right now is I want to show you how much fun it is to make these bumblebees, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm an IQ designer, and it, it's like a coloring book, okay? IQ designer is a lot of fun. It's just like, it is just like a coloring book. So I apologize for that glare. Okay, so I'm going to touch line design, and then I'm going to touch... I think it's that one. It might not be that one, but let me see. Nope, not that one. Those are pretty cute, too. <laughs> they're really fun. Okay, there's so much fun to fill those in, I'm telling you. It's super, super, super fun. Uh, not quite as cute as the gnome, right? <laughs> not quite like that, right? Okay, I don't know what happened. Now. I've lost mine. My bumblebee. Okay, well, I'm going to show you with it. I'm just going to show you with it. We're all in this together because my bumblebee has disappeared. I might have accidentally erased it. All right, so I'm going to touch set. All right. And you can see right here, I've got this. And all I did, y'all, this is just, I took a picture of a coloring book, okay? I took a picture of a, um, oh, man, that glare is so bad. Okay. I took a picture of um, a page in a coloring book and transferred it, man, you can see, mm. okay, let me turn the light off, that might help, let's turn this light off, I love going into the settings, the settings will let you do all sorts of cool things, but I'm going to turn my light completely off, okay, now I'll see if you can see that a little bit better, is that any better at all? Maybe. That looks great. Okay, okay, so we're going to go into I'm going to touch OK. I'm going to touch Set. OK. Now, let's say that I just want to, now this is all already, this is going to be um, stitched, OK? The, these stitches are already ready. But let's say that I want to make the all, I don't know, I'm back to blue and green, OK? So but how about purple and pink? Let's, go, let's do purple and pink. I didn't mean to hit that. So I'm going to go into my region fills, and I'm just going to do the um, regular fill, okay? And I'm going to touch pink, all right? So here's my pink, and now what I'm going to do is touch my paint can, and then I'm going to make not the whole thing. I didn't want to do that. Uh-oh, okay. I want to do my letters pink. That was not going to let me do it. That means that there's a hole in one of these lines. And so what you have to do is you have to blow it up and find where the hole is. Okay, but let's let's go back. Let's go back. Make it smaller. Okay. Okay. And then let's say that we want to color these flowers, I don't know, purple. Okay. The point is, is that you can go in here and you can make these any color that you want, okay? And what you're doing is you're actually creating stitches in here. All right, so let's go, let's go right here and let's do another one. So there's, there's, we can make those stitches like that. Let's do the outside of the all and see if that helps us. Whoops, did it again. Let me blow it up and see if I can get the outside. There we go. Maybe not. Nope. So... 
IT designer is um, very picky about if there's a hole in your design, then it's going to um, color the entire the entire thing. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense or not. But here, let's color this little flower. Now, imagine doing this to the entire design. Okay, I'm going to touch next, and then what you're going to see is that you've got stitches in on your design already. Now, this is kind of a complicated design. And so the stitches are, um, let's pull it up, yeah. So you can see it's stitching out. Now, these are satin stitches, and you can change that. Instead of satin stitches, you could make it, um, uh, you know, just like a bean stitch. But you see that those are all stitches, okay? And if we want to put that into our memory, then we can do that. But y'all, it's so much fun to take designs in to IQ Designer and turn them into, you know, just beautiful designs like this. This was just a flower that that I took that I brought in from Adobe Illustrator and um, and then colored it in and gave and assigned different stitches. And the same thing with these little bumblebees. I just assigned different stitches to it and um, had and also in IQ Designer I made this the uh, design for this for the bag. So that's just another one of the many things that you can do in IQ Design. That's a class that I teach that's really fun is making those bags. Okay, let's go um, now home and let's touch okay. And now let's spend just a few minutes on the sewing side of this machine. Okay, and Trish, stop me whenever I run out of time, okay? I sure will. And I do have to ask, can you make sure to show the never miss automatic needle threader? Because I love that thing. <laughs> I know that it is it is it is such a wonderful thing. I so agree. Um give me just a second, okay? And I'll be sure to um let you know when time is up. So Okay, we're, okay. We're good and can you read can you read the chat, Trish? Um yeah, I can double check and see if we have any that, um, the private chat. The, yeah, so can can you read the private chat to Brian? Oh uh Okay. Okay. So let's look at it. Let's have a look at um, first what's so wonderful about the sewing side of the machine. Okay. So 771 sewing stitches. Okay. I mean, that's outrageous. Okay. That is a lot of sewing stitches. I'm not sure I could ever use all those stitches in my lifetime, but I could sure have a good time trying. Um, one of the other things about this machine is that it has a needle beam that enables you to sew straight stitches, okay? So let me show you kind of what that looks like whenever you have fabric beneath it. Now, I don't have my, um, let me, it's asking me to remove my LED pointer, so let me get this off. And that's another fun thing. So I, th that's something I didn't mention on this is there's actually a light on this on the um, so on your W plus embroidery foot there's a light a, a beam of light that shows you the very center of your designs okay and so that's really that's just really something that is is fun to have a look at okay but before I do this let me let me go over here and show you the many stitches. And after I show you the mini stitches, I'm going to show you that that um, needle beam. But it, that is if we have enough time. Okay. All right. So here we go right here. Several of the things that are really fun are that you've got all sorts of control over your machine. So the first thing that you can control is the needle beam. Okay. And you can make that needle beam. Can you see that? How bright that is? Okay. Yep. We can see it. And so what you can do with that needle beam is you can move it over so that you've got a quarter inch, a perfect quarter inch seam. So you put the needle beam on the edge of your fabric and you'll know always that you're stitching a perfect quarter inch seam. You can put the needle beam right where the needle is and that way you can just sew, you know, straight, sew a straight fabric. Or you can put the needle beam a quarter inch to the left of your needle if you need to sew a quarter inch seam on that side. So this is really wonderful for doing decorative stitches and um, for just sewing straight. I mean, it's really incredibly helpful. 
So that's your needle bead. Now the other controls that you have here is that you have the control so that you see right up here, that little bitty, that's a back stitch. And what this does is it backs up and stitches three times, okay? And it kind of goes back and forward. In order to make it do that, what you want to do is you touch this and that makes it automatically stitch backwards and forwards when you begin stitching and when you end stitching, okay? Now this right here is showing you where your needle bean is. So this is my stitch line and this is my needle bean line. Okay, so let me move that back over, okay? Okay, so let me clarify that because I didn't make that very clear, All right? When you start stitching, with these, these stitches that have this little back thing, okay, there's one right there, and um, what it does is stitches backwards and forward when you begin your stitching, and then if you touch this at the end, then it will also secure your stitches by stitching back and forward, and then if you have this on, it'll automatically cut your stitches, okay? If you're sewing on a lightweight fabric, then you might want to use this one because instead of sewing backwards and forwards, this stabilizes your stitch by stitching in the same place three times, okay? So you would begin stitching, stitch three times in place, and then when you end, again, you're going to touch your um, this back, this reverse key, and what that's going to do is it's going to stitch three times at the end, straight in, and that way on your lightweight fabrics, then, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier, okay? All right, so the other thing that you can do is you can increase or decrease the length and width of your, of your stitches. All right, there's no width on this because this is a straight stitch, but you can increase your length, okay? You can decrease your length, all right? And it defaults, if you ever forget where it goes, it defaults right there on the black, okay? All right, some of the cool stitches as a machine has is it has something called directional stitching. All right, and what the machine does is it literally, this is great for sewing on patches because what the machine does is it sews up, it'll sew down, it'll sew side to side, okay? So you can put a patch on the bed of the machine and that machine will stitch this way and then it'll stitch this way, this way, and then this way. That is a really wonderful, um, um, part of this machine because that enables you to do patches on little bitty like on um, the inside of your pant leg if you want to put or on your shoulder or your sleeve or a small bag i've put patches on small bags before using this and also this is great for just stitching um bag handles on whenever you have to make that you know that square on bag handles that helps you do that really really easily okay so then you've got, of course, several buttonholes. Um, you've got, you know, several stitches. But one cool thing about this machine is, let's say I don't really know what this stitch is, okay? Well, I can actually go to this question mark at the top of my screen, okay? And if I touch pattern explanation, what that tells me is that that's the smocking stitch and that the smocking stitch requires the J foot on the machine. And it's for smocking and decorative stitching. So all of the stitches on this machine have a pattern explanation in case you're not sure what that stitch is used for, okay? And on that note, as you can see, the machine has built-in videos that will show you how to wind the bobbin, how to thread the machine, how to thread the needle, how to change your feet, and how to add the um, thread stand, okay? It'll tell you how to maintain, it'll tell you, it'll give you specific settings, it'll show you how to use different things, okay? How to use the positioning app. The videos are really very helpful if you're just learning how to use the machine. Okay, so let's go back. Another thing that's very helpful is the pivot feature. Okay, and so what that does is whenever you're, I don't know if you've ever gotten to the end of a, um, of a, if you're trying to sew a square, like for example, this square right here on this napkin, and when you're trying to turn, it's so nice to be able to just lift the um, presser foot a little bit and have that needle stay in and turn the machine, okay? 
And so that's what happens whenever you use that pivot. All right. Now let's go over to, let's spend a little time with the character and decorative stitches. Okay, so here we have our character and decorative stitches. So let's just look at a couple of these, all right? So we're going to go down here, and I want to show you some of the fun things that you can do with these also. Let's get this. Drop that. So you can see all these wonderful, you have a zillion stitches in here, okay? I don't know why that's like I didn't mean to do that. Nope. Okay, let's go to... All right, so let's choose one of these, okay? And let's look at another kind of fun thing that you can do with this machine. This is telling me that I need to use my input, okay? This is showing me the actual size, so it says 100% right there. But there are some cool things I can do editing this design. So these little lines down here enable me to do some directional stitching, okay? All right, so now watch. So I just touch this this arrow and see how it makes it go the opposite direction all right you can make some really fun designs like that and then once you have created sort of a pattern if you touch this icon then that pattern extends all the way across the page so see that okay now you can add all sorts of different stitches together also. The machine enable allows you to do that. But that's something that is the step feature. And then one of the other things that I want to talk to you about very quickly, and this is the last thing that I'll talk about, and that is how easy it is to do quilting on this machine. So here's our quilting layout. These are all quilting stitches. And um, the quilting straight stitch, okay, there's our straight stitch. And, you know, this looks very much like the just plain utility stitches, okay? And I'll show you the plain utility stitch straight stitch. Let's look at the difference between the utility straight stitch and the quilting straight stitch. The utility straight stitch is 2.5 inches in, um, millimeters in length. Let's look at that quilting straight stitch, okay? The quilting straight stitch, 2 millimeters in length. Okay, so as you know, those of you who are quilters, you want that stitch length to be more controlled, and so you're going to want it to be two millimeters instead of 2.5 millimeters. All right, but here's all the um, stitches that you can use as a quilter, but the most important thing about this machine, I think, for quilters is this fantastic digital dual feed foot. Okay, now... The digital dual feed foot enables you, and let me let me get this down here so that you can see it a little bit better. Turn the light on. This enables you to make sure that your fabric stays together. All right. Now I don't know if you've ever um, tried to quilt with two separate, two different weights of fabric. Okay. Sometimes if you have a lightweight fabric on top and you have a heavyweight fabric on the bottom, what happens? is that that lightweight fabric tends to move more than your heavyweight fabric does. Well, this digital dual foot is belt driven, okay? And so let me show you what that means. It's belt driven, okay? And it attaches to, the, it, the, to your machine so that you can control how fast or slow that belt moves. And so when you have a heavyweight fabric at the top, you can make that belt move faster so that it will pull the heavyweight fabric in. But if you have a lightweight fabric on top, you can slow that movement down so that your two pieces of fabric actually move through your machine together. Okay. All right, so... Let me come, let me change my camera here.
Okay. All right. So there's so much on this machine that I could show you guys. And honestly, it would take me three days probably to show you everything the machine does. But I hope that you've gotten some idea of the fun things that you can do on this machine. Are there any more questions, Trish? <laughs> Thank you, Melinda. There are a couple questions. I know we're cutting it close for time, but um, okay. one is, what is the largest size hoop that this machine can take? Nine and a half by 14. Okay. It's huge. And I love this one by Ronnie. She says, I would need a three hour training class, but Ronnie, guess what? With the purchase of this machine, you actually get baby lock sew ed classes six months. So I know Melinda can attest to this. The sew yes. classes are amazing. So. Yes, they really are. And the sew class on this machine is fantastic. It's divided into three parts, embroidery, IQ designer, and sewing. It took three classes to teach all three of those things. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, there's so much. That's why I was so excited about this machine. And I'm going to go into pricing here in a little bit, but there's just so much that you can do with it. There's so many awesome features. I completely forgot about the directional sewing. I was like, oh man. <laughs> right. I, I use it to make handbags. It's so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, do you want to stick around while we do our giveaway quick and then I can go into um, pricing and let you go again. I just want to say thank you for the last minute coming on and helping us out. We really, really appreciate it. And you did it. Thank awesome you. Job. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate your having me here. Thank you so much. Trish. Well, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and do our giveaway and we will see who the lucky winner is of the $100 sewing parts online gift card. I love getting all the good stuff and things, right? You can get all the notions that you want. <laughs> Linda Lade, congratulations. <laughs> all right, Melinda. Well, thank you so much, and you have a wonderful afternoon, and thank we'll see you, you next time. You too. See ya. <laughs> thank <Bye>. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to just talk about really quick uh, claiming your prize so you can get your $100 gift card. So to claim your prize, just go ahead and go to our link tree, which is linktree forward slash sewing parts online. Click claim your prize and fill out that form. You can also go to sewing parts online forward slash uh, sew creative live and scroll down to the giveaway section and you'll be able to claim it there. Uh, we did find a couple of videos because I really wanted to show the needle threader on that machine. So before we scooch on, Brian, do you mind playing uh, those two videos? We found one on the digital dual feed and then one on the needle threader and super quick, but they just show how awesome they are. <laughs> Those are just two really awesome features. I just really, really love the never miss um, needle threader. That's why I had to add the little <laughs> mind blown, right? <laughs> so I had promised you that I was going to tell you some amazing things that are happening with the Altair. So normally it is um, an MSRP of $12,999. Our normal sale price is $8,999, but right now for a limited time, it is on sale for $7,999. On top of that, you can call in for the special event pricing. So if you have been considering the Altair, this is the time to get it because you are going to get an amazing deal on it. In addition to having the the limited time special and the special event pricing, getting an awesome price. You also get a free bonus bundle that you can select that's worth $900 value. And just a few things that are included in that would be like your stitch in a ditch sole, your edge joining foot, seam guide, free motion couching foot, multi-function foot control, um, Oh, and then the six months of the sew ed class. So you get all the training that you need on this machine. So again, if you've been considering it, it is a wonderful time to do it. I just want to pop on really quickly. Oh, My hi. microphone. I, hi, I swear I do it every <laughs> single time. 
<laughs> no, so I just wanted to pop in again and reiterate what Trisha just said. I am looking at the special pricing sheet right now. My mind is blown at how low this machine is priced. Today, I've never seen this machine priced as low as it is. And I normally wouldn't pop on and say anything. But I, I saw there was quite a few people who were like, oh my God, I love this machine. I've been thinking about it for a while. I cannot stress to you guys mm -hmm. enough that this is a once in a while opportunity to get it for as much as it off and to get the $900 bonus on top of it. It would be a little foolish to at least not consider it if you've been thinking about this machine. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to emphasize that a little bit. Yeah. And that, again, is why I am so thankful that Melinda popped on because I was so pumped to be showing this machine because of this amazing price. And I'm just like, oh, no, oh, no, <laughs> internet issues. Dang, we're not going to be able to show it. But sure enough, we were able to. So I just talked about internet issues. And now let's see. We've got lighting issue. <laughs> we'll get that fixed. Um, Alex, is that for your computer? What? All the lights went off? No, the lights in the building went off. Oh, seriously? Hey, just tell us in the comments if you can hear or see us. Can you hear or see us? This is kind of a nice ambiance, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> see, the stream is down. Oh, no. Let's see. We've got... Hey, all... can y'all hear? Let us know in the comments if you can see us. I'm going to take a look at the chat and see if... Deb says, yeah. oh, she can hear and see us. So okay. the internet's on. Uh, the lighting in our building just went off. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Do you want to just go ahead and pull up Grace and let them take over while we figure out our lighting? Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. And I'm, I'm interested on why these three are still going. But <laughs> like I said, it's just a nice ambiance. So We're doing but... <laughs> it from the dark. <laughs> we're, we're rolling with the punches. All right, let's bring Grace up. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hey, Trisha. Good. How are you today? Good, other than us figuring out our lighting, but we'll figure that out soon. <laughs> you know, it, it would be a fun, like, Halloween kind of yeah. uh, so, sewing parts online spooky event. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Well, can you go ahead and introduce yourselves? And if you don't mind, we'll let you take it away while we figure all this stuff out over here. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Melinda Romero, account executive here at Grace. And joining me today... I'm Julie Slesser and I'm an account executive as well. We're super, super, super excited uh, to be here today. I just want to throw it out there uh, to the audience. Uh, if you can put a one uh, in the comments, if you joined uh, the Sewing Parts online event last Wednesday, uh, so the Sewing Circle, put a one in the comment uh, if you were with us last week. Uh, so julie yes that was your first event last yes, week my very first event last week and uh we'll see how many ones came through Ooh, uh there's a couple there's a few coming through they saw you last week uh we're round two right. today a little more comfortable yes it's you did hard. amazing you did amazing though it's hard to go back and watch yourself guys and think the things that flap around <laughs> and the things that the faces that you make, but we'll try to get better as yes. we go along. <laughs> yes. So last week we presented the 16X Elite on the Evolution Hoop Frame. Right. Yes. Uh, awesome presentation, if I say so myself. <laughs> uh, excellent co-host here, Julie. But today, Julie, tell everybody what we have today. So today we are going to spotlight our 16 series, the three set series. We have our 16X manual machine, our 16X machine, and our 16X elite machine. And we're gonna talk about all three of these today. Yes, yes. So I love our 16 series, uh, especially as a newer quilter. Uh, I've seen so many machines, you, you know, whether I'm browsing online, whether I'm, you know, at a quilting show or uh, a quilting shop. There's so many different machines out there, but I gravitate towards the 16 series. Um, I'm sure you can all see, maybe not necessarily tell from where you're at. <laughs> Julie and I, we're both a little bit height challenged. Exactly. We're both yes. short. So for me, uh, the 16 series, uh, it, again, it's kind of the perfect size machine. Uh, again, the height of the machine, it, you know, I'm standing side by side. I'm just a little bit taller than the machines are on the frame. Uh, the reach right. back and forth. Uh, Again, being short, I have the short arms. I, you know, the speed of the machines. Uh, again, as a newer quilter, 
It's not too fast. It's not too slow. Again, just kind of that perfect pace to get me through my projects. What about you, Julie? No, what agree. are your thoughts? So I'm, uh, there's a couple different reasons why the 16 is my favorite. Okay. Number one, the 16 to me just seems like it's the most manageable. It's not too short, it's not too long. I don't wanna be a professional sewer. It gets the job done and the price is good, right? Yes. No matter yes. which one, the price is really good. Um, the other thing that I really like about it is, it's a little secret, they're the, more, the newest of our machines. So out of all of our different brands, these ones have the most, uh, the little extras, yes. the little things that I like the most. Yes, the, the bells and whistles. Yep, there you uh, go. I, I would say, it, you know, if you kind of think about if you're in the market for a new car, maybe you're, you're thinking, well, what model do I choose? What options do I choose? It, you know, with the machine, in a way, it's kind of a similar buying process. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to think about what model you want. Uh, what trim level do you want? Uh, you, you know, do you want the technology package or, you know, what do you want, you know, from your machine? Uh, and the 16X series, uh, again, has all of the features, you know, across the machines that will appeal, right? be budget friendly to so many people out there. So let's start with okay. our 16X manual. Uh, so this is our very first machine right at the front. Uh, Julie, I'm going to quiz you. Okay. How many stitches per inch does the 16X manual do? So this one is a 1700 SPI, so stitches per inch. Um, it's a manual only. There's no stitcher regulation on this machine. Yes. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, that will quilt uh, and love quilting with their everyday uh, domestic sit-down kind of machines. Whether you have your machine on a frame, uh, whether you're still kind of pushing your fabric through the machine, people are used to kind right. of that manual speed without the regulation. I struggle moving my machine across the frame keeping kind of that same pace right. uh, so my stitches are uniform and the same length and size. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I uh, will never be good at it. <laughs> but some people prefer just kind of that manual mode. Right. Uh, they may uh, in a sense have that preference. Well, it, you know, I've been doing it like this on my domestic machine. So I'm used to it. I'm right. used to it. So I can continue to do it uh, with my quilting machine. Now, another thing about these 16X series, which kind of sets these machines apart from our other machines, are the built-in throat lights. So I don't know, there you can see the light reflecting off my hand. Uh, so again, all of these machines have the built-in throat lights, and I'm just trying to, <laughs> oh, that one's a little bit out of position. Uh, you can kind of see it on my arm <laughs> there in the back. There we go. Uh, but again, all of the machines have that built-in throat light. Right. I say it all the time, whether you're quilting, whether you're sewing, whether you know, you're know you crafting, whatever you may be doing, there's no such thing as too much light. Right, right. You've Not got to be able to see from all angles. So you can see, especially when you're doing free motion quilting, yes. right? You want to see where you've been, where you're going. Yes, yes. Now, uh, one more step back uh, with our manual machine. Uh, so again, it's a manual. You can adjust your speed right on the handlebars. We have an arrow up, an arrow down. On all of our handlebars, we have a start stop and a needle up down. So as we adjust our speed, as we're moving faster with this particular machine, you'll notice there's lights around this queue. The faster you go, the lights will increase and go around that circle, kind of like the speedometer in our cars. Mm -hmm. Is that how you would yep. compare it, Julie? Yes, exactly. So I know if I need to, I, sometimes I'm like, oh, I gotta go slower. Oh, I don't have any slower left. So I'll have to just practice. <laughs> yes, yes. So again, with the manual machine, don't be afraid of it. Uh, we've been, you know, quilting with that man or sewing, I should say, with that manual speed 
on our domestic machines. It, you know, it's very much the same concept. It's a little bit, a little bit different because instead of pushing your fabric under the needle, you're now moving the needle over your fabric. But again, right. same concept. Same concept. It's if just if like you're you've writing on a piece of paper with a pen. Yes, yes. So if you're used to uh, again just that domestic uh, manual speed, again, perfect machine for you. If you're not interested in too many more of the additional bells and whistles, great starter machine. Right. Budget friendly. Uh, Trisha will will have an opportunity to go over pricing. Uh, here at the end of our segment. Uh, but again, perfect entry level machine. Anything else uh, you want to well, add? What about the fact that I get this machine because it's very cost friendly for me? Yes. And I go, well, I thought I was going to be able to do free motion, but I'm not really good at it. There's something I can do with this machine. What can I yes. do with it? Yes. So, and you're talking free motion yes. or regulation? So, regulation. Regulation. Yep. Okay. So, if, yes, even if you start with this machine, uh, there is an upgrade uh, that you can purchase on the machine, which would add the regulation to it. Right. So, again, you're not always going to be stuck with that manual mode machine. You can always add right. regulation later. Yep. So. Get started. See what you can do. And if you decide you want regulation, it's easy to add. Yes, yes. All right, perfect. Now, let's pop over to our 16X machine. Now, I love this Melinda? machine. Yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but if you don't mind, I'd like to pop on and talk about the giveaway since you guys so kindly donated a cutie for this and we didn't get an opportunity to show that since our lighting oh, was <laughs> You sure is the lighting back up now? It is. Thank you. Awesome. So we are awesome. <laughs> well, I just want to show that we have the cutie tabletop frame and it is valued at $1200 and this is an awesome option if you are looking to get into quilting on a frame and you maybe have limited space um, you only need 48 inches by 38 inches of surface in order to utilize this great little frame and it pairs perfectly with a domestic machine we were joking earlier right. that these two models pair perfectly with the cutie and that wasn't even intentional. Right. We've got the Juki <laughs> and we also have the Allegro. So um, if you add a carriage to that wonderful little tabletop frame, you can do quilting with a frame with your domestic machine. So yes. thank you to Grace for donating that awesome frame as our giveaway. And I will let you go ahead and take it away again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thanks, okay. Trisha. All <laughs> right. So uh, the Again, yes, uh, we have that awesome giveaway yep. uh, with the cutie. You can, uh, again, pair it perfectly with any domestic machine or uh, even any of these machines here with that awesome 16-inch right. throat. It'll go right on there, yeah. Yes. So, it, again, we're back to the 16X machine. Uh, again, same 16-inch uh, throat. Uh, we have uh, the throat lights on this machine. Uh, however, one key difference people no will notice right away uh, is the screen on this machine. It's definitely different uh, than what we saw on the 16X manual. So it's a built-in uh, touch screen display. Uh, we still have all of our stitch options. So we have our cruise, uh, based, manual, and precise. So again, we can still choose our different stitch modes. Uh, unlike the 16X manual, the 16X machine is fully regulated. Uh, so again, our uh, precise and cruise uh, are going to be our regulated stitch modes. Uh, remind me, Julie, how many stitches per inch on the 16X? So this one is 17, uh, 1700 again, stitches per inch on this machine. Yes. Yes, so it's just, you're going from a manual machine with just a straight stitch to a stitch regulated machine with the um, couple different modes that you can do, 1700 stitches per inch. Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, and again, with our machines, uh, you know, they all have the built-in bobbin winder. Uh, they all have, uh, how to thread the machine uh, right, get, you know, printed right on the machine. That way you always know. Uh, once you've threaded a machine a few times, uh, 
then you're pretty much, a, you know, a pro right. uh, at that point. Uh, but it's great to have those little reminders uh, printed right there as you're threading uh, to go ahead and help you through that process. Right. Uh, so again, uh, built-in bobbin winder, the full color, uh, I guess it's not full color, but it is color, touch screen display, you have the right. four stitch modes. 2.7 inches on that screen. Yes, uh, and one thing I love about this machine, uh, a feature that's not on the manual machine, uh, is the edge warning. Julie, right. tell us uh, a little bit more about edge warning. Why would right. somebody want it? Okay. So basically the edge warning is something that you're going to set when you get started. You're going to set it on one side, the other side, the top, the bottom, and it's going to tell you anytime you get close to that edge, it's going to flash at you and beep at you, which you can change that if you don't want to hear it, you don't want to um, see it, you can turn it off. Um, but I like to have it on as a new sewer. Um, I get um, very um, focus focus right on that one block and I would just go okay on to the next one oh well now I've just messed something up so I'm gonna get that buzzer warning as you get to that edge and it's gonna say hey you're getting really close so I'm gonna go oh I better look and see where I am oh I'm too close I need to stop here yes now we can get uh, to all of the machine settings uh, just by pressing uh, the little sprog uh, in that top corner. So we have tools, machine settings, screen settings, we have a measure tool. Uh, so again, if we go into machine settings here, uh, again, it might be a little bit hard to see on the screen, but we can set uh, inches or centimeters, we can do a half stitch or a full stitch, uh, our over speed uh, lighting options the lights on the machine uh, so we can change uh, even the brightness where our needle bar is. So if we want that to be super bright, if we want to dim it a little, we have the ability to do that right through that settings screen. Uh, if we go to uh, the screen settings, uh, again, we, there's a calibration tool, uh, there's, uh, we can choose kind of the color uh, scheme or theme of our machine. You know, just uh, making it a just little the bit. Fun stuff. Yeah, the fun, the fun stuff, stuff we're stuff. talking about. Making <laughs> it, you know, your own. It doesn't always have to be, you know, gray and, and darker gray. Right. You, you know, you can certainly add uh, that color to it. Uh, we have our stop right on the screen. Uh, we have our edge warning right on that home screen. Uh, our needle up, needle down, or the jog button. Let's go ahead to that edge warning. So when we set our edge warning, uh, again, we're just going to move our machine to the upper left corner, then we're, uh, and we'll set, uh, press the button to set that point, then we'll move our machine to the lower right corner, set the button to set that point. We'll choose whether we want the half inch or the full inch, and set that edge warning. Uh, and again, you can do it for as small as a block on your quilt. You can do it for the entire width of your quilt. Uh, again, just super simple, but a great feature right. to have. Now, Julie, uh, thinking about, or going back and kind of, you know, reminiscing about what we've talked about with these two machines. Uh -huh. Can you think of anything that we've missed so far? Well, I don't know that if we missed anything, but I can add that the lights, they are LED white lights. So you are getting the clear, crisp colors that you're trying, that you know that it's accurate. Let's say you're doing two different pinks. You've got one a little lighter than the other. You're gonna be able to see, make sure that you've got that in the right area. Those two pinks are gonna be nice and defined there for you because there's no, it's diffused so that you don't get a lot of shadows and it's nice and clear and crisp so you can tell the difference on your colors. Yes, yes. Love the lights, love the lights. All right, now one other thing uh, that all of our machines kind of have in common are the ergonomic uh, fully adjustable handlebars. Uh, Julie, why, why would that be important to somebody? Well, if I'm gonna be quilting a quilt all day, okay, I might take one break, but you know, Melinda's arm span 
is maybe shorter than mine. <laughs> I feel like that, you know, the gorilla yep. at the zoo. <laughs> yes. Um, but so I can maneuver those handlebars. I can go out, I can go in, I can pull up and I can go backwards. I want, can get that set. So I am comfortable when you're sitting there for a long period of time, you want to be comfortable. Yes. I don't want to have to go like this and sew all day or like this and sew all day so I can make it nice and comfortable. Now your comfort mm -hmm. is going to be a lot different than my comfort. Exactly. You know, so with our handlebars, uh, they can rotate in or out. Uh, they're telescopic, so you can pull the handlebar out or push it in. I'm the quilter. I actually prefer my handlebars to be out uh, a little bit further. That way it helps me with that reach uh, of forward and backwards. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, me being a, a little height challenged. Mm -hmm. You know, my reach going across the machine is going to be quite a bit shorter. But with the extension on the handlebars, uh, the telescoping uh, of the handles, that helps me, uh, again, adjust the handles so I'm comfortable. That way right. I can enjoy hours of quilting mm -hmm. uh, and not you know, just having that struggle. Right, especially if you're sitting down. Some people like to sit down and quilt. So with that movement, if I had them in all the way and I've got short little arms, I'm gonna have to go like this every time I go back. But if I telescope those out a little bit, I'll just be able to do this forward and back motion. Okay, so we do have uh, a question. So, well, I saw a couple questions, but we'll get to this <laughs> one first. For just uh, a past beginner quilter, would the manual entry level machine be okay? What is the learning curve? So really, uh, I would say hands down, the manual is a perfect entry level machine. Uh, it's going to, uh, in a sense, remind you uh, for, you know, you're having the same, same kind of uh, stitch abilities right, as your sewing machine. Right. Yeah, you know, so it's a manual speed. The learning curve potentially will be instead of struggling and pushing your quilt under your machine, now your machine, your needle is over the fabric. So we used to, you know, move our fabric under our needle, which can be very, very hard depending on the size of your project. But now when you put a machine on a frame, you're moving that needle over the fabric. So what have we been doing since we've been, I don't know, three, four, five years old? What's been one thing? Drawing. Drawing. Coloring. Making coloring, circles. Writing. <laughs> you know, so that's that motion. It's a natural motion that everybody has because yeah. we, we've all done those things. We uh, began coloring, drawing, you know, when we were toddlers. Um, pushing fabric through a machine, it's hard. Uh, it, fabric can be heavy. It's, you know, a lot of fabric management. So again, I would say, yes, the manual, perfect entry level machine. Uh, and you have the ability to upgrade it uh, to be a regulated machine at any time. Right. Would so I guess I would say, depends on how OCD you are, right? Because I feel like I'm a little bit. So I love the idea of free motion and some people are so good at it. I am not. I'm always going to have far away stitches as I'm going around a corner and closer together as it's a straight line. And so for me, I like the stitch regulation because I know I can set it and forget it. I don't right. have to practice slowing down a little bit and then going faster and then slowing down and going faster to keep it stitch regulated. But, but you know, I, I will say there's that argument. You can't ever be good at something right, if, you don't, if practice, you don't practice. Right. So is there a learning curve? Maybe at first, mm -hmm. but after you've been doing it, you're just going to have a feel for it and you'll be able to do it just yes. fine. Yes. So another question uh, that I had seen pop up in the comments uh, was uh, if the machines have the larger size bobbin. So yes. all of our machines have M-class bobbins, so they are the larger bobbins uh, that will hold more thread. Mm -hmm. About 70 to 80 yards, depending on if you're feeling what your own or the ones that we use, the pre wound bobbins that we sell, they're the 80 yards. Yes, yes. All right. So. Uh, Let's see. 
We've talked everything about the X right. machine that yeah. you can think of, right? All right, so we're back uh, to our wonderful 16X Elite machine. Hands down, Julie. The best machine. If I'm gonna take a machine home, yep. this is my dream machine. Yes, it is. It is. Not too big, not too small. Uh, tell me how many stitches per inch? 2100 stitches per minute on this one. That is dang fast. Right. Dang fast. So, uh, again, we still have all uh, of the same features as our 16X. Uh, we have a much larger screen display. So whereas on the 16X, uh, it was that small 2.7 inch, two yep. seven inch display. On yeah, the 16X Elite, it's a seven inch yeah. display. And that's what impresses me the most, is that seven inch display. I'm sorry, but I'm old guys. I can't see very well. This one, I just love. I love all the technology in it. The help tutorials, the extra, the extra, like you said, what did you call that? The extra the bells, and whistles. bells and whistles. That's what I love about this machine. Yes. Now there is a question. I uh, want, want to have it clarified. Uh, we keep saying uh, stitches per inch. Uh, do you really mean stitches per minute? Uh, yes. So the, the machine is capable up to uh, that 2100 stitches per minute, uh, or depending on what you set your stitch length at, right. uh, again, you're accommodating within, you know, so many stitches within that parameter. So stitches per inch, stitches per minute. Uh, again, it's still going to give you that up to right. 2100 stitches. Right. Now with uh, the seven inch full color touch screen display, uh, again, everything's kind of built right into the screen, right there, front and center, easy to navigate, easy to go through. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, easily select our stitch mode, uh, precise, cruise, manual, based. Uh, we're trying to, to get this focus. There you go. There we we're go. We're trying to not have our All shadows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so again, very simple. Uh, again, precise, cruise, manual, based. Uh, for our stitch modes, we have our jog backward, our jog forward, single stitch. We have our needle up down. Uh, we have our stitches per inch. Uh, we have a wonderful toolbox. Uh, we have a measure tool, calculator, uh, edge warning, project. My hands down absolute favorite is the bobbin estimator. estimator. Right. Julie, tell us about the bobbin estimator. Okay, so with the bobbin estimator, you're going to set it, um, and it'll, it's gonna, you're going to start to learn that you'll get closer and closer to the very, very end before you're going to change it. But what it does is you are going to, you can name it. Let's say that maybe the gray thread that you use, you're going to be able to put a whole 80 yards on. But the red one you got, uh, you're figuring there's only about 40, 50 on there. So you're going to be able to put in what you think you have in yards right here, and then you're going to hit go. And then right here in the corner, you've got this little bobbin. And it shows green as you're using it. And as it gets lower, it's going to turn to yellow. And then based on the amount of yardage that you put in there, as it gets closer to the end, you're going to get to the red. So you know that you've got to keep an eye out. You might want, not want to start a great big huge project right now when it's in the red. And you want to find a place where you can comfortably stop and change that bobbin. Yes, yes. Now, you said something that caught my attention. Okay. Uh, so you said on your bobbin. Right. You can put anywhere from 70, maybe 80, maybe right. 90 yards. Right. What determines how much thread will fit on a bobbin? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so one thing, uh, the weight of your thread, the okay. ply of your thread, probably sometimes what your thread is made out of. Uh, okay. There's so many factors, uh, well, not so many, but there are certain factors which in a sense will say your thread is going to be so thick or thin uh, like and that. equate to how many yards can actually be wound on a bobbin. So our finesse thread, uh, for instance, it's a 50 weight. Right. It's a three ply uh, and it's polyester. 
but uh, I would say comfortably. I usually set my bobbin estimator at about 75 yards. Uh, I'll still have a little bit uh, that I can still stitch with on that bobbin, but again, I'm not going to run out. Right. A, you know, right up to that point. So I, I give myself a little bit of wiggle room. I set the estimator at 75. I can probably go pretty close to about 90 yards. But it, again, that's just that reminder, you're gonna run you're out, yeah. either wind a new bobbin, or otherwise put a new bobbin in your machine to mm -hmm. keep going. That's the worst thing, I'm sorry, but I'm going, I'm in a groove, I run out of bobbin, I'm still going, for a while before I go, oh wait, there's no bobbin thread in there. I have to go backwards. Yes, yes. All right, so it, again, hands down, like I said, my absolute favorite, favorite right? that and the edge warning, uh, it, you know, my complete lifesavers. Now, uh, we have a little hamburger menu uh, mm -hmm. on our machine. This gives us settings uh, and then of course, help. If we go into the help section, uh, we have some awesome features preparing to quilt, quilting, maintenance, troubleshooting, using the actual touch screen. So we'll go ahead and click on preparing to quilt. This gives us again another step by step of threading our machine, gives us all the key points we can click on you know, one, one. Uh, and it's going to show us exactly how and where to thread. Uh, and then we can click next uh, or, you know, back to go to two. But again, it's just a very detailed at your fingertips, right at the front of your machine, guiding you, showing you, telling you, you know, what you need to do next. I always get the question, well, what needle do I use? Right. So all of our needles are an MR needle. It's a multi-directional needle. Uh, we sell the three different sizes, 14, 16, 18. Julie, uh, what can you tell me? Like, why would I choose one needle size over another? Well, and I think you guys would know this way better than I would, but really, so that, you know, the higher the number, the finer the point, the smaller the needle itself. If I'm using satin, I don't know that I want to use an 18 because I don't want to make a very big hole in that satin, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to use a 14 because I want a very small hole. Yes. So really it's going uh, again to boil down to uh, what, what kind of fabric you're quilting, uh, what the material is made of, how thick kind of your quilt is. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, do you have denim? Do you have multiple layers of batting? All of those uh, different factors uh, can certainly, you know, have a play right. for what size needle you want to choose for your project. But if you forget, it's right here. So you can go right on there and it'll say, okay, you're going to do satin, you're going to do silk, let's go with this needle. Yes, yes. Now, I saw a question pop up. How hard is it? How long does it take to change a bobbin? Oh. Not hard Not at all. Hard at all. <laughs> Not hard at all. Uh, go ahead, uh, turn the wheel. Let's move the needle up. All right. So uh, we can pull our machine kind of to the side of our quilts, move our quilt over. Our bobbin is right here. You can see kind of right here where my finger is, mm -hmm. hopefully. Uh, but it, it's right in the front of the machine. Uh, there's nothing, no, no door, door that you have to fiddle faddle no. with. Uh, the bobbin again, it just pops right out. Again, M class bobbin. We have our, our bobbin full of thread. Again, when we're putting the bobbin back in, slides right back in, push it, and you'll hear a pop, letting you know that it's locked right into place. You're so ready to again, go. Yeah. super simple, very easy to change out. Now, have you noticed uh, any questions, Julie, that we may have missed that have come up in the comments? No, but remember I'm old and I can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. You guys are doing a great job answering them as well. I'm looking as well, trying to star any, but so far so good. Oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Trisha. All right, so Egan, we talked about threading your machine, choosing your needle, 
winding your bobbin. Uh, there's instructions right in the touch screen as well. Uh, again, super easy. All of our machines, again, have that uh, built-in bobbin winder. What I love about uh, the X-Series machines, uh, the uh, motor mechanism in the bobbin winder, it's upgraded from our previous machines. Uh, so it's stronger, uh, it uh, winds faster, uh, allows you to wind the bobbins more evenly. It, it's right. just amazing. But again, step-by-step -step instructions right on the machine telling you how, who, what, why, where, when, how, you know, to wind that bobbin. The other thing that I like about this screen, it has an on-screen troubleshoot. Yes. How many times has something happened to your machine and you have to find the manual, get it out, read the instructions, you still don't understand it, you end up calling tech support, you're on the phone forever, or have to leave 100 messages. So uh, most of the problems that we have ever had, you know, tension problems, needle changing problems, things, little things that you want to do to your machine, they're all going to be on there step by step by step. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, so again, that was just in preparing your quilt. Uh, there's a section for actual quilting. Uh, one of the questions I, I probably get the most is, how do I set my tension? You, you know, my tension is off. Right. Uh, every quilt that you start, uh, because there's so many factors that will affect what your tension is on a machine. So again, what you're quilting, how many layers of batting, uh, what your fabric is made of. People think they just need to adjust the tension up on top, but you also have to, really, technically, you should start the tension from the bottom. So correcting the bottom tension, uh, you have a tutorial. Correcting the top tension, you have a tutorial. Right there, easy peasy, right at your fingertips. Right. So, uh, Julie, what else? Like, like well, I can't say enough good about, things. I know. This about is my these, dream machine as well, yes. right? The 16 Exile, I think, is just perfectly. It's enough. I get my width out of it, my length out of it. I get all the bells and whistles. This is my dream machine right here. Yes. Um, the other thing that's worth noting with all of the machines is they have an excellent warranty on them. Yes. So, 10-year uh, warranty. Uh, top of the line, uh, we have our technical support team that's available. Uh, again, you know, maybe you are having a little bit more trouble setting your tension. Right. So our tech team is right there, ready uh, to help you with that. Anything else with the machine? Uh, again, it's uh, the motor uh, in all of our machines is fully encased. Uh, there is a little bit uh, of at-home maintenance you would do with the machine. So again, but basic, yeah. Oiling uh, the needle bar, oiling uh, your bobbin case. That's really about it. Uh, you know, making sure you know you're cleaning. Uh, you know, your lint, any dust. But really, that's well, all the maintenance and speaking, you need to do on the machine. Speaking of dust, how many times have you opened your domestic machine and there's so much dust in there? You've got to blow it out. Well, with this machine, or you it have is to take it somewhere exactly. to get it serviced. Completely encased. You're not going to have dust and lint up in where those bearings are and those gears are. It's yes. completely enclosed, so none of that gets up in there. Yes. So I, I mean, I can't say enough great things uh, about our machines. Uh, shows uh, in different events we go to, we get stopped all the time. You know, people. I love my machine. Right. You, you know, I I wouldn't be quilting without you guys. So it, it's amazing. Honest, it's beautiful, right? It is. I mean, it is. It looks a lot like your domestic machine. It's not industrial looking. It's just a beautiful, it's like a, a Corvette versus my um, 1968 Chrysler. <laughs> yes. All right. So I, I mean, there's quite a few other features uh, as well, uh, you know, on the machine. Think of it uh, you know, kind of with that, uh, the help settings. Right. It's just like having the user manual right, right at your fingertips. So I, I know we're almost out of time, just a few minutes left. Let's go ahead and bring Trisha back. 
All right. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, Trisha, do you have any questions we may not have covered or uh, maybe you weren't quite uh, clear on or any questions, uh, again, maybe that we had missed? You did an awesome job, but I do want to ask, which hoop do you have on there right now? So uh, these machines are on our Evolution Elite frame. So this is our 10 foot frame. Uh, we had to, you know, bring in the big guns <laughs> to Put show all machines three on. machines. <laughs> so, and, and before coming on, I, I, I'm not even gonna tell you <laughs> how today has been, but we're here, we made it. All three machines fit. <laughs> so it's been good. I it's love been it. good. You were dealing with that. We were dealing with lighting. Let lighting. there be light, right? <laughs> I will exactly. Say, I was noticing in the comments, people were saying, I want to meet the Grace team. And we were saying that as well. And we got to meet a couple of you guys at uh, QuiltCon, but we've got mm -hmm. yet to meet you too. So we yeah. are looking forward to hopefully doing that in the future. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I know Trisha. Uh, it's on my account. Calendar, uh, OSQE uh, in um, not Dallas. Um, <laughs> October? <laughs> yeah, isn't it October? It is, is in October. In yes. I think it's the one in Nashville, yes, Nashville. Right? Thank you. Th yeah. I'm like, where am I going? <laughs> where am I going? I have trips like constant, like through the end of the year. It's like, wait, where am I going? When am I going? How am I going? Why am I going? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so if, if you'll be at OSQE in Nashville uh, in October, yep. uh, I'll get to meet you. And if you're not going to be there, maybe we can still meet like after. So. Oh, we will be there and we're going to go get some hot chicken with you. We're going to take you to Hattie. Okay. Or something. Okay. Go. Sounds good. Sounds well. good. I definitely want to go over some amazing pricing on these machines, but do Good. we want to give away a cutie frame? Yes, yeah. let's give away a cutie. Right, let's do it. Is it too late to enter my name? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Julie. <laughs> I love it. Let's see who the lucky winner is. Yay. Paula, Paula Becker. Woohoo. Awesome. awesome. And Congratulations, I Paula. Too, uh, that Julie and Melinda joined us last week for the social circle. I know they were talking about it at right. the beginning of the segment, but I just want to remind everybody that they did an amazing job going through the 16X Elite and the Evolution Hoop Frame. So if you have any additional questions that weren't answered today, please watch that replay because they answered all of them <laughs> and everything. Um, yeah, everything. <laughs> so great. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you thank so much, you Trisha, for having us again today. Uh, good luck for the rest of the day, and we'll see you at our next event. Sounds good. We'll see you later. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. See ya. All right. Well, we always love having Grace here, so we just want to show some awesome 16X machines. So we have a really fun special going on right now. Obviously, they were featuring the 16X series. So what we've done is put together a almost like a quilting sale, like a quilting system sale. So with the 16X machines, I'm gonna pop this one up here first. Actually, I wanna back up one quick second here. Make sure I'm looking at the right one. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna start with the 16X machine. We've got the 16X manual. That is an MSRP of 3,999 on sale for $3,499. Again, you can give us a call for the special event pricing and we will be able to do better on that. Uh, we are also showing the 16X and that's gonna be the mid arm. That's where it starts with the stitch regulation. So that normally is $4,999.95 on sale for $4,499. Then, as they had mentioned, the 16X Elite, love that machine. It has that beautiful display on it. It normally is $5,999.95, um, but it's on sale for $4,999. And the special event pricing is super awesome for that. Uh, but I want to show you that we are going to do the 16X series quilting system. So if you buy a 16X machine today and pair it with a frame, 
you get the ultimate cutting collection for free. So what's the ultimate cutting collection, right? That You can see that it's a 427 50 value, but it is just filled with a ton of goodies. So you can see all sorts of fun things to get your cutting and everything in shape. So they've got the mat, they've got the true cut, that comfort grip rotary cutter. Awesome. If you joined us in the past, you've been, uh, you've seen the cutter where it's the circular cutter comes with a variety of rulers those true grips if you were on earlier with chris he was talking about the true grips on templates they're wonderful to prevent your rulers from sliding around you get a bunch of blades so you are all set so the first thing that you just need to do is pick your machine and melinda and julie did a fabulous job going through the differences on those models but if you need a, a quick run through here's a little synopsis of which are what they all have so you can choose which one suits you best and then you just select the frame that works best for you as they had mentioned the one that was showing in the video is the evolution elite frame they had the 10 foot option that also comes in the eight foot option and the 12. But if you start up at the top, we have that cutie tabletop frame that we were looking at earlier, that was the giveaway. That's a really awesome option if you're looking to get into quilting on a frame but don't have a lot of space, or maybe you have a lower budget and you just really want to try it, this is an awesome option. So small surface needed, hoop style frame, you just quilt in zones and you can get any size quilt quilted on that particular frame. Then you've got your Q-Zone hoop frame and that also is a hoop style frame. So you're gonna be quilting in zones. You would just remove your quilt, shift the fabric and then continue quilting along. Then you've got Q-Zone queen frame. That's a rolling rail frame. So you would pin it to the top and then you would roll it and uh, that fits up to a queen size quilt. Then you've got your continuum frame that is available in the eight, 10 and 12 foot. That also is a rolling rail frame. And so you can fit different size quilts depending on what length you want to go with. The evolution hoop frame is pretty spectacular. It starts out with the hoop frame. You can see the little clasps on there so you can do zone quilting, but it does convert into a rolling rail frame. So this is a great option if maybe you're wanting to get started with it, but you aren't quite sure what you're needing. You can always convert it to a, a much larger frame. You're not stuck with just one option. So. It is an amazing option for a frame. And then if you have the space and you've got dedicated room, you want eight, 10 or 12 foot, you could do the Evolution Elite frame and pair that with your machine. So then we've done step one, we picked our machine. We've done step two, we picked our frame. And then step three, you're going to get that free ultimate cutting collection. So it will get you completely set up. Also, with the purchase of a 16X machine, any one of them, um, you would be also eligible to get 25% off automation. So automation is just going to, you are going to have your machine do your sewing for you. You program it and you touch it and you let it go. <laughs> a couple of notes about automation. This particular software does not work with iPads. It will only work with tablets running on Windows 7, 8, 10 or higher. The MSRP on that is $4,999.95, and that has a sale price of $3,749.96. If you decide to upgrade to the Pro option, that normally is $7,499.95, and that's on a 25% off sale of the $5,624.96. And as I've mentioned several times here, the pricing that's displayed on the screen is not as low as we can go. We've got what little over an hour before special event pricing is done. It is a one day event. So we are offering the awesome special event pricing until the end of business today. I do also want to mention our other Cunique machines. So if you are looking at getting maybe a 19X or a 19X Elite or a 21X Elite, they still have special event pricing. However, the uh, Ultimate Cutting Collection does not um, work with that. So you would just get special event pricing on the machine. So here's another little overlay that if you are maybe looking to get an even larger machine that has that 19 inch throat space for the 19X, the 19X Elite also has the 19 inch throat space, but you're bumping up in the stitches per inch. You're also getting that beautiful 
uh, touch screen. And then you've got your other options here too, your built-in bob and winder, edge warning, all the grace goodies that come with those machines. 21 X Elite, if you're going big, go home, right? <laughs> there it is. That is the highest one that you can get with the grace system. It's an awesome machine. It does 2,600 stitches per minute. It has that beautiful touch screen as well. It does include a magnifying glass set. It's not shown in the picture, but that's pretty cool. It's got the built-in bobbin winder, built-in stitch regulator, and the edge warning as well. So lots of awesome options. If you're not quite sure which one you're looking for, you can always give our customer service a call and they will help you kind of move through the process and figure out which one's best for you. So I hope that you can all enjoy that. Um, but we do want to kind of do a recap, um, let you guys know what we covered today. And um, then we can, you know, move into giving our grand prize away like we all love to do, which is going to be our baby lock triumph. So is there anything you want to add, Brian, before we move forward? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. We had a plan to give the last surprise word. Did mm -hmm. we want to do that now or before we start the pricing or do you want to wait? If you're okay with giving the surprise word now, then we can start doing the comments and then at the end we can go ahead and okay. do our giveaway. How do you how do you feel about that, Brian? <laughs> I feel good. good. I wrote one last riddle. Oh cute. And this is the last <laughs> surprise word. And if you get it right, I'm gonna put it up on the screen so everybody can start putting it in. And this is for the baby lock triumph. Okay. You ready? We can I show the baby lock triumph first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> He's really excited. I am. <laughs> we have our awesome Baby Lock Triumph. This is a combination serger and cover stitch machine. I hope everybody's as excited as we are. It's a $7,500 value. This is a beautiful machine. And I've mentioned it before, but Brian and I got to play on that at Baby Lock Tech and, or excuse yeah. me, Baby Lock Training. And oh my goodness, it's so fun. So I really, I'm excited. I hope that it is. really loves this. I machine. don't know if people realize it is the top of the line Baby Lock serger. It is like the, it is mm -hmm. the absolute top. The Solaris is the top of the line sewing machine. Mm -hmm. The Triumph is the top of the line serger. So it's a really fantastic prize. The so serger I, has, or the Baby Lock Triumph has such a nice like throat space, which yeah. isn't common for a machine with a serger or cover stitch. It also has speed control. Mm -hmm. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> so Brian's just waiting to give his little riddle. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Here's my riddle. <laughs> I have to take my headphones off so I'm not listening to okay. myself say it. Okay. <laughs> when needles break and machines feel ill, where can seamstresses find their skill? A digital realm, a tailor's domain, with parts and tools to mend the strain. From bobbins to feet, the solution they see, an online haven for all sewing needs. With clicks and scrolls, orders made prime, in this virtual realm you'll find blank. Go ahead and start guessing. Now that's going to be on my brain while I'm recapping. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> All right. I am going to back up to the beginning of the day and we're going to do a little recap on some of the amazing machines that were shown and we will see what we have here. So the very first one this morning, uh, Miriam Coffee did such an awesome job showing us the Elna Excellence 780 Plus computerized sewing machine. It normally is an MSRP of $5,499 on sale for $4,599. I just want to go over a couple of really cool features about this machine. You've got to love the 11 inch throat space. It gives you a ton of workspace. You can get the knee lifter. It has 91 needle positions, so you have that fine adjustment, comes with that large foot control, the pedal for trimming your fabric, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you've got the free arm so you can sew in the round. So it's great for garment sewing as well as quilting. I love that she showcased all three needle plates. You've got your zigzag plate, your straight stitch plate, and your professional plate, and that pairs with your HP foot. So those all come with the machine. She also specified that it has 25 different feet that come with the machine and 20 accessories. I mean, you are set up on accessories. So that is really, really awesome. She also showed Stitch Composer. So how cool is that? If you were here this morning, you can create unique stitches or you can modify existing ones. And then she showed that cute little 
KitchenAid mixer that they designed and it was just adorable. You can have so much fun creating your own stitches with Stitch Composer. So again, that's on sale for $4,599. That's not the special event price. Just give us a call. We've got another hour here where you can call in for an even better price than what's displayed. You'll hear me say it a couple of times, so we'll move right on. All right, next up we had Bernie, and Bernie showed us some wonderful tips on issues with your machine, troubleshooting. This is his book, The Field Guide, You and Your Sewing Machine. If you had tuned in for that, everybody's like, yep, getting that book, because he did such a great job having some visuals, showing you how to determine tension issues. I love that he was talking about knot control, where, you know, if you need to lower that knot, you just lower the tension. If you need to raise the knot, raise the tension. So it was super, super great. And then we had Chris Marchini was showing us the Juki TL 2010 straight stitch machine. And that is normally $1,699 on sale for $999. But that is not the best price that we can do. Give us a call and we can do a better job than that. Looking over to the side, you can see that it does have the speed control. It also has that awesome thread trimmer, needle up, down. You've got the extra subtension. One thing that we didn't talk about during Chris's segment is the pressure foot pressure dial up on the top left. That is really handy if you need to make some adjustments on um, certain fabric that you're sewing. So if it's super thick, you can release the tension a little bit, or excuse me, the pressure a little bit. And... Uh, your fabric's going to feed through really nicely. So great machine. He also talked about different presser feet that are available for your machine. So if you ever have any questions about compatibility on presser feet, give us a call. We are super happy to help you figure out which foot is compatible with your machine. But also just keep in mind that you can go to the machine parts, go to your brand, select your model number, and there's a whole page full of compatible parts for your machine. So you can filter it out and select some feet that way too. So he had showed the walking foot, a ruler foot, free motion foot. Yeah, so they were all great presser feet that make your creativity even more awesome. I loved this one. The Janome Memory Craft 9850, Ann Hine showed this particular machine. That is a great computerized sewing and embroidery machine. It has an MSRP of 2,499 and it is on sale for 1,999. And again, you can get an even better price on that. I loved this demonstration because in my mind, I'd already thought, oh, this is a great little compact machine. You know, it's it's perfect, you know, but she showed that it has so many more features than I even realized. I loved that she had mentioned it's a great intermediate machine. Uh, it's a combo machine, so you've got sewing and embroidery. It's great for garments, quilts, embroidery, crafts, all sorts of good stuff. It comes with the 5x5 five by five and 5x5x5x5 five by five by five by five hoop. There we go. <laughs> it has 1,000 stitches per minute when you're on the sewing side. When you're on the embroidery side, you have an option of going really slow, 60 stitches per minute, or you have up to 800. So you can go pretty quick with embroidery as well. It also has the extra high presser foot lift. That's always really handy if you're trying to get something under the foot, or maybe if you're swapping uh, presser foot out, it's really easy to change it that way where you can lift it up nice and high. Uh, the, also, you've got a 10-inch throat space, so you've got plenty of room to maneuver on the right side of the needle, so you don't have to worry about everything bunching up on your right side. After that, we had Tim Bond with Juki. Oh, I was pretty amazed with this one as well. We saw a lot of comments saying, wow, this is a machine with all the bells and whistles. It has an MSRP of 1999 on sale for 1,599. This is the Juki DX2000 QVP, and that is a computerized sewing machine. A few things that I wrote down that I absolutely loved about this model was it has a foot pedal that allows you to set the heel operation. And you have seven different options that you can set that heel option to. So you could do reverse stitch, or you could set it to do needle up down presser foot lift, all by just rolling your heel back and um, setting it that way. That's pretty awesome. You can also set the machine to have an automatic presser foot lift. The knee lifter is included. He also mentioned that it comes with a bunch of accessories. 
This one too is geared towards sewing, um, quilting, crafting. Uh, the other one that I really loved about this particular machine was that the needle plate converts to a straight stitch plate without even having to remove the needle plate. There was just a little switch under the cover plate. So very convenient. And the pivot function was pretty awesome as well. That machine will automatically raise the foot but leave the needle down. This is gonna allow you to change direction when you're sewing without having to move your hands. So lots of really cool features about this machine and I hope that you enjoyed seeing that demo. After that, we had Melinda Stevenson, which again, I'm so thankful that she was able to pop on and show us the Baby Lock Altair. As we had initially mentioned this morning, we were going to have Richard Tharp join us and he was having some internet issues. So we were sad to see him not join us this time around, but he will be in the future. Um, but she was able to showcase the Altair for us. And we just really wanted to let you know about this machine right now because it has a phenomenal sale. So it has an MSRP of $12,999. Our normal sale price is $8,999. For a limited time, it is available for $7,999. But special event pricing for today only for National Sewing Machine Day, you can get an even better price than what's displayed on the screen. So Awesome, awesome pricing. And just keep in mind that financing is available. And <laughs> they were saying before that you need a bunch of classes in order to learn how to use this machine. Well, guess what? Uh, with the purchase of this machine, you're gonna get that $900 value free bonus bundle. If you are watching that particular segment, excuse me, um, we were talking about what's included in that bonus bundle and six months of Baby Lock So Ed is included. So you get amazing education. Melinda had mentioned that it breaks it down into the IQ designer. It also is breaking it down into the embroidery section and the sewing section. So any questions that you have, it's answered with Baby Lock. They do such an awesome job with their training. And then you get a whole bunch of goodies when it comes to the $900 value bonus bundle pack. The other thing that I absolutely loved about this machine was the IQ intuition positioning app. How fun is that? You were just taking a picture with your smartphone, seeing the fabric on the screen, and then positioning your embroidery design exactly where you want. So cool. I mean, we use our phone for everything anyway, right? <laughs> I loved that. Also, as I mentioned to Melinda, I completely forgot that this machine had directional sewing, which is super cool. I mean, when you see this sewing machine, sewing at a diagonal is just like, what? <laughs> And then also, of course, the never miss needle threader, which we had to show that little video. It is awesome. And they don't lie when they say a never miss needle threader. It's pretty cool, as well as the digital dual feed. So spectacular machine. If you were on before when Brian popped on, you know, we have been going on and on about how awesome that model is. So if you've been considering it, now's the time to do it. All right, let's see what else we had. Just a quick recap here of the 16. So if you are just popping on, maybe to get in on that giveaway, <laughs> we wanna show you really quickly on the 16X machines, you can pick the 16X machine that you are interested in. Of course, you can get just the machine, but we are offering the wonderful quilting system sale. So you pick a machine and then you move forward and pick your frame and then you get a free ultimate cutting collection, which is a $430 value. And that would be, or that applies to the 16X series. Also, if you buy a 16X machine, you're eligible for the Quilters Creative Touch Beginning Software. So that's your automation. And that has a fantastic 25% off sale as well. And just a note here, just that software does not work with iPads. We just want to reiterate that it's only going to work on tablets running Windows 7, 8, 10, or higher. So I think that about covers what we went over today, which it was a such a fun day talking about sewing machines specifically. I'm, I don't know about you, Brian, but I had a great time. <laughs> I had a blast. We loved, I thought it was a lot so of fun. Creative live. <laughs> Awesome. Well, speaking of So Creative Live, I know we're about mm -hmm. to do the final giveaway, hey. but I just wanted to talk really quickly about our next event. Mm -hmm. um, 
So if you don't win the triumph right now, I know a lot of you really, really want to win and we wish we could give a triumph to everybody, but we can. If you are not the lucky winner today, don't worry because we have another event in July where we're giving away another baby lock triumph. And here I have to come on screen for this because I'm so <laughs> excited about it. So we have a couple of other really cool prizes. We're working really hard to get as many cool prizes as we possibly can right now, but do you think we can say some of the ones we've already gotten? I would think so. I, I think so. I think so. I mean, we're all let's friends here. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we'll we'll give you a little a little teaser of some of the prizes. Yep. So we have the Baby Lock Triumph. That's going to be the grand prize again. And then Grace, our good, good friends of the Grace Company, donated a 16X, a Quilter's Evolution frame. They donated... Uh, couple of cuties, mm -hmm. a 10 foot light bar. They donated, I believe two or three quilters oh, collections, mm -hmm. two or three travel kits and like 12 spools of finesse thread. They like went crazy with it. Yeah. They were so, incredible. So thank you, Grace. <laughs> we also have some stuff from arrow. We are giving away a cabinet. We're not going to tell you which one oh. we will keep a secret. <laughs> We're giving away a couple of other things from Arrow, but just know there's some furniture. There's going to be some more sewing machines. There's definitely going to be some thread. There's definitely going to be some gift cards. But if you don't win the Triumph right now, don't worry. Come back in July because we are going to have a blast. Yeah, and this is going to be our first five-day event, so we are pretty pumped about that. We have so many amazing educators, and we were listening to you. I know a lot of people loved the sew-alongs, so we're doing demos, and we're doing a bunch of sew-alongs. We love having the education, and we love seeing the machines, and you know, we enjoy this just as much because every time they're coming on, teaching us stuff, and I'm like, oh, I think I need a new machine. <laughs> Yes. So we all love it. We love sewing together and it's just a blast. And so. like Trisha said, it's going to be a five day event. So if somebody out there could please send us a case of sugar free Red Bull on July 9th, <laughs> we would be or so sugar. grateful. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and show the commercial? Uh, yes, but actually, before we show the commercial, do we want to go over how to claim our prize and everything just to let's do make it. sure that we have that? So anybody that won today, let's talk about how we claim our prize. So you just go to the link tree, and that's going to be link tree forward slash sewing parts online. Click claim your prize and fill out that form. And then you can also go to sewing parts online forward slash sew creative live. If you scroll down, there's a giveaway tab and you can fill everything out there. Also, I mentioned earlier that obviously we can't show every machine that we offer and that's unfortunate, but for the special event today, we are going to go ahead and extend special event pricing to any machine that you call about. So if you've been looking at one that wasn't showcased, still give us a call. We have an hour yet. Um, that's available for special and pr event pricing, excuse me, and um, we'll extend that for you. So that is wonderful as well. Uh, I also wanted to just reiterate, if you guys are looking for some sew alongs, please join us on Wednesdays at 1130 on our YouTube or Facebook because we are doing our social circle and it's been so much fun. We've been doing it for five weeks now and we're just doing projects that are beginner to intermediate friendly. We get together, we sew, and we also release all of the information about the event coming up on our Facebook group so you know what materials to use. So you can get that beforehand and sew along with me. And it's a whole lot of fun. So I hope that you can join us uh, tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're not doing it just because we were doing this today. And so um, we will be joining or excuse me. Oh, I'm looking at the schedule for July will be released later this week, early you next week. Asking. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, what are we talking about? So yeah. So with the social circle, uh, we do that every Wednesday at 1130. So we'll try to get you more, but you can also yes. do that. Come hang out with us every Wednesday at 1130 because we sew projects. We sew little things and it's so it's much awesome. fun. It's really, really fun. I really love doing it every Wednesday. Me too. I mean, we've made things. It's really nice to accomplish a project. If you're anything like me, sometimes you like start a project and then you set it aside and it doesn't get completed for a long time. So it's really nice to have a weekly project where you can feel accomplishment. You have something cute to 
be done with. And then you meet friends like Deb Porter, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also for the winners, I just want to let you know too, we are going to share the winners on our YouTube community and also on our Facebook group. So just go to Sewing Parts Online Sewing Community. We'll pin it up at the top so you can just take a peek. You have seven days to claim your prize. Once you claim it, it'll be about one to two weeks to receive your goodies. So now I think we are good to share the commercial for our July So Creative Live Sew event. So would you like a chance to win thousands of dollars worth of free sewing supplies? Join us for So Creative Live Christmas in July. Five super fun days with bucket loads of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine demos by dozens of expert educators, crafting and sewing projects, and unbeatable special event discounts. Whether you're just starting your sewing journey or you're a sewing pro, we'll have something for you. Over $25,000 worth of machines, sewing furniture, and sewing supplies will be given away during this virtual sewing event. Join us July 10th through the 14th. Each morning, we'll begin live streaming at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. You can join us from our website, sewingpartsonline.com, our YouTube, or our Facebook. This event is designed to bring you great deals and lots of laughs. Bump up your sewing skills, all from the comfort of your home. All right. So that's our upcoming event. And what, what do we have left? There's something, right? <laughs> Just the prize. Let's give away. A oh baby man, I'm triumph. nervous. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, what about the riddle? Well, I already said it. Oh, but you said it, but what was, what was the answer? I didn't see it in the comments. <laughs> Trisha, you should know the answer. <laughs> the answer is so creative live, or no, sewing parts online. <laughs> sewing parts online. <laughs> Duh. Okay, let's <laughs> raffle this triumph. Let's off. do let's it. Let's do it. <laughs> drum roll. My drum roll is lacking here. <laughs> Come on. Donna Lodge. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> so excited for you. That is incredible. I hope you enjoy your triumph. <laughs> Congratulations, Donna. Now, Donna, and anybody else who's won anything, please, when you get your prize, post it on our Facebook community page. We want to see what you make. We want to mm -hmm. see you standing with the machine. We want to make friends with you, and we want to <laughs> all be happy and excited that you won this surger. Yeah, and our community is so awesome on our Facebook. Everybody's been sharing pictures and it keeps continuing to grow. And I, I feel like everybody's getting more and more comfortable with sharing what they're making because we're getting a lot more pictures. And I love that. I love pictures so it's much. It's fun. So. Very cool. All right. Well, we just want to take a quick second to say thank you to everybody that helped to make So Creative Live National Sewing Mag Machine Day happen. Our wonderful product specialists, they've been putting everything in the links, but we have an amazing team here at Sewing Parts Online to put events on like this. So we're going to be back and we'll see you next time. Happy sewing. I'm delayed. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to smile. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>